This is Chunky Verf and I'm locked to the current castle game tile for now. I will be following Limpert's extreme one chunk rules which means I have to obtain everything in this chunk as far as possible and realistic. I asked Limpert if he's okay with it if I follow his extreme rules and he said yes go for it. So let's get into it and let me explain some stuff in case you are unfamiliar with the concept. The main objective of the account is to complete all of the content within a chunk before you can progress to the next one. Once we complete all of the content we will randomly roll a chunk around the starting chunk. The rules are complete the highest skilling challenges, complete quests and achievement diaries as far as possible, obtain all unique monster drops, obtain all unique items and complete mini games. Basically I have to do everything I can. Now you might be thinking why the current castle chunk? Can you even do anything interesting there? And the answer is yes because dungeons are part of a chunk. You do not have to roll dungeons separately. And within this chunk I have access to all of the current catacombs and the Seragnus dungeon. But we will get into this later. There are some exceptions in this starting chunk to progress the account to the next chunk. The Jar of Darkness which... Hey this is Future Fair from 2 years later. Let's just go for all of these items and forget about these exceptions. Because nobody likes them. Alright let's continue. And goals in this chunk I made a quick overview for skilling bosses and miscellanea. For the skilling challenges I have to chop and light a U-lock. I cannot fletch one because I don't actually have a way to train fletching because I don't have a knife in this chunk. Steal from the gem stall and cook an anglerfish. And the reason why I have to cook an anglerfish is because I can get a raw anglerfish from the Scotizo drop table. This is one of the few items I can actually process so I have to get this cooking level. Skilling pets are not required because they are not chunk specific but I will try and go for them. So for the bosses we have to get a Scotizo pet, the Dark Claw drop, the raw anglerfish because I can use it, the Seragnus pet, Seragnus cudgel and jar of ice. Those will most likely be the main objectives when it comes to completing the chunk. Or is it? Because there are some NPC drops that will take a little bit. For example the smoldering stone from Hellhounds which is a 1 in 32,000 drop. But I will go for it. There's also a Mask of Ranul which I can get from the Undead Druids. And besides from that it's mostly just regular drops from uh, NPCs. Lots of rune items such as the Scimitar, Kite Shield, Chain, Full Helm. There are a couple other monster drops that I will go for. Uh, I don't think it's really unique drops. But I will probably finish every drop from every monster in this chunk. Because I will be training on a lot of different monsters. And for the miscellanea section there's a long bone and curved bone. Giant and mossy key, dark totem and the orange and blue egg sack from the grubby chest. So yeah lots of things to go for. Some pretty easy and some a lot harder. And I made this graphic to summarize the most important goals in one picture. And I could use it throughout the series if you guys want. Mark stuff green if we complete it. And yeah I think it's time to get into it. My first goal is to get my combat up a bit higher so I feel a bit safer. I am a hardcore and I plan to keep the hardcore status as long as I can. And to do this I can get 5 thieving and steal cake so I can start combat and have pretty good food. 12 hit points per cake that's going to help a lot early on. This might be the first time you've ever seen me use a bank. Um, but yes we are obviously using a bank on this account because I think it makes more sense. You can make very big collections of items and supplies for the future. So yeah, we are using the bank guys. There's 10 thieving, been collecting some cakes in the bank and I'm going to use cakes for the first monster to train on which is going to be imps. There we go, that's 10 strength. I've been killing imps uh, hopping around, they spawn in the northeast section of the castle chunk. And a new ashes update is actually amazing, I get 10 prayer xp per kill as well. That's 10 defense, we are now 10 attack strength defense. And as you can see in my inventory we are getting raw chicken and flour. Imps are actually pretty decent because I can get a few cooking levels from these. I have a plan for cooking in the future but every bit of XP will count. First random event on the account, a camo piece. I plan on collecting everything from random events and try to complete the collection lock. The still baguette might be pretty hard but everything else should be very doable. 20 thieving which means I can now steal silk. And I have a silk stall which is probably going to be my best way to train thieving to 75. Pretty high pet chance as well. So yeah another stall unlocked. Been doing a lot of thieving we are banking all of the silk. So we can sell it later for GP when I do combat trips. And I just got 100 total level. 
And there's 40 thieving, nice level. I can now pickpocket city guards, which means I can pickpocket these chasing guards. Uh, I guess that's a task completed. Nothing too special because I need a lot of thieving anyways, but cool. Right, so I train on Implings for a little bit and it's time to move on and upgrade my setup a little bit. So I'm killing hill giants in the catacombs now. I found a flinching spot and they have a few iron items and a steel longsword drop, which I'm going to try and get. The steel longsword would be quite a big upgrade over the bronze sword. So I'm going to kill hill giants for a bit and see if we can get some upgrades. The comet levels are coming in nicely and we did get a giant key, which is one of the items that we want to get. Not much we can do with it, but I'm going to collect all of the keys on this account, which will be pretty cool, I think. All right, that is the first upgrade, Iron Full Helm. I have no helm right now, so that is very welcome. Little bit of defense bonus, awesome. Yes, there we go, that's the Steel Longsword. That is a big upgrade because it has a lot of accuracy bonus over the Bronze Sword and a bit more strength bonus, so... Should give me a max hit as well. We've been here for like quite a bit. I think I killed like 60. I might start looking into killing moss giants now because of this upgrade. Uh, because moss giants have a lot of good items that I need. Switch to moss giants and that is 30 strength. Very nice. Combat levels are getting a bit higher now which is definitely a bit more comfortable. I forgot to record the drop but we managed to get a mythal spear from moss giants in... 8 kills which is really good it's actually a really good weapon now because they changed the attack speed on spears and they made it as fast as scimitar so very good item the problem with this item is i can't specifically train one style um it has shared and defense i believe so i might use it for a little bit get my attack and defense up a little bit and then try and get a mithril sword i think first genie on the account always love to see these blue men um, I'm going to lamp agility because I need 5 agility for the chunk west of me. And then after I get 5 agility, I think we're going to use all the lamps on Hunter and get at least 17. Because there's a wheat field south of me, which means I can go to Puro Puro. After I get both these levels, I'm not sure what I want to use my lamps in. But we'll figure that out once the time comes. Ooh, my first totem piece from a hill giant. That is pretty lucky but a very welcome drop to see that is also in a collection lock uh yeah one out of three pieces for the first totem on the account all right we took a small break from melee to get my wood cutting and fire making up a little bit to get some uh easy total levels in case we get a maze random the most realistic axe for me to obtain in this chunk is going to be a mithril axe we only have these three regular trees available to get 60 wood cutting and fire making which will be very interesting. But I'm going to start woodcutting and fire making uh, until we get 21 woodcutting, which is the requirement for the Mithril Axe. And then we'll wait for the axe before we continue to get 60. So let's see how this goes. All right, there we go. This should be 21 woodcutting. Very nice. And I think I'm one lock away from 25 fire making. This isn't as bad as I first thought. Um, at least we have three trees and not one. But this will be quite a grind. But it's a very chill one. So um, let's uh, wrap this up for now. And come back once we have the Mithril Axe. That's 30 attack and defense with the spear. Very nice base melee stats now. 35 strength and 30 attack and defense. It's time to go for the Mithril Sword and focus a bit more on strength. Because that's going to speed it up the most because of the max hits. There it is, we managed to get the sword. Only three more kills after the spear, so that's very lucky. Uh, we can now focus on strength training. Awesome. Wow. Second totem piece. Uh, wow, very, very nice. Good RNG on that. Uh, two out of three pieces now. We are back at Moss Giants for a bit. That's a steel metal, which should be slightly better than... Uh, the iron form that we have right now so small upgrade the main item i'm trying to get is the black square shield which will be very nice with the mythal sword together so yeah let's try and get one 
Yes, there it is. Black square should obtain. That's all of the items from Moss Giants that we need. Uh, defense upgrades wise. So we can go back to Moss Giants for some faster training. And yeah, very happy to get these items. Clean level. 40 strength. New upgrades are doing really well. So I've been doing some hill giants with the new upgrades. And as you can see, I almost have a full inventory of loot. We can basically do full trips uh, of hill giants right now, which is awesome. Going to speed up the melee training by a lot. Dark totem top. Uh, second piece from hill giants. I think I've killed like three or four hundred right now. So very lucky to get that. That is the first totem completed on the chunk account. Very cool. One of many. I plan on collecting all of these totems while doing my melee grind. And then once we have all the gear and stats ready, we can basically send all the totems that we've collected. That will be very exciting. First Bob to get random. The only way to get fishing XP in his chunk. Seven fishing on the account. Lots of free total levels from this. Another item we need, longbone, pretty awesome. We got this really early as well. The big item is the curve bone, which we might get. I will be killing a lot of hill giants for uh, melee protect grind, but that's the first bone completed. And that is another longbone drop, the trip after my last one, back to back longbone trip. There we go, 40 attack, very nice. We can now use rune weapons which means we can wear the rune scimitar from fire giants uh we can't quite go for it because they will destroy me but awesome someone told me they added a new cave with giants in the catacombs uh i didn't know about this but let's check it out it is a singles area as well which is going to be really nice a lot easier to afk because i won't be getting attacked by like five and this area looks awesome. And this is the hill giant room. That looks like a very nice place. So this is going to be my new training spot. And there's 40 defense as well. I can now equip rune armor. Which we are going for uh, later on. I think I'm going back to strength again. Get some more max hits. But base 40 melees right now. Very nice. I just killed my first fire giant. Decided to flinch one for fun. See if we can get the 1kc rune scimitar. And that completed an easy combat task, which I didn't know about. Uh, but killing a fire giant in this area completes a task. So very nice. A steel chain body drop. Pretty massive. I have no defense bonus. So that's a big upgrade. I decided to try and kill some cyclops. Because they have some eddy weaponry, which is an upgrade. I have a bit better melee stats now, so I think I can kill them. But one kill count steel chain body. That basically doubles my defense bonuses. A couple kills later. The adamant two-hander. We are trying to get the adamant maze. However, this is going to be useful. Because it's my best flinching weapon. Currently on the account. So that's actually a very useful drop for flinching stuff. Let's go. We got the adamant maze as well. We did around... 30 kills which is extremely lucky to get both the eddy weapons and the steel chain body it is a slightly better upgrade over the mythal sword and i do get a bit of prey bonus as well so when i leave my early prayers on and bury bones i get the prey points back so i should be able to maintain the prey points a small upgrade but an upgrade nonetheless and this thing looks absolutely amazing i don't think i've ever used a maze in this game to train my melee stats 31 prayer that means I have unlocked ultimate strength, which is actually my best in slot. My best prayer for, uh, well, prayer flicking and monster killing as well. So that's nice. I think that will give me one or two max hits. Uh, not a combat achievement completed, apparently. Into the den of giants. I think, I think that's the task you get for killing a moss giant, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think you complete that task when you kill your first moss giant, so... Oh, wait, no. It's when you kill your first moss giant in this area, probably, yeah. Yeah. That's something I needed, actually. That is a mossy key. Uh, that is one of the items from moss giants that I need. I forgot I didn't have this yet. Uh, cool. 
We have both the keys now from the giants. Quick trip of cooking XP. All of the bread dough and raw chickens I collected from the implings earlier. Uh, there's a range in the castle. So we're going to cook all of this food and see what level we get. All right, we ended up with five cooking. Not bad. We can now cook herring, which we can actually get from Dagonos in the catacomb. So this will be very useful in the future. Killed some skeletons and pickaxes for fun in this spot. And I got my new Basin Slot Axe, which is the Iron Axe. Not going to use this, but it is. it will be cool to have in a bank. Uh, get all the possible axe upgrades I can obtain. And these pickaxes can drop all tier pickaxes, including rune pickaxe. So we will hunt that as well in the future. But we got the Iron Pickaxe for now. We cannot actually train mining in this chunk, but... We are able to obtain a lot of different pickaxes, so that's very cool. Ooh, I managed to get my first ancient shard. I forgot about this. I'm actually surprised I haven't got it from any other NPC, but got it from skeletons somehow. I can't make an arc light, but I can use these ancient shards to teleport around the catacombs. I looked up the different teleport locations and none of them saved me a huge amount of time so i think i'm just going to collect all of these shards in the bank and get a huge collection but that is a collection lock item we still killing hill giants trading the combat stats for 43 prayer and that is 50 strength very nice just got 34 prayer which means we unlock the attack prayer and we now have the best attack and strength prayer available for monster killing Oh, what the... I got another long bone. Oh my god. <laughs> this inventory is stacked. No way. 37 prayer, guys. Uh, that means I can use magic protect. Which means I am going to kill shades. Undead druids. We're gonna go on an adventure to try and get the strength amulet. So let's do it. Protect for magic. I found this shade flinching spot in the catacombs. It's near the blood belts and nothing is attacking me here. Shades have a 1 in 4 chance to drop a shade bottom or top. And they give the best possible prey bonus I can obtain in the chunk. I currently don't even have legs. So it will be very nice to have some more prey bonus when I do training. So yeah, let's see if we can get some shade pieces. There we go. Shade top obtained. Second kill. Very nice. Five prey bonus from the top. That is a lot. Oh my god, wow. Uh, that's the shade ropes. And we got a totem piece as a nice surprise. Four total kills for both pieces and a totem piece. That is awesome. Nice prey bonus upgrades obtained. Let's go and check out the undead druids next. So a lot of you might be wondering how do I get to the Seragnus dungeon? And south east of the catacombs, there is a, a vine that brings you to that dungeon. I can go back and forth through this entrance and basically get to that place. So pretty cool. I had no idea about this until someone mentioned this actually. So quite a lot of places to go to for me. All right, we found a flinching spot for undead druids. Let's go kill him. And see how long it takes for me to get the strength amulet. First kill for a magic amulet. Wow. It's not the strength amulet, but that is actually really good. Uh, that's the best slot amulet for magic training in this chunk. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, there we have the defense amulet drop. Both the amulets before strength amulet. This will have some use. I will most likely use the defense amulet when I'm training ranged because I don't have any amulet for ranged. So cool. We got all the amulets. Strength amulet to go. Another defense amulet. Very strange RNG. More fishing levels. Give it to me. 13 fishing. Looking good. Yes. There it is. 
I'm a little strength. Only 11 total kills to get all the amulets. Very lucky once again. But I'm very happy to get that early. Uh, don't get a lot of XP killing Undead Druid. So we have all the upgrades we can obtain for now. And we are going back to training and continue it on with the prayer grind. But that should give me one or two max hits. Back at Hill Giants for 50 hit points. First maze random on the account for what looks like coal and coins. That's not that great. But that is one of my best ways of getting coal. There we go. 50 attack. Decided to work on 50 attack and 50 defense. And then only focus on strength. Just to get the base stats and attack and strength up a little bit. So I forgot that the maze random chests have a lot of useful rewards for me runes arrows and most importantly attack strength and defense potions so what i'm going to do is every time i get maze randoms i'm going to kind of grind out these chests and try and go for the potions because i want to stack a lot of potions in the bank for seragnus in the future so actually very important and very lucky that these maze randoms have these potion drops another maze random completed for more coal Chaos runes and one full regular strength potion from the chests. Awesome. Bank is looking beautiful. We are already at 5 long bones and 17 giant keys. 2 totems as well. Pretty nice. I was not expecting this item from the hill giant grind. We killed a little over 2000 right now. We got the curve bone which is one in five, a little bit over 1 in 5000. So pretty lucky getting this early but... I would say that's one of the first uh, bigger items completed on the list. Very cool to get this early. And in the same trip we got another longbone, giant keys. Like we, we keep getting all of these items. Very cool. We got a curve bone and a longbone in the same trip. 40 prayer. Range protect unlocked. Three more to go for melee protect. And there's 50 defense as well. It's time to switch to strength and go for max hits only for a while. But that's 50 attack, 50 defense. More fishing XP. Level 15, which unlocks anchovies. Pretty nice. I can actually fish that in one of the chunks east of me. But that's not going to happen for months. Let's be real. Pretty big level 60 strength. I'm very, very close to finishing the melee protect grind. So we will have 60 strength, 50 attack and offense for fire giants. That should be good enough. I hope. And there it is. The big level 43 prayer. We killed nearly 3000 hill giants. We can now use melee protect, which opens up a lot of content we can kill a lot of monsters in the catacombs now with melee protect flicking and go for all the armor upgrades which is the next goal in this account i'm going to upgrade my melee gear massively and we are going to start with fire giants to get a rune scimitar i'm very excited Ooh, that's a steel axe that is currently my best axe but not the best one i can get What? No way! What? I'm 31 kills in and I get a rune to Henry, which is one in 5,461. I'm here for a rune scimitar. <laughs> wow, I love this account. Let's, uh, let's carry on, guys. Dude, I look like an absolute snack right now. So we... Looked up the rune to Hender and it's actually my best in slot weapon for now. So I can actually use this thing, which is great. It is super accurate. Okay, now it's... Okay, okay. Alright, the first one was fine, but this is getting ridiculous, okay? This... <laughs> what? <laughs> this is actually getting ridiculous now. Alright, now I'm a hacker. Okay, you are allowed to tell me I'm a hacker now. <laughs> How is this even possible? Like, this is kind of insane, guys. Um, 
Okay. This account is crazy. That's a shield left half and an ancient shard in the same drop. I wish that was a spear, but my god, that is one in 20,000. That is such a cool item to get. Nothing I can do with it, but... I cannot believe we're getting all these items before the scimitar, but... RNG can be strange sometimes. But I'm not complaining, that's so cool. Ooh, a fire battle staff. Same rarity as the scimitar. I officially have got every drop from fire giants now, except the rune scimitar. It's actually going to be very useful for magic in the future, I think, so... Very happy to see that drop. Oh... Uh, first longbone from fire giants. Haven't got a longbone from these yet. I have a feeling we are going to get a very big collection of longbones and curve bones on this account in a bank. Very cool. 65 strength whacking fire giants with this absolute unit weapon. That's 5 total strength levels so far from fire giants. Actually getting a decent bit of strength XP here. That's longbow number 10 on the account. We also have 27 giant keys now. Just uh, quickly showing the collection. And nearly 100,000 GP. No way! <laughs> no way, dude. I am done. I'm so done with this. This makes no sense. What? I don't have to kill head guards now because I... Oh my god. Guys, I've killed 300 fire giants. I've killed... I got every single drop besides the rune scimitar. The rune scimitar is 1 in 128. I have got two rune to Henry's. 1 in 5.4k each. I've got a shield half. 1 in 20,000. And now I've got a rune kite shield, which is 1 in 16,000. That is... I'm happy. Wow. Great. What a, what a great way to finish the first trip of the day. <laughs> All right. There it finally is, the Rune Scimitar. Very interesting grind with lots of great RNG. But we can leave Fire Giants now and continue on to the next monster. 317 total kills. So we can use the Rune Scimitar with the Kite Shield, which is awesome. Originally I had to kill Head Guards to get this Kite Shield. It's a 1 in 512 drop rate from Head Guards. They have two unique drops, which is the scimitar and the kite shield. But since I already have these two items now, I will skip those. I'm pretty sure if there's multiple monsters in a chunk that have the same drops, I don't think I have to get the drop from every monster. That would be kind of weird. So yeah, that's awesome. That actually saves a lot of time. The next monster I'm going to kill is Greater Demons. They have a Rune Full Helm drop and Adamant Legs, which will be upgrades. And killing my first one gives me a combat diary task. These ashes give 25 XP instead of 10. And that's 44 prayer which unlocks eagle eye. So I can now use all the arrows I collected from hill giants. I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I use them. But I will get the most out of the arrows now. First upgrade from greater demons. Adamant Lex. Quite a big upgrade because I don't really have any defensive legs yet. And these will be my best in slot legs until I probably get rune legs from Scotizo. Did a pretty big trip. We got a second totem piece and we obtained every drop from greater demons except the rune full helm now. I think we are around 200 kills in so hopefully we get the helm soon. And that's another totem piece. Always nice to see. That completes my third totem on the account so far. There we go. Rune, full helm drop. Took a little bit to get this. Uh, pretty big upgrade over the steel mat helm. It took us 245 kills. Alright, next NPC. Black demons. These ashes give 65 XP. So quite a bit more. And there's 45 prayer which unlocks mystic might. Which means I can start using my runes whenever I want to get the most out of them. These black demons are tough. I can only kill around 20 per hour. Uh, we are after the rune chain body drop, which is a 1 in 128. So let's, uh, let's try and get this drop. Probably my most favorite regular drop from these is the 50 air rune drop. That's going to help out a lot with magic. 
another blue man always beautiful and not just one this lamp should give me my first level we've had very good rng with these xp random so far so very nice to get some early boosts in the xp just got the rune mad helm same chance as the chain body luckily it's not completely useless because it doesn't have any negative range attack so when i'm going to grind range levels i will be using the rune mad helm for the defense bonus but no negative range attack what 100 silver ore we just hit big on the red drop table again that is probably around one in five thousand um it is a new red drop table drop so that's pretty cool it is not a requirement to complete the full red drop table items by the way but there might be a chance that we get everything but yeah not going to be a requirement but very cool 100 silver ore might be useful sometime in the far future for crafting xp look at that beautiful chain body on the ground i'm so happy because we are 82 kill count and we got basically everything from black demons now so we got a little lucky uh under the drop rate i really did not want to go dry here because the kills are extremely slow and there's a lot of people doing slayer here so i have to hop a lot but very happy to get this such a huge upgrade over the steel chain body as well we finally have pretty decent melee gear now so this is what the setup is looking like for now we almost have the best in slot gear we can obtain for now there's two items missing the rock shell boots and rock shell glass from king sand crabs and they also dropped the mithril axe that i was talking about uh earlier so we are going to kill sand crabs get all of the unique items as well and basically complete the melee setup for now only four kills in mithril axe drop which was the most important item from king sand crabs going to stay here a little longer to try and get the 164 boots and gloves drops though 69 strength nice always happy to see more fishing xp randoms level 17 fishing without fishing a single fish we have finally got the first rock shell armor piece that we can equip the gloves 66 kills in so a little over drop rate not too bad they don't add too much defense bonuses but they look pretty cool all right and there's the boots as well only four kills later we have now got all the important drops from king sand crabs i really like the way these boots look and these boots and gloves have like the same stats as leather but an upgrade is an upgrade and that basically finishes the best in slot melee setup for now we have made a lot of progress on this account so far looking like a snack there we go 70 strength looks clean that's gonna be the last combat level for now 72 combat as well 70 strength last um, melee level for now and this is the bank overview we've made taps for like all the important sections like a skilling tab we put all the miscellaneous items in the first tab we have like a food tab collected all the lobsters and tunas from monster drops we have the melee tab with all the weapons armor range stuff and magic equipment all of these arrows and roots are coming from all the monsters that we've killed and will be very nice for future mage and range levels because we are still level one but yeah pretty good looking tab and then we have a farming and herbal tab that we probably won't touch for months a junk tab which has a lot of random items uh but but nothing really useful i'm just gonna basically dump everything that doesn't fit one of the other tabs in here and we have a random event tab. I'm going to collect all the outfits and random event items in this tab. So yeah, that's what my bank looks like after all of this progress. We are 72 combat and we have 3 days and 15 hours playtime. So that's close to 100 hours. 16 items in the collection lock and 4 combat tasks completed. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go. 50 thieving. Nice level. I can now thief from the silver stall, which is on the market as well. So I have the option to bank silver ores now. I'm going to start working on one of the three big skilling grinds uh, in this chunk. I have to get 60 wood cutting and fire making with these three regular trees. I did a little bit in the last episode, but now we're going to really start working on it now because we got the mithril axe and there's 30 fire making. And there's 30 wood cutting as well. Levels are still going pretty fast. All right, it is time to start using some of my runes and arrows that I collected in the last episode from uh, hill giants. The only good way for me to get mind runes is killing hill giants and i got 126 right now so i'm going to try and get 17 so i don't have to rely on mind rune drops anymore um let's see how far we get with the runes we got right now we didn't quite get 17 magic we only got 11 uh we didn't even get fire strike so we have to go back to hill giants and get more mind runes which is okay i guess i'm just going to switch to hill giants for training instead of moss giants and kill them until I have enough runes, I guess. But I will be doing that in between the skilling grinds. So since I've used my runes from Hill Giants, I'm also going to use my arrows. Get as high range level as possible with the arrows. And that will get me a lot of free total levels. Which is going to help me with maze randoms when we get them. So let's get to work and let's see what range level we can get. And for the people wondering about my outfit, uh, chain bodies and met helms do not give negative range attack. And I don't have any better gear, so I'm using it for the defense bonus. Starting out at imps, that's 5 ranged. Imps have like minus 40 range defense, so they are perfect to train on at the start. Free prayer level killing imps. Nice ashes update coming through. Level 10 ranged. And look at how accurate I'm hitting on these imps. It's actually really nice all right there's 14 ranged and 450 total on the account no way guys i just got rocky i'm using my arrows right now guys um and in between the kills i pickpocket or thief a stall no way i just got rocky that's so good because it means i will finish this chunk with every pet i can possibly get well maybe not wood cutting but I had a really good chance to get Rocky. Oh my god. I saw the collection lock pop up. I freaked out. No way. That's that's amazing. And there's 25 range. I can maybe get one or two more levels. And then we back to skilling. We got a lot of free total levels from that. Awesome. And the pet of course. Somehow. Got myself some best and slot fashion scape. Beekeeper pens. Trying to collect every random event item. There we go, 40 fire making, levels are getting a bit higher. Clean level. No way, I'm AFKing some uh, moss giants while editing and I just got my second curve bone. Which means I've had a curve bone from hill giants and moss giants now. So it's not a rule to get every unique from every monster if I can get it from multiple monsters. But there you go, curve bone from moss giants and a curve bone from hill giants. More fishing XP. Every time I get this random, I'm guaranteed to get fishing XP because I don't have the magic XP. So lots of fishing levels. There's 18 fishing. Gotta love seeing those collection lock pop-ups. There's a mine boots and top. Getting a lot of new random event items. Did some more melee AFKing and there's 60 defense. The next thing I want to work on while doing melee is 60 attack. Very nice milestone with this attack level, 500 total. I've been killing a few uh, of these flying pickaxes because they can give a lot of pickaxe upgrades and I thought it would be fun to hunt a few. So we managed to get the steel pickaxe and the mythal pickaxe. I believe they have a 1 in 500 rate to give a rune pickaxe so we have to eventually go for that but not going to be too difficult. And there we go, that's two more mine pieces. We only need the mask and the emotes now. Very nice. Prayer level from Moss Shines, 49 prayer. I can now use Redemption. It's not a requirement to unlock every possible prayer. Um, but I will get a very high prayer level in this chunk. Level 60 attack. We are now 60 attack, 60 defense and 70 strength. Looks very nice. I'm pretty happy with the melee stats for now. So I think I'm going back to some of these skilling grinds. 
40 wood getting very clean level. It's time to smash out this goal, guys. We just hit 45 wood cutting, which means we can now chop maple trees. Unfortunately, this chunk does not have maple trees, but there's a lot of maple trees in the chunk south of me, so maybe that will be useful one day. All right, there's 50 fire making. We now have all the requirements for Winnethart, but we cannot do that, so let's continue chopping regular trees. By the way, I want to quickly thank you guys for the massive support on episode 1. The video got over 8,000 likes and I think around 4,000 new subscribers. You guys are absolute legends. I just got a clue nest easy. I have chopped over 3,500 locks without getting any nests. Apparently, I cannot get seed nests from these. But I did get a clue nest. 50 wood cutting. I can now chop mahogany trees, which I will not chop for over a year, probably. Maybe longer. 10 more to go. And fire making as well over halfway now, so awesome. 55 fire making, five more to go. Fire making is a little bit faster than wood cutting, so we should finish this quite a bit earlier. For the people I don't know, I think this is my closest beginner clue step that I can do. It would be, let's see. Oh, that is actually in the chunk. Yeah, so I would be able to do this clue as soon as I unlock the boat chunk, three chunks east of me. So if I roll this chunk here, I get Port Serim as a rollable chunk because I can't go there by feet. So yeah, that would probably be my closest beginner clue I can do. So I will keep this in the bank. So we will not get like a billion beginner clues on this account. 53 wood cutting. That's the halfway mark. We have around five or 6,000 more locks to go. There's 58 fire making. Um, two more to go. And we don't have the fire making part. Wood cutting isn't quite there yet. We are actually at exactly 150k XP. Very, pretty satisfying. Um, my plan is to finish the 60 fire making and then I will be banking some locks. Probably about, I think I have to bank around 10 more inventories. Uh, I should have between 5 and 600 locks in the bank. And the reason I want to do that is to prepare fletching for a future chunk. Most of the chunks around me that require fletching have oak trees. I currently cannot get a knife, so I cannot train fletching. So I don't have to get the fletching for the U shield and bow. So that's the reason why I only have to do wood cutting and fire making in this chunk to chop the U tree. Um, but yeah, I think banking will be nice. I can bank some locks to prepare that. Don't have to worry about uh, locks anymore after that. And then I think I will just chop locks and drop them to maybe almost double my wood cutting xp per hour because currently i'm getting around 7000 xp per hour so that will speed up the last bit of wood cutting um and the xp in fire making let's take a look i'm getting 13k fire making xp per hour so it's a bit faster because lighting a lock is more xp than chopping a lock so yeah yeah it's going pretty well pretty chill um but that is currently the plan. 59 fire making. That means we are one level off the goal. 25k XP. So this fire making level sh will probably take about two hours more. And then we are officially done with fire making in this chunk. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'll save a lot of time not doing fire making, I imagine. So I'm very curious what my wood cutting XP per hour is going to be. I'll let you guys know once we get to that. Yeah, let's carry on wood cutting. Get this last fire making level and uh, see what happens next. That is 55 wood cutting, a beautiful level. Um, we are very close to being 100,000 XP away from 60, which means we have to chop around 4,000 more locks. There we go, 60. I can now light you locks. Beautiful. That is amazing. 273,000 XP. We are almost 56 wood cutting. So I have to bank a few inventory of locks. And then we will see what my wood cutting XP per hour is with only wood cutting. 
that should be the last inventory we have over 500 locks in the bank now i could bank more but the xp from regular locks is so little anyways i'd rather just do oak in the future so yeah let's get back to wood cutting all right after doing a little bit of testing uh i started with like 17k xp it's down to like 15k now so i'm pretty sure based off this little test I can probably get between 14 and 17k XP per hour, which is a lot faster. That is double the XP per hour. 58 wood cutting, two to go. It has been a little bit since we got a clue nest, but just got a hard clue nest. Um, RD. That's pretty far away. I think it's not worth keeping. My plan is to keep a hard clue that's closest to me i guess and then just keep that in a bank so i don't keep getting more hard clues uh i do get bird nest from this though but we will be finishing this fairly soon so we probably won't get too many more i've only had like i think this is the fifth clue nest now so yeah these trees do not give a lot of uh, nests 59 wood cutting final stretch let's do this about 1000 more locks all right the final lock in this chunk 60 wood cutting that means we can now chop yew trees and that is the highest tree we can chop in this chunk there's only regular trees and yew trees so that means this first skilling grind is over uh i'm going to bank these locks real quick get a tinder box out we can chop some yew locks we have to chop one and burn one I think I will b uh, bank a few as well. But there we go. There's the yew trees. We did collect a couple more locks in a bank than I was originally planning to. Just because I was banking like random event items to keep the most inventory space when doing this grind. But let's take a look. We have 700 locks. So about 200 more than I was planning to bank. But might as well. Alright, let's grab this tinder box. And let's go and chop some yew locks. There we go, that took only about a minute, so not too bad. Let's uh, let's light this lock, shall we? And complete the first big skilling challenge. Here we go. And there it is, 202 XP. The next thing I want to do is knocking out the thieving requirement, which is 75 for the gem stall. I have to do some research on the thieving methods, but... Getting both the skilling requirements out of the way will be great. I cannot do cooking yet because it requires a lot of monster killing. And I need to collect a lot of food. So we can do that for a while. But being able to only focus on melee after this is going to be really nice. Still been doing hill giants trips here and there in between. And this is what an average hill giant inventory looks like. I usually get a key uh, like an ancient shard or a totem piece. And between 3 and 9 mind runes. Free fishing XP, 20 fishing, uh, I can now fish trout, interesting, I've never fished on this account. Random events OP, also 550 total, and I believe my closest trout is the chunk east of me, but I don't have a fishing rod yet. Collected some more arrows from hill giants, so we did some more range levels, and that's 30 ranged on the account. Total levels are really adding up from the levels. Another hill giant trip. Looking beautiful. I just got a totem top and a long bone in the same kill. Beautiful. That's a beautiful drop. Give that to me right now. That is totem number 5. Decided to switch back to strength to get some more max hits while killing these hill giants. The main objective right now is... Getting the mind runes and then we can stop killing hill giants. What is this? First we get a totem piece and a longbone. And now we get an ancient shard and a longbone in the same kill. Uh, and, and an ensault hat as well. Okay, not complaining. Um, I'll take all these goodies. Collecting all the keys, shards, bones. Just making some big stacks in the bank for someday when I can use it. But it will look really nice in the bank. And this is a quick overview of the special items in the bank. We have 20 long bones now, 10 mossy keys, 42 giant keys, and 5 dark totems. 
not bad because this account isn't super old yet so by the time we are ready for Scortizo, we're going to have a lot of totems ready which is going to be really exciting Another free prayer level from Killing Hill Giants. 50 prayer. Nice looking level. And we are 80 combat on the account now. Alright, I'm using some more mind runes from Hill Giants. And that's 13 magic. I can now use fire strike. Awesome. And unfortunately, not enough runes. A little bit over 14 magic. So still need to get a bit more runes to get the goal level of 17. Give me all of these fishing levels, 21 fishing. A Twitch viewer had a pretty big brain idea. I can just use bones to bananas for the last two levels. So we use that and this should be the last bone for 17 magic, which means I can now finally use my Kale's runes and we are not relying on mind rune drops anymore. So awesome. I ended up using all of my runes in a bank and we ended up with 29 magic I ended up killing black demons because they have a possible air rune drop to get some of my runes back. And they have minus magic defense, so pretty good monster to kill. And yeah, almost 30 magic with the Kales runes. Not bad. Quickly ended up getting 30 magic with some of the nature runes in the bank. 30 magic unlocks battle staves. And I do have a fire battle staff from fire giant. So currently my best staff to save some runes. But I will be able to get... An air staff in the future from undead druids. Which I think will be my best staff in this chunk. But yeah fire staff will do for now. We are back at moss giants again. Because we don't have to kill hill giants for the mind rune drop. Moss giants are overall better. Because they have a lot more rune drops. And also 15 iron arrows. And yeah I decided to train some more strength. Nice little break from the next uh, skilling goal that I want to do. So I checked all of the thieving methods in my chunk and I tested both silver stall and silk stall. Silver and silk stalls are the same XP per hour. The difference is I can bank the silver ore. So silver stall are a lot better but the downside is that I have to world hop and after around 2 hours of doing this non-stop I do get the hop limit and I have to wait a few hours before I get all my world hops back. It is very rare to get the hop limit nowadays but if you hop a lot like silver you will get it so so that's a bit unfortunate but it looks like this is going to be my method all right we have the first mystery box on the account this will determine all of my rng on the account let's take a look and we get a diamond excellent that's actually not terrible that's my first cut diamond on the account cool all right i'm actually stupid I was so focused on all of these stalls on the marketplace that I totally forgot about pickpocketing guards. As simple as it sounds, pickpocketing guards. It's actually my best method in this chunk. I'm already getting over 30,000 XP per hour at level 54. The XP will go up in the future once I get higher levels. And it's already two times better than any stall I can thief from. So since I get the hop limit doing silver stalls anyways, this is way better time wise. I will save a lot more time. I'm very surprised. I normally do my research, but this came totally unexpected. This is going to be my main thieving method until 75. I will make a little bit of GP as well on the way. And yeah, this actually looks pretty chill. Give me all of that fishing XP. Level 22 fishing. What level do you guys think I'll end up with in fishing after I finish this chunk? It has to be an insane level, surely. I'm already level 22. Also, I'm not sure how GE Locked has not had any fishing XP randoms, but you have been blessed with my RNG. There we go, 57 thieving. Probably the most important thieving level in this chunk, because I can now steal from the grubby chest. And that chest, my friends, is going to play a very important role in this chunk. It is going to provide me with the best possible food in this chunk and the best combat potions. Level 60 thieving looks clean and we are up to 227,000 GP right now. 65 thieving. The XP tracker is showing a lot more XP per hour as you can see. And we are up to 321k. This is going pretty well. Alright, I guess we're doing all of the exercises on one mat. That is pretty lucky. This random event will unlock 
all of the drill surgeon emotes the push up star jump jog and setup emotes so we are basically done doing the drill surgeon random event we have all of the armor pieces and all of the emotes there we go 68 thieving halfway mark to 75 we'll have to do this exact same amount of xp but faster there we go we got the mime mask the full outfit completed now emotes to go we crushing the random event section hey look 69 thieving nice and with that level we are also 600 total level awesome there we go 70 thieving very nice level that looks beautiful uh we can pickpocket paladins uh, they, they are pretty far away five to go five to go for gem stalls we are getting there guys these are honestly not bad uh making a bit of gp as well yeah it's going well we probably have to do about 10 more hours i think decided to afk some more melee at moss giants and we got another strength level 73 strength let's see if the rng continues will we get an armor piece yes we do that's the beekeeper's gloves let's go only two more beekeeper items to go for the full set 71 thieving four to go yes we finally got another blue man this lamp will actually give me a level let's use this on agility and that will give us three agility so two more to go and we are going to switch to lamping hunter 72 thieving and almost 900k xp still getting one fishing level every time we get a random this should give me 23 there we go and one more random till 24 73 thieving 74 thieving we're almost done with the thieving grind shout out leo Krem coming in with the bond very kind i'll take that thank you some extra membership nice present for the almost finishing the thieving grind i guess <laughs> okay so someone used a phoenix crossbow on me and i was able to pick it up so technically i can use a crossbow but i'm not going to because i'm not going to allow items that are not obtainable in my chunk i guess i will however bank it because I think it's a cool trophy item in a bank. But the only bolts I have are like bronze and a few iron bolts. So not that big of a deal. But yeah, I'm not going to use the crossbow. I'm just going to put it in a bank. I have other ways to train range anyway. So just wanted to throw that out there. If you're wondering why there's a crossbow in my bank. 75 thieving. I can now steal from the gem stalls. Nice. Let's do it. Technically, to complete this challenge, I need to steal every possible gem from the stall, though. I think that's fair. Um, so let's do that. Gonna need to get all four different gems. That, oh, 160 XP, that's beautiful. Hey, there it is, the diamond. It's almost four inventories. Well, three and a half inventories, I think. That's not bad. Uh... Cool, well, that wraps up Thieving in his chunk, guys. That officially wraps up Thieving in his chunk. We have quite a bit of gems now, nice. And this is what the final stats looks like. We are almost 82 combat, 8 days playtime and 8 hours. Making good progress, 26 collection lock slots. And here's a quick bank overview as well. started doing some Dagonov trips to collect some raw foods. This is going to be my main method to get 50 cooking, which is required to make chocolate cakes. And I need to make chocolate cakes to 84 so I can cook an anglerfish, which is the last skilling requirement in this chunk. So yeah, I've been doing some Dagonovs. They drop sardines, herrings, lobsters, and tuna. So collecting raw food for the cooking XP. That's one trip finished. And we got another trip finished. As you can see, lots of variations of raw food. They also have some other decent drops. I get totem pieces as well. Some unsold hats. So pretty good monster to kill overall. 
And there is 65 defense on the account. Started working a lot on the combat stats now. Starting to work towards the bosses for the most part. I'm going to need a lot of stats for that. So melee is going to be very important now. If I want to do something super AFK, I grab my axe and I chop you locks. There's 61 wood cutting, which means I can use a dragon axe. But yeah, I'm just going to collect a bunch of locks in a bank and perhaps we can get the pet. That would mean we would finish every single possible pet in this chunk, which would be kind of cool. And yeah, other than that, just going to get a lot of wood cutting levels, I guess. Right, I just got a heart clue with a step that's in the chunk south of me. Unfortunately, we don't have the required items, so I'm not going to keep this clue because I cannot equip a rune plate and get a halberd. But that's a pretty close hard clue scroll step. So I want to be able to kill Seracnus in this video with a decent setup. And in order to achieve this, I need three things. I need higher melee stats for Seracnus. I need grubby keys for food and potions. And I need magic levels for magic defense and fire blast, which I'll talk about later. And I'm going to train on temple spiders in the Forthos dungeon. They give me the best rune drops for magic XP. They have very low defense and they give me grubby keys. The perfect solution. But before I can camp them, I need to unlock this dungeon. And as soon as I enter this dungeon, I cannot go back. So we have to do some ultimate Iron Man adventures. We have to kill a shaded beast in this dungeon and it drains prayer like crazy. So my plan is to camp temple spiders until I get enough prayer pots from the grubby chests. So I can kill the demon and unlock this dungeon. So let's get to work and start killing spiders. There we go, that's the first grubby key, lovely. I think I'm going to collect two or three and then see what I get from the chest. Nice, the second grubby key. And there is the third key. Let's open the chest and see if we get some prayer potions. Right, first chest. Not what we want. Second chest, let's take a look. No prayer. And the last one. Man, this hurts. Not a single prayer pot. Alright, I guess we have to go back to spiders, collect more keys and repeat until we get prayer pots. The unfortunate part is that we are wasting all of these good supplies because I cannot keep it. But that's only going to be the case at the start though. Yo, XP lamp doing spiders for 4 agility. One level to go and we can start lamping hunting. Because I need 5 agility for the chasing course west of me so I'm preparing for that grind in the future all right we got two keys definitely got pretty lucky uh we are in the drop rate so we really need that right now let's open these two keys and see what we get wow cerebrus uh, i did get a two dose super restore though so that's a little bit of prayer and the second key wow also cerebrus that is a pretty rare drop i think so we have one super restore in total now which is not enough i think so we have to go back and get some more keys but it is a decent start all right there's two keys again i think we got seven keys in like three or four hundred kills now so definitely the rng that we need right now let's check the keys one prayer pot drop and we are good to go i think all right here we go yes there it is two three dose prayer pots and we got dragon dart tips, which is an interesting item from the chest because it means I technically have to fletch a dragon dart. Uh, however, I'm not able to train fletching yet. So that's something that's going to be happening after we get out of this chunk, which will not happen for a long time. But yeah, once we get the ability to train fletching, I have to get 95. Right, we did get prayer though. Uh, we have... Two and a half potions now, which I think is enough to kill the Shaded Beast.
Okay, we should be fine. We still have prayer left. This was kind of scary. I did not hit at all at the start, so I was a bit worried, but... Big obstacle out of the way on this account. We have the temple coin. Awesome. Alright, so we put this temple coin in the stone relief. And we get a weird tunnel unlock. That brings me to the tenor room and the altar room. And now the next thing I want to do is basically use 200 baby dragon bones on this altar. The first 100 will unlock the xp from the altar and then the next 100 will give me the temple key and with the temple key i can unlock all of the doors in this dungeon and go back and forth between the doors i can basically start training here without locking myself in in order to use the temple coin i had to use one teleport because the dungeon is still one way and my only way to get here is via the catacombs because i'm not able to use the stairs in the dungeon and now that we've done that, I can basically unlock this full dungeon. A tiny but necessary exception to make this chunk work. Nice little level, 68 defense. I set up this room in a way that nothing is aggroing me. Because if the red dragons attack me, I will die. Because they can hit like 50s. So nothing in this room is aggro, but I still have access to the altar. So I just have to kill 200 red dragons, use all the bones on the altar... And finish my little ultimate Iron Man adventure, I guess. There we go. That's the first 100 bones used. I now get XP from this altar. And I'm actually very close to a prayer level. So we should get that level with this inventory. We got three times the XP on this altar, which is amazing. And there's 52 prayer, which unlocks the highest level prayer I can use in this chunk, which is smite. Pretty nice. There we go, got a nice grubby key from the red dragons. I will actually be able to keep the supplies from this key because I can open it when I'm done here and bank the supplies, which is going to be important in the future. There we go, there should be the last few bones. The temple key has been unlocked on the account. So nice to get that out of the way on this account. The dungeon is completely unlocked now. Wow, that was a very nice key. We're going to bank some of these supplies and there we go use the key on this gate that's one out of two doors unlocked and we also use the key on this gate and officially all the doors are now unlocked i can go back and forth between the doors i can start camping on monsters here i can start collecting supplies i don't have to worry about locking myself in this dungeon which is an awesome feeling so that's amazing subscribe so now that we have officially unlocked this dungeon, I can start working on training up the stats, uh, the magic levels, the melee levels to kill Seragnus. And I can also bank all the keys and the loot. So let's get started. I started using all my runes and we ended up with 38 magic so far. Not bad. And we got a key in the process. There we go. First big melee milestone coming in. 70 defense. Going to keep 70 defense now and switch to attack and work on 70 attack next to get 70 base melee stats. Someone told me to kill some undead druids for fun and they're absolutely terrible to kill with the current setup that I have so I'm definitely going to wait. But I did manage to spoon an air battle staff. 1 in 50, I've only killed 30. That's a very nice surprise because that's going to be my best in slot uh, magic staff. Unlimited air runes, very important. Another grubby chest for egg potatoes and another superset, perfect. We're going to need all these foods and pots for the bosses. The egg potatoes heal 16. I can also get sharks and obviously the supersets are amazing. So this chest is so important in this chunk. And that's 10 grubby chests open so far. Alright, so let me quickly show you uh, the bank. We have 7 keys in the bank so far. And this is what the potion tap is looking like. Mostly just trading my melee stats, collecting keys, opening some of the keys and banking some of the keys. Just start working on the uh, food and potion collection. Missed the level, but that's 70 hit points. Nice level coming in. Never thought I would like the zombie random, but it actually allows me to bank stuff for free. I'm currently at spider, so it's basically a shortcut to the bank. Clean up my inventory and extend my spider trip. Cool. And we got zombie gloves and trousers. So that's the full zombie outfit completed. 
Very nice. Still working on all the random event items and emotes. Yo, a turtle shell coming in with some buns. Thank you so much for the support beast. I got a heart clue from temple spiders and I forgot about this clue step, but it's a Ceridomin wizard five chunks away from me. Uh, it's not the closest heart clue step I can get. However, I think it's the most useful one because the Sarah wizards have some drops and it's not like I'll be able to complete the clue anyways. Uh, because it always has multiple steps. So I think I'm just going to keep this one in the bank. And on the day we unlock this chunk. I can kill some Sarah wizards I guess. And we will not get the hard clues from NPCs anymore. Which I kind of like. Because I have to kill a lot of hellhounds and temple spiders. So yeah. Keep this one in the bank. There we go. 70 attack. We are really working hard on the melee stats. 70 base melee now. The next thing i want to work on is strength levels get some more max hits looking good guys looking good another nice strength milestone 75 strength my goal level is 81 strength because that level allows me to get a max hit on attack and defense and my main stats for serenus i think 80 attack 85 strength and 80 defense should work out but yeah that's obviously quite a while away we still have a lot of training to do but that's the goal melee stats I have in mind. Did some more wood cutting and I managed to get the Lederhosen hat. So we're only one piece away from the full set. Awesome. This is what the random event lock looks like right now. So four items away. I've been AFKing some U trees. We are over 400k wood cutting XP right now. I'm currently doing some editing. So thought I'd do some wood cutting. And we finally got the first bird nest on the account zaya trees are absolutely scuffed well at least this chunk these are the only trees that give me seed nests so let's see what we get a willow seed okay not bad i will start collecting these in the bank right will we get another beekeeper piece nope we got flax but that's very nice to collect in the bank as well because we have a spinning wheel two chunks south of me so this low alk will give me 41 magic. I can now use death runes. Uh, however, I'm not going to use any until I have fire blast. I'm mostly only training my magic with all the other runes I have. And then once we get 59, we're gonna send all the death runes. Quick bank update. We now have 20 keys in the bank. Beautiful. Another strength level and quick update on the stats. And we are getting close to 90 combat already, which is awesome. All from basically killing catacombs, monsters and spiders. Alright, we collected over a thousand chaos runes from temple spiders again. So going to use all of these runes and see what magic level we can get with the runes. Alright, we have a few runes left and we are 47 and a half magic. Really starting to get some nice levels. We're getting close-ish to high alk as well which is going to be very nice fishing xp random for 25 fishing right i just got a book of knowledge and i'm one xp random away from my five agility goal level but i'm actually going to wait until i get a genie uh because i don't need to lamp more agility so i'm going to use the book of knowledge on hunter instead and get a bit of a head start on that because i got five more xp so yeah, let's, uh, let's start the hunter lamping journey, I guess. Going to need a lot of XP randoms for this. Big level incoming. 80 strength. Oh, that looks beautiful. We're already up to an 80 skill in melee. 70 attack and defense and 80 strength now. One more strength level and we're going to switch to probably attack. Still working on opening the chests and look at all these beautiful supplies in the inventory all the foods the runes the potions this chest is actually really good for iron man accounts in general oh that's the item i was hoping for we got the orange egg sack the first recolor for the serenus pet which is on the collection lock so one of the items i have to get in this chunk but i didn't really put it on the goals list because it's such an easy item to get because i'm opening hundreds of chests probably in this chunk but yeah, that's the orange one. We now have the blue one to go. And we are on 34 chests opened. It's 1 in 25. So yeah, awesome. One of the two completed. 
And there we go, that's 81 strength. We are now finished with strength training for a while. Next up, we are going to switch to attack and go for 80 attack. I should be able to hit 19 on attack style now. All right, we are here in front of Seragnus. We are going to try kill with the rune scimitar and see how bad it is. I have enough food and pots, so I should be able to do this, but I don't have high hopes for the rune scimitar because it's slash style and the boss is weak to crush. So let's see how this goes. All right, this should be the kill. There it is, the first Seragnus kill count on the account. And that took 10 minutes, which is not great. Uh, I didn't actually use that many supplies for this kill, but it's not worth the potions and food yet. And I am definitely going to need some upgrades. And there's one upgrade I can get, which will make a huge difference. And that's the rune maze. And to get a rune maze, I need magic levels because I have an idea. I can kill steel dragons with fire blast. So we are going to work on that soon and try and get that upgrade because we are not going to kill hundreds of Seragnus with a rune scimitar. That's a very bad idea. But yeah, good to see how long a kill takes. I have all the information I need. We are back to training. Yo, we are doing some wood cutting and we got a genie. And this is a pretty special lamp because it will get me five agility. There we go. And that officially finishes the agility lamping grind. Only level 5, not too bad. But yeah, all the lamps are going into Hunter as mentioned before. We got a mime event and this event will unlock all of the emotes. Which means we are officially done doing mime events. We have all the emotes and we have the full random event outfit. So nice, slowly completing uh, the random event section. Quick bank update. We've been training and killing thousands of temple spiders. We have 30 keys in a bank right now. Very nice. Over 100 sharks and over 100 egg potatoes. So that's looking pretty good as well. And the potion tap is starting to look beautiful. Almost 10 supersets, a bunch of prayer, defense pots. Uh, yeah, looking really good. The grubby key grind is paying off. We got another grave digger random. And unlock the zombie dance emote, which means we are done doing the Gravedigger random. We have all the emotes and the full outfit now. So another random event finished. 35 ranged, killing some dark wizards to try and get the top for a magic attack boost. And there we go. That's the rope top. Did not take long at all. That was the last magic item i needed for maximum magic attack for this chunk um i'm going to start using a lot of my runes again and i want to really get to 59 magic so this top will be handy for all the magic training we have nearly a thousand chaos runes again and this is the first level 49 magic let's see how many magic levels we get this time last magic level i'm going to get with the chaos runes 52 magic Pretty nice, but that isn't 55 yet, so I have to come up with some other way to train magic. I really want to get these magic levels now, so let's get creative. Been opening some grubby chest for potential death or law runes, and that's the blue exec. That's the second exec recolor, so we have officially completed them. I will get many more of these, but really cool to have in the collection lock. And there we go, that's the first dupe, another orange exec, right after the blue one. Alright, first magic level with the law runes, 53 magic. Can I use earth blast? I decided to telegraph face masks for magic XP, uh, this is probably the most one chunk thing out there. I have a bunch of law runes saved up and I can't do anything with them right now. Um, I will get many more in the future so I don't mind using a couple hundred. But yeah, I can telegraph for XP, so let's get 55. And there we go, that's the little magic grind finished. 55 magic, I'm now going to use all of my nature runes, clean out my bank, uh, grab everything I can high hulk, and go back to spiders. And the nature runes should get me to 59 magic. All right, we high hulked for around one and a half hours, cleaned out my bank, um, made a couple hundred K, and we can now use Fire Blast, which is awesome. 
We also managed to get three grubby keys in this trip, which is amazing. And yeah, I have a lot more magic defense now, which is going to help out for Seragnus. And I'm able to kill steel dragons, I think. So we're going to give that a shot. So the method I found for steel dragons is pretty simple. I first lose aggro at the fire giant spot. And once I lose aggro, I hit the dragon with fire blast. And then go back to the safe spot, log out, and basically repeat that process. Or I can hit the dragon once and take one hit from the dragon back. But that method requires food. Both optional methods. I'm going to experiment a bit. It is going to be very slow, but it should work out. All right, we got another kill for rune knives. There we go, 60 magic on the account. Very clean level. I just lost my hardcore. Um, I misclicked into the room and both dragons aggroed on me. And one of them hit a 50 and the other one hit like a 30 or something. And I literally could not do anything. I don't have teleports. I clicked on my cake instead of my shark. And I died. Um, but honestly, I'm not too upset about it. I mean, I was probably going to die at some point on this account. The main point of this account is the, the chunk concept, not so much the hardcore. I also think in the far future, I would unlock a chunk where I would lose it regardless without being able to do anything about it. For example, a wilderness chunk. So it is what it is. Uh, no hard feelings. We continue as a regular Iron Man. But yeah, guys, dragons are pretty strong without anti-fire. I basically did an alfi. Look at that beautiful thing on the ground. I guess we sacrificed the hardcore to get this beautiful drop. The rune maze has been obtained. That's going to make the spider grind so much better. It only took 15 total kills. So that's half the drop rate for the rune maze. There we go. 75 attack. Beautiful level. I'm really curious how much faster Seragnus is going to be. And as mentioned at the start of the video, we basically completed all three goals. We aren't exactly done with training melee yet, but I think we do have enough to do some Seragnus kills. But we got our melee stats up by a bunch. We collected a lot of keys and supplies and food in the bank. So that should be good for Seragnus as well. And we got the magic levels and the rune maze upgrade. So it's time to kill some Seragnus and see how much better it is. I'm rocking the prayer pot, the super set, some of the foods and the rune scimitar to slash the webs. This is pretty much how my inventory will look like. Alright, time to slash the web. Let's see how this Seragnus kill goes. There we go, first kill with the rune maze. I can definitely tell a big difference in accuracy and that also should give us a combat diary task. Kill it with a crush weapon, very nice. I think the time was six minutes or so for this kill but I think it can go down a lot more. So probably like between four and six minutes per kill which is like two times faster than a rune scimitar which is amazing. There we go, another kill, three kill count and we got a heart task. I don't really know what that task is. Let me check that out. Okay, let's take a look. Kill Seragnus without her dealing damage to anyone. Wow, so that means I pray afflict all of the attacks correctly. Awesome, that's, that's a cool task to get. I will go for all the combat tasks, by the way. I think there's maybe one I cannot do. Um, but yeah, I should be able to do every combat task as far as I can. So what I'm currently doing is every time I get a Seragnus kill, I will walk to the altar, restore my prayer points and then walk back. That way I don't have to use prayer potions. It will take a little bit longer, but I think that's okay. I think once I get the cudgel, I'm going to start using some of my prayer. But for now, going to do altar kills. So if you're wondering how I'm dealing with the Seragnus minions, I'm basically killing them when they spawn. For now, I think that's the best strategy. Uh, they spawn at 266 and 133 health. I try to pray afflict the mage one because that one hits me the hardest since I have uh, melee defense armor. And after the major is dead, I run back to the Seragnus boss, pray afflict the melee hits and kill the melee minion. And it's been working pretty well. Sometimes I get really bad RNG because I don't have the biggest DPS yet. But for the most part, I don't use more than one or two foods per minion wave. And the minions are really the only thing that are damaging me during the kill. So 
don't actually use that much food per Seragna skill. Alright, last kill of the trip for weapon poison. Ooh, that is the best tier weapon poison. I can use that on a rune dagger. That might come in handy in the future for uh, steel dragons. Decent drop. Another kill count for elite clue scroll. Seragnus is one of the best hard and elite clue droppers in the game. So I think I'm just going to keep this elite clue. That way I'm not going to get any clue scrolls from this grind. I don't really want to see a bunch of clue drops every day. Knowing that I can never do them anyway. So not that relevant for now. And I thought about a pretty good method for this grind. I'm going to bring one or two grubby keys with me when I start a trip. Because it's going to save me a lot of time in the long run. I can basically use the key on the chest in this dungeon when I run out of food. And extend my trip that way without having to bank. Because the bank is a lot further away than the chest. And if all I need is food and a couple of potions anyways. I might as well use the key. So yeah, pretty nice. I, I'm using the dungeon how it's designed. Alright, and this Ragnus kill is going to be number 10. Which is going to be a combat achievement task. There we go. Mythal or very nice. Seragnus, novice. I think the next kill count task is 50. But yeah, double digits kill count. Honestly, the kills are not bad. But I don't want to grind it out yet. Because I want to get my combat stats up a little bit higher. So I can get slightly faster kills. Save a little bit more food and uh, get a bit more out of my super pots. Before I start to camp the boss. But I think I'm going to do that in the next episode. We've opened the grubby chest over 50 times now. Potion tap is looking beautiful. We have a lot of potions saved up and food as well. We are basically ready to grind out Seragnus. All we need is more combat stats, more magic levels. And yeah, we are ready to grind out the cudgel and some of the other really nice items from the boss. Starting out the video, killing some pickaxes. I'm going to try and get all the upgrades I can get up to rune pickaxe. I have pretty comfortable melee stats right now. So I will be able to AFK them quite easily. And yeah, let's get some upgrades. And there is the first upgrade. Adamant pickaxe. Only rune to go. Rune pickaxe from these guys is around 1 in 500. First time ever in a game that I'm looking into NPCs like this. But it's pretty funny. I can get almost every pickaxe in this chunk. But I cannot train mining. And there we go. That's the rune pickaxe drop. Around 400 kill count below drop rate. That is a best in slot item in the chunk. We never have to kill these again. I was in the mood to get some upgrades, you know. Pretty easy upgrade. Not very useful, but very cool to have in the bank. And there we go. Organize the skilling tap a little bit. Looking pretty good. 9150 kill count for the torsal seed. So we were yeah, half the drop rate for that. I think that means we got every drop from spider now. That was the last, that was, I think the last item we haven't received yet from the spider, so. 1 in 17.45k. Missed the level, but that's 78 attack. And with that level, we reached 700 total on the account. Not bad, since I cannot train over half of my stats. We are back at the Seragnus boss, trying to get some upgrades. And there is a grubby key drop at 21 kill count. One of my favorite small drops from this boss. The key drops are so important for this account. Wow, another beautiful drop, another key, and we got some egg potatoes as well. We are still doing temple spider trips, collecting as many keys as I can and getting my combat stats up to kill Seragnus more efficiently. And look at this inventory. We got a five grubby key inventory. That's my best inventory so far. Looking beautiful. Ooh, an exec drop. Second one on the account now. They are on the collection lock. Nice drop to get because it's 100 red spider eggs. Another grubby key on 30 kill count. I did add the fight duration plugin. There's like a plugin in RuneLife Plugin Hub. It shows the kill time for the bosses. So I think that's going to be pretty cool for you guys to see how long it takes for me to kill the boss. Um, that was an 8.5 minute kill. That is a lot of time for a Seragnus kill. But we can still improve the setup and the stats by a lot. So it should get a lot faster later on. And there we go. That's 40 Seragnus kill count. Going to end the session here. I think that's a good looking kill count to end on for now. Just finish a beautiful 
Dagonov trip. Look at my inventory full of raw foods. My two go-to training spots right now are Temple Spiders and Dagonauts. Dagonauts are pretty important because I'm going to need raw fish for 50 cooking. At 50 I can make chocolate cakes at the baker stall and get to 84 for the anglerfish requirement in this chunk. But yeah, I slowly started working on that grind because it's also a very nice way to train my melee and it's a bit variety from temple spiders. And yeah, this is what a perfect inventory looks like pretty much. Look at all the grubby key drops in the chat box. We got another 5 key trip and we are almost at... 10,000 temple spider kills and we got 100 keys so we are pretty much on raid throughout the world grind that's awesome big level coming in on the account 80 attack very nice looking level uh i'm going to switch to defense next i think at 80 defense and after that probably only focus on strength training base 80 melee stats will be pretty nice on the account i think should help a lot at seragnus as well Still trying to get the full beekeeper outfit. We have flex a few times and we got flex again. Another big Dagonov trip finished. And we have 85 sardines and almost 70 herring in the bank so far. And a couple other bigger foods that I will be cooking later on. Alright, it's time to get some total levels. I'm going to cook all of the fish I collected. And we are cooking all of the food on the ground floor of Current Castle. I believe the range has a slightly higher success rate on cooking and I'm going to need all the cooking XP I can get. So now yeah, let's go cook everything. See what level we get. Level 10 cooking. And we ended up with 19 cooking just short of 20. That is a lot of levels though. We started with 5 cooking and we did burn a lot unfortunately like almost halfway of all the fish. Uh, we're going to burn quite a bit at the start, but once we get into the like 30s, we're going to stop burning most of them and get most of the XP. But yeah, not a bad start. Almost 20 cooking. And there we go. That's a pretty special kill count milestone. 50 Seragnus kills. We completed a medium combat task, Seragnus champion. And we got a grubby key, so that was beautiful. We only have one more combat achievement task left. And in a task I can only get hit by the range attack like once every cycle. I'm basically going to wait until I get like best DPS. Uh, make it easy for myself. No, no point to try and rush that right now. Because I'm going to use a lot of food and unnecessary potions if I go and do that now. But once I have the cudgel, a bit higher stats and armor. I should be able to easily do that. I will just ignore the minions and should be a pretty easy task. And yeah after that we've completed all the combat tasks. I didn't add this in the rules of the account, but since combat achievements came out, I will basically do everything I can. Uh, there are some tasks I cannot do because of certain items I don't have. Or, for example, Scotizo, I need to use like chins and an arc light. I don't have those items, so I can't do that. But for the most part, everything I can do, I will do. We are back at Steel Dragons. I really want to try and get the Dragon Plate Skirt or Plate Legs upgrade for Seragnus. And we managed to get a Rune Axe. Which is my best in slot X for wood cutting now. So whenever I want to chop some u locks, I can use the rune axe. So pretty nice, pretty good upgrade over the mythal axe. Still working on all of the random event items. And there's the ladder hose on top. I believe that is the last ladder hose and item on the account now. I think we only have the two beekeeper items left to finish all of the outfits. Alright, I used... A lot of the runes I got from temple spiders over the last weeks and we managed to get some magic levels. There's 65 magic. One more level and I can use soul runes which is actually interesting because the spell lowers the defense. There's 66 magic. Pretty nice level. I can now use something I cannot pronounce. Uh, we can use a spell which lowers the defense by 10%. I think that might become useful for uh, steel dragons if I try and poison it. Um, that's pretty awesome. I've used most of my runes now. We have some death runes left that I can use on the dragons. I have some... I have a lot of blood runes in the bank as well. But yeah, most of my runes are used. We have 66 magic, so pretty decent magic defense. That's also part of the reason why I'm training so much magic, because it gives me a lot more magic defense for Seragnus. Yeah, pretty nice. I could not resist to use some raw foods. We did some more Dagon of trips. And there's 20 cooking. 30 levels to go. Beautiful Dagon of trip. 
Another beautiful Dagon of Trip. And another beautiful Dagon of Trip. Look at all the food in the inventory. I'm actually really enjoying the Dagon of Grind. It's very chill. I can almost AFK it at this point with my defense level. And yeah, just gather some raw foods in the bank. Oh my god, no way. Yes, look at that thing on the ground. Dragon plate skirt. I got lucky. 123 kill count. That's like half of the drop rate. Yes, I look like a unit right now. This is going to help so much at Serechnus and also tra like normal training, yeah. Oh, that's such a good upgrade on the account. Let's go. And there we go. That's what the little chunk man setup looks right now. The only fairly easy upgrade I can get right now is a dragon mat from Serechnus. I can't wait to get the dragon mat. That will look like a green dragon bot killer or something. Alright, we went back to Serechnus with the Dragon Plate Skirt to get some more kills. I did a couple hours session and we ended up with 83 kill count so far for 83 Mythal Ore. Beautiful. Alright, very special moment on the account. We have finally got cut emeralds on the account. Uh, for some reason, I just could not get this from random events. Because of this drop, we now have uncut sapphire to diamond and cut sapphire to diamond. Looks cool in the bank. Trying the new fancy rune axe on the U trees. Pretty good XP per hour, like between 20 and 30k, which is more than the regular locks I was getting. And we got a level 66 wood cutting. The most chill grind in this chunk for sure. Alright, we are back at the big spooter. There's 100 kill count for a grubby key. For some reason, we always get grubby keys on KC milestones. Pretty cool. But yeah, three digits at spider now. Ooh, it's been a while since we got one of these randoms. We got a fishing XP random for 26 fishing. The only way I can get fishing XP. Just got a genie lamp and this lamp should get me the first level in Hunter. We finished the agility lamping last episode. We got to level 5 in preparation for the chasing course. And now it's time to prepare Hunter for Puro Puro. That's going to take a while though. 75 defense getting there really trying to get 80 at the moment and yeah combat stats are looking nice we also got a strength level from killing seragna so we will get we will get a couple levels from doing that grind as well and we are very close to 80 hit points and there we go there's 80 agility we collected a bunch of dragon bones in the bank from Seragnus and got a couple from dragons as well. So going to use all of them on the altar for 300% XP. And there's the first level with the bones, 54 prayer. And we managed to get another level, 55 prayer. Uh, I can now use preserve if I had it. I've already unlocked all of the prayers I can use in this chunk. The other prayers requires raids and that's not going to happen for a while. But pretty nice level, we will be getting... A lot more levels in this chunk, I think. A few months ago, they added ashes to hellhounds. And I'm going to kill a lot of hellhounds for the smoldering stone. So I think we'll get at least, I would say, like 70 plus prey in this chunk. So it's going to help out a lot with PVMing for sure. And there we go. 56 prayer, the last level I can get with all the bones. Nice couple bit of prey levels for the Seragnus grind. Oh my god, I got the cudgel! I spooned it! I did not expect that. Wow, that's gonna be- That's so good for the account, dude, that's so good! Oh, yes, I'm hyped! <laughs> that's so good! Yo, I wanna see how good the kills are now. I wanna see how good the kills are. Not hitting. I mean, this will be a decent kill. Like, four minutes, maybe? That's so much faster, dude, holy shit! <laughs> okay, alright, that's, um... <laughs> That's 1 minute and 20 faster, my first kill with the cudgel, dude. Oh my god. This thing is absolutely amazing. Best drop to get lucky on in this chunk for sure. Did a couple more kills with the cudgel and there we go. 130 Seragnus kills. I'm going to actually wrap up Seragnus here. Even though the kills are a lot better. I have no reason to kill Seragnus any longer because I have a lot of other grinds I can work on. Mostly Dagonos and I can also make a big push on Hellhounds if I want to. The idea behind this is I have the best melee weapon now. So I have the pretty much best setup for whatever other grind I have left in this chunk. 
And if I first work on Dagnos and Hellhounds, I can get even higher combat stats and then come back to Seragnus to get the pet in the jar and it will be even faster. So yeah, that's the plan. We are going to work a little bit on, I think Dagnos is going to be next. That's going to be a very chill grind with the cudgel. Killed a lot more Dagonals, the cooking grind continues and there's a nice level 25 cooking. I can now cook Salmon, awesome. Before I go and camp Dagonals, I actually decided to come over here to the Undead Druid since I have the best setup now. We just got an Earth Battle Staff, so we have both the Battle Staff drops from Undead Druids now, pretty nice. There's one thing these guys can drop, which is on the collection lock and it's one of the items I need to get in this chunk to finish basically undead roots and it's the mask of ranul it's a one in a thousand drop so it could take a while to get these are pretty tough to kill but i feel pretty comfortable now that i have the cudgel to grind these out get a couple levels they have pretty good loot as well so yeah that's my official next grind i'm going to work on this is what a pretty standard trip of undead droods looks like they do have grubby key drops they drop a lot of amulets uh i'm I could high oak the amulets, but I want to bank them because it will look very cool in a bank. A lot of rune drops, some herbler secondaries, and they drop some money. So overall, very good NPC to kill. First big level killing undead druids, 83 strength. We are so close to 100 combat now. And as you can see in these clips, I'm using a flinching method because they have both mage and melee attacks. And if you flinch them with the right timing, they will only use mage attacks on you. So if you're wondering why I'm dancing around like this, that's the reason. Is it finally time for a new beekeeper piece? Let's take a look. And it is for sure. There is the beekeeper boots. Only uh, one more piece to go to complete the set. And they look pretty fancy. Decided to switch back to defense training. There are 77 defense. Only 3 more levels to go. And we are base AD melee stats. The cudgel has like 5 more max hits compared to the rune scimitar. So it is a lot faster training as well. Very very nice. Decided to switch it up a little bit. AFKing some Dagonauts. And I managed to get a lamp. And this should get me to 3 hunter. The levels are definitely a lot faster now. Probably like 3 or 4 lamps per level. We killed Dagonals for a couple of days and uh, look at all the food collections in the bank. Nearly 200 sardines, 100 herrings and we have some other big foods for later. Looking pretty good. I'm going to actually cook everything and see what I can get. There we go, 27 cooking. Should be a pretty nice level because it will give me a nice total level achievement. 750 total. Levels are flying up since we started the cooking training. And we officially passed fishing as well. Awesome. Big cooking milestone. 30 cooking. I can now cook tunas which are in the bank. Um, I am however going to wait. I don't want to cook them right now because I'm going to probably burn over half of them. And we still need 20 levels to finish the Dagonov grind. So I will cook them probably when I'm like high 40s. But yeah, nice level to get. Alright, we have finished cooking all of the food. We ended with 33 cooking. Making some really nice progress now on the cooking grind. And we're going to try and cook one tuna. And that's why we're not going to cook all of them. <laughs> Alright, that's all of the food cooked. Um, back to Undead Roots and Dagonauts. Look at that beautiful mask on the ground. That is the Mask of Ranul completed. 455 kill count. I have to say this account has been pretty lucky so far. Um, I, I have to admit. I know there's a lot of comments about this account being a spoon. I understand. Um, but don't worry. I have three very big items left in this chunk. Uh, the Seragnus Pet. The Scotizo Totem. And let's not forget the smoldering stone. If I go dry on one of those three items, it's over. So don't you worry, guys. It, it, I will definitely go dry on one of the three. I, there's no way I'm going to get lucky everywhere. But yeah, I have to admit the early RNG on this account is very helpful. Saves me a lot of time. Might get me out of this chunk faster. That's what we all want to see, right? And there we go, we gave the mask a nice place in the bank. I'm going to replace the mask with the wizard hats. It's the same magic attack, but it looks amazing. 
subscribe or the spooky guy will hunt you. Starting off the video with a hit points level 81 hit points. We have killed around 1000 and we have many more to go because believe it or not I'm killing Dagonauts for cooking XP. The raw fish drops are currently my best way to get XP. So as you may know I've collected a bunch of dark totems on the account. I've had many totem pieces the last few weeks training my combat stats and I think it's time to start killing some Scotizo. I think I have high enough stats for it and I'm going to try and hunt the anglerfish drop because that's the item I need to finish my last skilling challenge in this chunk. I have my normal melee setup, some food, some prey pots and a super set and I'm going to show you guys how I will kill Scotizo on this account because I've had a lot of questions about it actually. So let's get into it. The first step is flinching Scotizo and avoid the melee hits until all of the altars are up. And once all of the altars are up, you want to wait around a minute and then kill all the four altars. And once you do that, they will not respawn. You can use whatever you want to kill the altars. You just want to make sure you wait a little bit before you start killing them. I usually wait a minute. I don't exactly know how long you have to wait, but so far it seems to work. And that gets rid of the altars, which is step two. After this you're going back to flinching Scotizo and get it to around 225 health. This is when it starts to spawn the demons. And if you're meleeing you can't really avoid the demons. If you're using range you could run around but I don't have that option. So what I do is I kill two out of the three demons and leave one of them alive. And after that go back to flinching Scotizo and that's basically the whole process. It is not too difficult but it does take around 30 minutes for me to do a kill. And there we go, that's the first kill count. That was pretty clutch, I'm still getting used to the method. And we got three combat diaries completed with that one kill, that's amazing. The drop 40 onyx bolt tips, okay that's not too great but that could be useful in the future. Yeah that was pretty good, uh, we did use a lot of supplies but I think the kills will be improving from here. So I can teleport out of this room so I need to find the exit which seems to be difficult. Uh, there we go, that's a portal so I can just click on this and that's my way to escape the room and i can do another kill perfect back at dagonos for a bit still collecting sardines and herrings they give the most xp the lobsters and tuna will also add up but i'm not going to cook them until i get a much higher cooking level but yeah every trip takes around 30 to 60 minutes i get a full inventory of raw fish nice level coming in 79 defense one level for the clean looking 80 defense. Get a couple other nice drops like ensold hats, totem pieces, ancient shards, some seeds. Pretty chill grind but we're going to have to kill a lot more of these. Alright we finally got another beekeeper random. Last three randoms got me flex. Let's see if we can finish a set. There we go beekeeper stop. That is the full beekeeper outfit completed. That will look awesome in the collection lock. Let's check it out. There we go. So we basically completed the random events lock. Except the still baguette. Which on average I think takes thousands of hours. So I, it's going to be a really hard item to get. But if we do get that we will get the first green section in a lock. That will look awesome. Basically every random completed now. Right so this random can give me magic XP as well. 650 magic XP. The reason I'm getting magic XP as well right now is because I got over 50 magic. Which is a bit unfortunate. I would get a lot more fishing levels if I didn't get the magic. But it's worth it. I kind of need the magic. But yeah it's basically a coin flip which one of the two I get right now. But I think I can still get around 30 fishing in this chunk. Missed the level but there's 80 defense. Oh look how beautiful that looks. 80 defense and 80 attack now. Um, we are going back to strength training. Going for the max hits. I should already have one max hit on the strength style and we are 100 combat on the account. Only killing catacombs monsters and 4000 dungeon monsters pretty much. That's awesome. This account is making some nice progress. 
not a great level coming in. 85 strength. Dagonauts are really beefing up my melee stats. And yeah, the cudgel is such a huge upgrade that we got in the last episode. I can really tell the difference now with training. Comparing the cudgel with the rune scimitar. It is amazing. I'm getting so much more XP per hour. We have killed Dagonauts for many, many hours. And this is what the food collection is looking like in a bank right now. Over 400 sardines. 250 herrings and almost 100 lobsters and tunas looking good i think i'm going to cook everything and see what cooking level it will get me i should make some pretty decent progress on the cooking levels with this so let's get to work nice little level coming in 35 cooking 15 cooking levels to go and we can now cook pizzas and make wine awesome except i cannot make that Ooh, let's go 40 cooking yo let's go that looks sick 40 cooking with a full inventory of herring without burning and we can now cook lobsters wait oh and i can make normal cakes cool all right 10 more to go 10 more to go another pretty special level coming in 43 cooking which unlocks the ability to cook bass and i have a couple in the bank you can get them from the king sand crabs so I can now cook all the raw food I can get in this chunk, except one fish, and that's the anglerfish. But that's the ultimate goal for cooking in this chunk. There we go, 45 cooking. We can now cook swordfish and meat pizzas. That is the last cooking level I can get with all the fish. Decided to start cooking some of the higher tier fish because my cooking level is pretty decent. We only five levels away and a better tier fish is actually going to be useful because i will be using the better fish for serechnus we out of food so we have to go back to dagonos for the last five levels and for the people wondering this is what all of the food collections look like in a bank over 60 lobsters and tuna that's pretty solid Collected some iron and bronze arrows from maze randoms over the last week and decided to use some of my arrows again Get a nice milestone in range, 40 range, pretty hard skill for me to train in this chunk, but luckily I only have to get 60. I can get a red dehyde body and vamp braces in this chunk, so that's pretty much all I need for ranged. Alright, I decided to train some magic and I got a dark totem top and this top should complete my 10th totem in the bank. So I think I'm going to do some more totems in a little bit, but... Wanted to use all my runes. I think I have enough to get level 70 magic. So that's the goal with the magic training. Around 45% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed. If you guys are enjoying the series and want to support me, hit that subscribe button. And that's the first level, 68 magic. Another level. Nice. And there we go, 70 magic. Enough runes in the bank. Get a nice clean level and a little bit more magic defense for Seracnus in the future. Awesome. One of the most satisfying things to do in this chunk. Combining the totem pieces. Six totems and that is ten in the bank now. Looks amazing. Going to kill some more Scotizo. I'm slightly changing my setup. I'm taking my shade ropes for the prayer bonus. A big part of the Scotizo kill is flinching and prayer flicking. And having a lot more prayer bonus will help with that. So I'm going to test it out and see how it goes. And yeah, let's try and get some more kills. Alright, and that's the second Scotizo kill. And as you can see my inventory, I have a lot of supplies left this time. So that was a lot better. And we got a Torstal drop. Not the best. Another Scotizo kill. Made a lot of mistakes, but we did manage to get the kill for... Battle staves. Okay. That's a pretty good high elk. I'll take that. Kill number four incoming. Let's see what we get. No way. We already got it. 60 raw anglerfish. There it is. Four kills. I think it's a one in 13 drop. Awesome. Okay. So that was basically why I was killing Scortizo this early. I uh, really wanted to get this drop. But didn't expect to get it on four kill count. Very happy to get that drop. Nice. I have everything to... Officially finished cooking now. Just need to get the levels. Put the anglerfish in the bank. There we go. Beautiful. So I did get the drop I'm after. But I think I'm going to kill a couple more. Maybe finish on 10 kill count. 10 will look nice. And then probably after that I'm going to save all my totems until I get higher stats. And then 
probably do a big totem session to try and get all the drops in this chunk from Scotizo. Or at least try and get as many items I need. But you're going to need the Dark Claw, the Pet and the Totem Drop. So going to need a lot of totems. But doing these early totems was basically an experiment to see how well I can kill Scotizo at this point. And it's, it's, it's okay. But with higher stats it's going to be slightly faster. Alright, 5 kill count. Let's see what we get. Mahogany planks. Okay, that's the first plank drop. Uh, that will become useful in the future when I unlock construction. Did a couple more days of Dagnots and we managed to get another cooking level. 46 cooking. I can now cook fried mushroom. I have to say, these cooking levels feel very satisfying. Cooking is probably one of the fastest skills normally, but when you're playing these types of accounts, everything is possible. I got a couple thousand cooking XP per day and I'm happy. Another strength level from Dagonauts. 86 strength. Getting closer to that beautiful 90. Another Scotizo kill coming in for death runes. Not bad. Another Scotizo kill. Adamant ore. That's not too great because I can get that from Seragnus I believe. Another level from Dagonauts, 83 hit points. 47 cooking. Members can now make baked potatoes with butter and cheese and cook fish pies. Nice. We have passed 75,000 cooking XP and I've killed around 6,000 Dagonauts at this point. So around 2,000 more of these raids and I should finish cooking. We need a bit over 100,000 XP for level 50. Level 48 cooking. Two levels to go. I can now churn cheese. Alright, 17,000 more XP. Been running some grubby keys to the chest. And when I do that, I take my bones to the altar. And we manage to get enough for a prayer level. 57 prayer. Nice. I will get most of my prey XP from the Hellhound grind, but whenever I have big bones and dragon bones, I use them on the altar when I open the keys for 3 times the XP. What the hell? Holy, that is one crazy grubby key right there. That must be the rarest thing you can get from the chest. Also, we opened 100 total grubby chests. Dude, that last, that last key was insane. That's basically double restores and brew rolls, I think. Eight Scotizo kill count, my favorite number. Can we get anything good? More Onyx Bull tips. Number nine for Rune Bars. That is a new drop. And there we go, 10 kill count. This is going to be the last kill count for now. And ooh, we got a combat task as well. I forgot about that. 450 blood runes, nothing special. But that looks amazing. 10 Scotizo kill count on the account. We do have some more totems in the bank, but going to save that for now. And yeah, I got a lot more experience killing Scotizo on this account. Very long kills, but mostly just prey flicking. And we will return to the scary demon later for the uniques. Another nice level coming in from Dagnots. 87 strength. Really getting some good gains here, guys. Ooh, it's been a while since we got a book of knowledge. Uh, I think this will get me a level. So let's use it on Hunter for level 4 Hunter. Awesome. Slowly making some progress towards level 17. Okay, I have dropped medium clues on this account until I got one of the few steps that are close to me. And I believe this is one of the steps. Um, Professor Grecklebone. I can find this guy in the library, which is two chunks away from me. Uh, and I believe this is the best clue I can keep in the bank. Once I unlock medium clue steps, I can start doing some clue juggling maybe. But yeah, this would be a good step to keep in the bank, I think. I will also stop getting medium clues, which is just nice. I don't want to see clue drops all day if I know I can never do them. So perfect. So close to finishing this goal. That is the second to last inventory before i'm done with cooking that's 100,000 xp one more trip to go and there it is the final raw food drop from dagonos that i need to finish my 
cooking goal. Let's cook this last inventory of fish and finish 50 cooking. We have killed a total of nearly 8,000 Dagonals to get 50 cooking. <laughs> That's amazing. And there it is. The first chapter of the cooking grind is done. 50 cooking. I can now make chocolate cakes. This is going to massively increase my cooking XP. Alright, so the process is pretty easy. I can trade this baker dude. And he sells 50 chocolate bars and 10 normal cakes. I buy both ingredients. I slap them together. And I make a chocolate cake. And I get 30 cooking XP in the process. And that's my cooking method. Very interesting cooking method. But a lot better than Dagnots. Alright, that's the first level. 51 cooking. I'm getting around... 40 to 50k cooking XP per hour. So that is a lot of XP. I'm still going to have to do this for around 60 hours to get the cooking level to cook an anglerfish. But should be a pretty chill grind. I can basically AFK make the cakes. I might bank a few cakes as well. And yeah, that's all I have to do to finish the last skilling grind. And there we go. We started... Banking some of the cakes. There's 1000 chocolate cakes in the bank. And in the next episode. I'm going to make 94,000 more cakes. Managed to get a nice level. 56 cooking. Levels are pretty fast at this point. And with that level we got 800 total on the account. Pretty nice milestone so far. For the people that don't know. I'm currently working on my 84 cooking grind. We have to make... 95,000 chocolate cakes and I'm going to make all of them in this video. With level 84 cooking I'm able to cook an anglerfish and that is the final skilling challenge of this Zaya Corrent Castle chunk. So I'm pretty excited after that we can focus on melee and bosses for the most part. So yeah let's get to work. Decided to do some more wood cutting and we managed to get 69 wood cutting. Nice. Nice little level coming in, 60 cooking on the account. I've made around 5,000 chocolate cakes so far, I believe, and I started banking them recently. So we're going to start banking cakes. I think I want to go for at least 5,000 because the chocolate cakes will be coming in handy in the future for some PVMing and bosses that I want to do. And it's relatively easy food to get compared to the food I can get from the grubby chests. So yeah, let's go and bank like 5,000 cakes. All right, it is done. Look at the food tab, 5,000 chocolate cakes. That looks beautiful. That should be enough for a while. Um, they are relatively easy to make. So if I do need them in the future, I can make some more. But 5,000, I feel pretty good about that. There is 70 wood cutting on the account. 10 more levels than required in this chunk. I honestly never thought I would get 70 wood cutting. Um, but yeah, but I have like really... AFK time I'm just gonna woodcut because it's the most easy thing to do I don't have to pay too much attention with you locks and the, the locks in the bank will actually become useful in the future I can use it for fire making or fletching which I'm going to need in chunks around me so I think for fire making I almost get as much XP as willow lock so yeah pretty good stored XP I think managed to get a XP tome and we're going to put that in hunter and that gets us five hunter the level should speed up quite a bit now with lamping. Another wood cutting level. 71 wood cutting. I can now use crystal axe. That is a nice looking icon I have to say. 62 cooking. That means I can now cook monkfish. I think the first time we are going to get raw monkfish is from the brimstone chest. And we need to make a bit over a thousand cakes now for a level. Another XP tome, getting some pretty good RNG on the random events. And there are six Hunter, levels are going up quickly now. My goal with Lamping Hunter is level 17 to prepare for Puro Puro. And level 15 will also allow me to dig up the, the worms in Piscarillius in case I get there first. Um, but Lamping goals on this account are basically just preparing the account for future grinds. It is not necessary to complete everything that potentially can be completed by only lamping it because that would mean i have to catch every impling kill every slay monster in a dungeon i don't have to do that but yeah i think a fair goal in these accounts is to prepare myself as best as possible for future chunks that's why i also lamped five agility for the 
Shazin course. 75 wood cutting. Wow. I can now chop magic trees, which is east of me actually. Um, so we don't have to get that in the future. 75 wood cutting. That's amazing. We have banked so many locks as well. I think we have like over five or six thousand locks in the bank now. I just had so much AFK to do so. I'm pretty sure I also have 75 fire making bank now. So nice. There we go. Big strength level coming in. 88 strength. Getting close to that beautiful 90 strength now. I decided to work on hellhounds a little bit. One of the big goals of this chunk is obtaining a smoldering stone. Which is a 1 in 32,000 drop from hellhounds. Um, the good thing is I will get a lot of totem drops. I will get a lot of prayer XP and... A bunch of combat XP which I want for the Seragnus grind. So it's actually kind of good for this account to do this grind. It's almost like a never ending slayer task. Uh, I just don't get XP. <laughs> the main focus of the next video is probably going to be Smoldering Stone. But I am starting to work on uh, Hellhounds a little bit here and then. Maybe we get lucky. Nice level coming in. 65 cooking. I can now make pineapple pizzas and wine of Zemrak. Pineapple pizza is actually really good food, but I don't have the ingredients for it, so... Chocolate cakes it is. And we've made well over 10,000 chocolate cakes at this point. Another level killing hellhounds, 84 hit points. And we also managed to get a totem piece. Always nice to see the totem pieces. In the last video we killed 10 scotizos, and I think my plan is to collect 10 totems again, and then do them again in another video. And just slowly get my scotizo kill gun up that way. 69 cooking. Yeah. We have reached the 20,000 chocolate cake mark. And a beautiful level. 70 cooking. And we can now cook Admiral Pie. First prey level from Hellhounds actually. We got that full level from killing Hellhounds. Um, we have killed, let's see, how many Hellhounds? 855 Hellhounds. So yeah, that's nearly 25k prey XP. Not bad. 75 cooking. That unlocks something, surely. There we go. Rogue fish and... Moringing bats. Cool. Uh, how many more levels? Nine levels to go. Nice. Subscribe. It has been a while since we got one of these randoms. I always love to see this random. My only way to get fishing XP on this account currently... And that will get us a level 27 fishing. Awesome. 78 cooking. Slowly getting there, guys. And we have passed 50,000 chocolate cakes. I really got the hang of this grind now. Um, we're doing pretty good. Gonna push through. It is pretty expensive. I might actually run out of GP. I've spent around 4 million so far. I think I need around 6.5 million total. So hopefully we have enough money. But yeah, grind is going very well. 79 cooking. Five to go. And one more level for the clean 80 cooking. Starting to get close, guys. I showed the clip of the mystery box earlier and I got myself a body rune. And I realized that's the only way for me to get a body rune in this chunk. So let's bank the first body rune, I guess. I don't know why, but I think it's hilarious collecting these silly items that are... Pretty much useless, but rare to get on this account. And yeah, that's one of those items. A body rune only obtainable from a mystery box. Level 80 cooking has been achieved. Only making chocolate cakes, pretty much. And we can now cook sharks on the account. That is awesome. The first place where I can obtain a shark is most likely the Piscorilius food store. So that's not too far away. 63,000 chocolate cakes made so far. Another XP tome that will give me a level 105 hunter XP for level 8 hunting. And we got another XP tome pretty much back to back for another level 9 hunter. Nice strength level, 89 strength. One level to go for the clean 90 strength. I decided to try and AFK some king sand crabs. And they are pretty nice because they have a lot of hit points and they drop totems. And this is what a normal inventory looks like. They drop a lot of talisman as well. 
So yeah, I think this is going to be my new AFK thing to do on this account instead of u locks because it's a bit more worth the time compared to banking locks. I'm going to need a lot of stats for Hellhounds and Seragnus and I do get totem pieces as well this way. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Yo, this absolute legend found me in game doing some Seragnus and he decided to drop a bunch of bonds on me. So thank you so much, Slayer of Imps. My best temple spider trip so far. Six keys in one inventory. That's amazing. You might be wondering why I'm killing temple spiders by the way. But the reason is simple. I need more GP for cooking. Cooking is actually more expensive than I thought. I started with like 6 mil and I need around 500,000 more GP. So just going to kill temple spiders until I have enough GP. Get some combat stats, some grubby keys, some other nice drops. And go back to cooking once I have enough GP banked. Alright, this cash stack should be enough to finish cooking. It's around 2 GP per XP. So we will continue with the chocolate cake factory and hopefully we will have enough money. 81 cooking, beautiful. 3 levels to go. Already kind of feels like the final stretch, you know. Level 10 hunter, another XP random. Really getting good luck with that lately. Double digits hunter now, 7 more to go. Awesome. There's 82 cooking, nice level. We can now cook sea turtles. I think the sea turtles I can obtain from the Brimhaven chests. There's 83 cooking and we have made 85,000 chocolate cakes. It is time for the final stretch for real now. One final level and I can cook anglerfish on this account. Let's finish it guys. Blast cake and 80 for cooking. Can now cook anglerfish. Oh, that looks beautiful, man. Look at that. All right. That's um that's cooking done. That is cooking done. All the skilling grinds have now been finished on the chunk account in this specific chunk at least. Um well, let's cook some anglerfish, shall we? Let's cook some anglerfish. Will we successfully cook the first anglerfish? Yes, we do. Challenge completed. I will just cook all of the anglerfish I have in a bank and just see how many I can bank. Probably going to collect them because I don't really think it's necessary to use the anglerfish yet. But that feels so good, man. All right, that's the first inventory of anglerfish cooked. We did burn some, but... The success rate, I believe, is around 70%. We got 60 from Scotizo, so we should bank around 40 to 45, I think. So yeah, let's see. Another inventory cooked. A lot less burnt this time. Beautiful. There we go. Last anglerfish in a bank. We have cooked 42 out of 60 successfully. That is really not bad. A good amount of free food on the account. If you got this far into the video, you are a legend. If you enjoyed the video, a great way to support it is giving the video a like. And subscribe if you want to see future episodes of this account. I decided to do a steel dragon trip after the trip where I got the dragon plate skirt. And I managed to get the dragon plate legs as well. Look at those beautiful plate legs. New fashion scape on the account. And this is what my outfit looks like right now. I look like an absolute unit. Love it. Really happy I got the plate legs as well. Been a little while since I got a lamp. We should get a level with this. There we go. 11 Hunter. Six levels to go and I have Puro Puro prepped on the account. I was paying so much attention to the strength level and I still missed the level. But that is 90 strength. Oh, that looks amazing. 80 attack, 90 strength, 80 defense. Uh, I think I'm going to continue training strength for a bit. Maybe until 94 or 95 and then switch to attack with defense. Decided to AFK some sand crabs. Got a few totem pieces so far and uh, yeah. Melee stats are really getting up there now. 85 hit points. Big level because it also got me 850 total. That looks pretty satisfying in the chat. Very clean looking levels. And there's level 91 strength. Beautiful. I've been spending some time at sand crabs and kind of thinking what I want to do on the account. And there are two main objectives I have right now. The first objective is completing Seragnus, except a jar and a pet. So I need to get the last combat diary and I need to get a dragon mat. Which should not take hundreds of kills. And it's nice to get some more kill count in that boss. 
And the other objective is hunting the smoldering stone at Hellhounds. Doing the smoldering stone grind will get me a lot of combat stats and I will bank a lot of totems for Scotizos. So all of these goals are perfect for the account. And I think I want to start with doing some Seragnus. Another XP lamp for level 12 hunter. Five to go. The last combat diary task at Seragnus is pretty simple, but I waited until I had higher stats and potions to make this a lot easier. Basically every couple hits you do on Seragnus, it will freeze you in place and it will walk to a different spot. And when Seragnus is not in melee distance with you, it will use a range attack. Now to complete this combat diary task, you can only get hit by one range attack every time it runs away. So you mainly want to position yourself well so you can quickly get to the boss when it freezes you. And yeah, with my increased damage, this was very doable at this point. So I gave it a few tries. Alright, I think this should be it guys. Let's see. There it is. Ready to pounce. The last combat diary task, hard combat diary task completed on the account at Seragnus. That was a pretty fun one. Um, took me a couple kills to get. And I believe the lock will give a green section. Um, there it is. Oh, that looks beautiful. 5 out of 5 Seragnus combat tasks completed. And there's the description. Kill Seragnus without her using her range attack twice in a row. Beautiful. Ooh, that is a beautiful drop. 140 kill count for a Grubby Key, Giant Egg Sack and 5 Egg Potatoes all in one drop. I'm still using the same strategy as before. I'm taking one or two grubby keys with me when I do these trips. And once I get low on food, I run to the grubby chest in the same dungeon, open the chest and I always get eight pieces of food guaranteed. So I can kind of do like really big trips and delay them with the keys. So getting some extra keys from the boss is awesome. In the last episode, we finished the 84 cooking grind with chocolate cakes. And the chocolate cakes are actually pretty useful as well for Seragnus. Save myself some good pieces of food from the grubby chest. Got myself a nice book of knowledge. Let's use that on Hunter for level 14 Hunter. Three levels to go. We're getting kind of close now, guys. Gonna be maybe like six more lamps or something. It's been a really long time since we've had a fishing random. Should get me a level as well. Let's see, 28 fishing. My goal in this chunk is probably level 30. It's a lot harder to get this random now because I can also get the magic variant. But yeah, level 30 fishing in this chunk should be possible from just randoms. That's pretty cool. First prey level, killing hellhounds, they drop ashes. A fairly recent update, so every hellhound I kill gets me 25 prey XP. That will definitely add up, so pretty happy with that. And yeah, one level to go for level 60 prayer. Been killing hellhounds for a good little while. I got myself two totem pieces and that will make nine total. I think I want to do my totems once I get 10. So we can almost do a big Scotizo session. We've also been getting some nice random events, some iron arrows, which is very useful. I did kind of discover a method where if I use the poison dagger and kind of poison like all the hellhounds in the room, I can get up to like 100 kills per hour. So yeah, I've been killing Hellhounds for like, I would say like 20 hours for 2200 kill count. Doing pretty good so far. Level 82 attack. I forgot to record 92 strength. But since 92 strength, I decided to switch to attack. I think my next goal is 85 attack and 85 defense. Get my base melee stats up a little bit for Seragnus. That will make the pet and a jar grind a lot easier. And yeah, I, I mean, I need to get the smoldering stone anyway. So why not do it first? Get a bunch of combat stats. Get a lot of totems for the Scotizo grind. And then move on to the bosses. I think that will be smart. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get 85 attack next, I guess. Just got this beautiful maze random. 707 iron arrows. The only way I can train range in this chunk is from monster drops and maze randoms. I only have a regular bow. So I'm going to stack like thousands of iron arrows and I get a few bronze arrows from the chest as well. And once I have a big stack of arrows, I'm going to get into my range grind and probably get level 60 because that's a requirement I need in this chunk to equip some red dehyde armor. Really love to see these big arrow rewards from the maze randoms. Definitely going to help. Oh my god, look, look at this. It, it's real. No way. I got the smoldering stone. <laughs> Holy shit, I- oh my god, I'm so lucky. I very rarely react when I get a drop, but my god, am I happy that I got this thing early, guys. My kill count is 2,700 
and 45. The drop rate for this thing is 1 in 32,000. Um, I have killed thousands, probably 10,000s of NPCs in a game that have a 1 in 32,000 drop. Dust Devils, Abbey Demons, Hellhounds. I've never received one of these drops. But man, this is probably the best account to ever get this drop on. There it is. The Smoldering Stone is in the collection lock. I think that's the only spot in the collection lock. No way, guys. We are, we've completed one of the three biggest goals on this account. And we've only been killing Hellhounds for about a week, I would say. Five days, maybe? Let's go. Um, there's one issue though. I don't have enough totem pieces. Um, so I think I'm going to kill like moss shines or something. But that's okay. Like, holy shit. I'm so happy. Got myself another book random. Level 15 hunter. Two levels to go. We can now dig for sandworms though, which I can find in Piscarillius. So if we do roll chunks in the... East direction, I can train my hunter if I hit that spot. So that's pretty nice as well. So I prepared for both the sandworms and Puro Puro. Decided to hit up some good old moss giants. And there's 60 prayer on the account. Nice level. That unlocks a bunch of things that I cannot use. This is only the beginning though. My prayer is going to get much higher. Hopefully 70 plus, that would be pretty cool. Just killing some moss giants, switching between NPCs to do some totem hunting and training my combat stats now that I've finished hellhounds. Probably the main thing I will kill is moss giants and hill giants for now. And with this inventory we have hit 25 long bones. New item I can start collecting. See if we can get over 100 of these. And there's an attack level coming in at hill giants. 83 attack. I have compared every NPC in the Catacombs dungeon for the drop rate for the totem pieces. And hill giants are on number 2. The number 1 NPC for totems is skeletons. But it's only a slightly increase over hill giants. And hill giants have much better drops than skeletons. Which means I'm basically going to kill thousands of hill giants for totems. They drop unsold hats, limp birds, herbs, runes, arrows... And some other random items like the long bones, curved bones, giant keys. They have quite a few good drops for the long term of this account. And skeletons don't drop that much. They drop a few runes and iron arrows, but that's about it. So yeah, I think for my Scortizo goal, we are going to have to kill tens of thousands of hill giants. I think one of my goals on this account is going to be 100,000 hill giants. That should get me around 75 totems. And hopefully get me quite a few items from Scotizo I need. So yeah, it's going to be my new home. There we go, got a two totem piece trip. Very lucky. This is kind of what an average like inventory looks like. But did get pretty lucky on totems. But with these totems, I now have 10 dark totems in the bank. Which means I'm going to do a Scotizo session. Do all of my 10 totems, see if we can get any nice loot. Kill count number 12. Let's see what we get. Oh no, we got a dark totem base. I mean, it's good because it's a totem piece, but that's like a 1 in 40 drop, I think. Ooh, that hurts a little bit. The drops we need from Scotizo is the pet, the dark claw, and the full dark totem drop. The rarest of these items is the dark totem with a drop rate of 1 in 128, so that can take a really, really long time. Well, that's one third of the dark totem, but not what I need. The reason I need the full dark totem drop, by the way, is because it's on the collection lock. And the only monster that drops it is this boss. Ooh, second anglerfish drop on the account. We can cook that and have some food for later bossing. Probably one of the more useful drops from this boss right now. Pretty nice, 15 kill count. And there we go, that's kill count number 20 for Onyx Ball Tips. No uniques from this session, 
But we did get 10 more kill count, which is awesome. Probably going to collect 10 totems again before I do any more Scotizo kills. But yeah, nice kills. Just got myself 61 prayer. Hill giants are definitely going to provide me with a lot of prayer XP. And the end sword heads on banking is also going to give me probably 100 thousands of prey XP once I get out of this chunk. Really liking these hill giants. Nice attack level coming in. 84 attack. One more to go for 85 and then we're gonna switch to defense and get 85 defense next. Missed the level but got myself 87 hit points earlier. And we also got a nice dark totem top. Slowly starting to collect totems in the bank again. And there it is, first attack milestone, 85 attack, time to switch to defense, get myself 85 defense next. Combat level is also getting up there, we're already close to 107 combat on this account, that is awesome. All in one game chunk. 62 prayer and 107 combat. First defense level of the grind, 81 defense. These higher combat levels are really going to help at Seragnus I think. Did a pretty big trip. This is going to be 200 Venonatus kill count. For 13 Dragon Bones. Nice drop. I can currently do like 15 kill trips if I take one or two keys. Which is actually really good. I'm using the altar for prayer and uh, yeah lots of prayer flicking. But yeah these trips are like over an hour so that's awesome. I've had thousands of runes saved up on the account and uh, yeah it's time to use some of the runes do like a magic session and see what magic level I can get. The higher my magic level the more magic defense I have against Seragnus so it will be pretty helpful for defense. Just gonna use all my runes on black demons because they have minus 10 magic defense so I can probably get the most XP out of it. And yeah let's see uh, what level I can get. First level 71 magic. Got myself a totem piece as well. Level 72 magic. And there's level 73 magic which unlocks Enfeeble. So we're only 7 levels away from unlocking the highest spell I can use in this chunk I believe. Except like teleport other but yeah it's pretty cool. It's not a requirement but I'm pretty sure I can get like 80 magic in this chunk. From all the monster drops. Alright we got another class random here. And this is going to give me a level. Let's use this on Hunter. 225 XP for level 16. So we are only one away from level 17 which unlocks Puro Puro in the future. Actually one exam random and I'm there. Or two genies. And I think after I get 17 Hunter I might lamp my Slayer to get a bit of a head start before we get a Slayer Master unlocked. There isn't too much else to lamp really. Agility I will unlock in Shazing Chorus. Uh, Hunter will definitely come once I get either Grubby Worms or Puro Puro. And I can't lamp Urblore so I don't really know what to lamp next. I feel like Slayer is the best choice. There we go. Nice defense level. Decided to kill some Moss Giants. 82 defense. I guess one thing I can do is collect a lot of Mossy Keys and Giant Keys. And kind of get those banked for... The far far future. I probably won't be able to get to Varrock in like I don't know. Probably one or two years at least. Depending on the chunk rolls. But it's nice to have all the keys banked. 63 prayer and 875 total. I'm curious if I can get to 1000 total in this chunk. It's gonna be hard because there's a lot of skills I cannot train. But uh, that would be awesome if we can get 1000. I don't know why but this is one of these drops that's completely useless. But always funny to see. A curved bone, pretty much 1 in a 5,000 drop. I feel like we're gonna get many of these. No, the sad thing is I'm going to collect probably hundreds of long bones and many curved bones and I can never trade them in. Because by the time I get to Lumbridge and I can actually trade them in, I will already be 99 construction. So it's just purely gonna be for collection's sake, I guess. Well, 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 would you look at that? Another curved bone. <laughs> the collection only grows. And there's 83 defense, nice level. Two levels to go for base 85. And then I'll switch back to attack I think. 88 hit points, 84 defense, one level to go for 85. Loving this AFK rock crab spot. That's it guys, 
I got myself the book of knowledge. This is the last XP random I need for Hunter. Use this on Hunter for level 17. There we go. We can now catch baby implings. We have both lamped the Hunter and agility goal. So next is Slayer, I guess. I'm back to some Seragnus. The combat stats are a bit higher. And look at this absolutely stacked inventory. This is the last kill of the trip. I mean, if my inventories are going to look like this all the time when I'm on this grind for the pet and a jar, it's going to... It's going to be amazing. Look at all these supplies. We got bones, ores, herbs, dehydes, some seeds. Awesome. I love to see this drop. A grubby key and a giant egg sack in the same kill. Almost 250 kill count now. And there we go. That's 250 kill count. Oh my god. For the dragon mat. Let's go. That's it. Uh, the last gear upgrade for a long time. 250 kills to get the dragon mat. A little bit over drop rate. It's 1 in 192, I think. Um, I am super happy with that. I look like a green dragon bot right now. The, fas the green dragon bot fashion scape is complete. Look at me. The dragon mat, the dragon legs. All right. Um, well, that's that's the reckless done for now, I think. I want to focus on my combat stats before I come back here. That was one of the last gear upgrades I could get, so... Pretty happy with that. 250 kill count exactly. I guess um, we back to hill giants guys. We're going to stack a lot of totems. And try and get some Scotizo drops in the next episode. Mix nice level. 85 defense. We now have 85 attack and defense. So I'm going to switch back to attack. And probably go for 90 attack next. And with this inventory we have reached 100 giant keys in the bank. I just switched from AFK spots. I've been AFKing sand crabs for a few weeks now. The king sand crabs will be a little bit further into the dungeon. And they are great, but they have a lot of hit points and a relatively bad totem piece rate overall compared to other monsters. Um, they do drop raw food, which is awesome. Collected a lot of the foods, but I figured it's time to check around a little bit and see if there's a better option uh, with my current stats. And I found out about this little spot right here. I can aggro both the level 56 Cyclops. There's a 76 guy right there, which is a bit stronger. And I don't really want to AFK that guy. So instead, I'm standing in this spot and I can aggro both the spawns, which is amazing. I can reset my aggro every 10 minutes. I run into one of these rooms and back. I can really easily tank these guys at this point with my stats. Um... So yeah, this is going to be my new AFK spot. They drop black knives, which is amazing for range training. That will definitely help together with the iron arrows I have in a bank. Which I think I will use soon, by the way. But if I can collect hundreds of black knives here, that's definitely going to be nice. And yeah, I mean, this will be my new AFK spot for totem pieces. When I'm active, I am still killing hill giants. Um, also, I'm not really going to bury all the bones because it's... Just not AFK at that point. I wasn't getting the bones at sand crabs. But I do get a much better totem piece right here. So this is going to be my new home when I'm editing and doing other stuff. So very happy I found this guys. Alright back to tech training. First level 86. I'm just going for level 90. And probably after that go for 90 defense. Been doing a lot of cyclops trips. We are close to 8 totems now. And I just hit the 150 Ancient Shard mark. That is an incredible amount of Ancient Shards. And I don't even have any uniques from Scotizo. So I'm really curious how many of these we're going to get when we are done. <laughs> but that's amazing. Yo, look at that. A Dark Totem Top and a Longbone in the same kill. That looks amazing. Beautiful drop right there. Levels are coming in. There's 87 attack and a beautiful hill giant trip. Almost got a back-to-back -back totem piece and giant key. So always love to see those quick totem piece drops. Got myself a mace random. It's been a while. The main thing I want for mace randoms is iron arrows. Because it's one of the better ways to get iron arrows for range training on this account. The two main ways for arrows are mace randoms and NPC drops. But yeah, the extra runes and other supplies are always nice. Alright, this bone will give me a level 65 prayer. I can now wear some third age stuff. Um, pretty nice. And yeah, the levels are going pretty fast with hill giants. XP is definitely adding up. Another nice level 88 attack. I'm really loving this AFK spot. Decided to high alk 
pretty much everything in a bank that has some value uh i used all my gp for the cooking grind so i was basically left with like 50,000 gp and we managed to get nearly 700,000 gp again it's also time to start my scrotizo session i have saved up 11 dark totems so i'm going to gear up for scrotizo and uh, see if we can get some new drops really excited for this And that's the last kill of the Scortizo session. We got a lot of nice drops, but no uniques. 32 kill count, which means we are a bit over the drop rate for the Dark Claw. And we still need the pet and the Dark Totem drop. So let's go back to training and uh, collect some more Dark Totems. That, my friends, is a curved bone on the ground. It's always fun to see this drop. Uh, one in a little bit over 5,000. That's going to be added to the collection. And there's level 89 attack. We are really close to the 90 now. One level to go. And then we are going to switch to defense and go for 90 defense. And after that, we will be base 90 melee. Stats are really starting to beef up on this account. That's going to be so good for the future bossing. I've been dry for a little bit, but this is actually pretty insane. I've been logged in for 10 minutes. I just started my AFK session and I got a full totem. That is... Probably the most totem pieces I've had in 10 minutes. And I'm killing Cyclops. So they aren't even the best monsters to kill. So wow. That is uh, some nice uh, stream of luck right there. Professional YouTuber missing big levels. There is a 90 attack. That looks beautiful. Been AFKing Cyclops for a lot of hours now. They are extremely good for this account. And um, yeah, it's time to switch to defense now. And go for 90 defense next. Speaking of level 90 skills managed to get 90 hit points as well it was pretty close to the hit points level so we almost have all of these beautiful stats 90 plus all from killing monsters in the, the catacombs pretty much we are back at hill giants humble beginnings first defense level 86 defense wow that is a really really good maze random 700 plus iron arrows and we got some feathers and nature runes maze randoms is one of the best ways for me to get uh, arrows to train my ranged so that is amazing guys and two percent girls that's a curved bone uh i i do like to see this item i don't know why i think it's such a cool item to get and collect that's my second curved bone from cyclopses we've killed 7700 so far i've had a curved bone from every possible monster in this chunk now which is not a requirement but i think that's pretty cool we can cross that off the not needed item bucket list. Button. Subscribe. 88 defense. Beautiful level. We spent a ridiculous amount of Cyclops. Um, two more defense levels. And we are base. 90 melee stats including hit points. Man that's going to look so sick. I can't believe I've almost base 90 melee stats. Only killing like catacomb shit. That's ridiculous. Really setting myself up before the Seragnus grind. And the extra levels are also going to help at Scotizo. So yeah, doing good. Yo, this absolute legend just found me a game and gave me a bond. Thank you, beast. Nice little prayer level coming in. 66 prayer from Big Bones. There we go. 89 defense. Huge defense level. One level to go for base 90 melee stats on the chunker. That's awesome to see. I'm mostly going to kill hill giants now for totem pieces, prayer XP. And they have overall the best drops compared to all the other monsters. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time here. Ooh, a long bone and a giant key in the same drop. One in 128 and one in 400. Pretty spicy. 67 prayer. We just missed another level, but there is 91 hit points. We are one level away from the halfway point to 99. Very epic. And there it is, the big level 90 defense. 
90 attack, strength, defense, and hit points on the chunk account. So now that I'm base 90 melee, I'm going to switch back to strength and go for the max hits. I think that's the best plan. Probably go all the way to 99 strength and then switch to, I think, attack. That's going to maximize my DPS at like bosses and stuff. Just finished an amazing hill giant trip. Two long bones, a giant key, and a dark totem top. And this dark totem top finishes eight dark totems in a bank. And that means I'm going to do some Scortizo again. I want to try and uh, see if we can get some more drops. First Scortizo kill of the day. Oh my god. Yes, we got the pet. Scortizo pet. Boys and girls, we just got the pet. 33 kill count. That's awesome. Look at this little guy. Little epic purple guy. That's one out of three drops from Scotizo. We got the pet before the Dark Claw, which is super weird, but not complaining. Not complaining. And this is what the collection lock looks like. The Dark Totem is twice as rare as the pet, and the Dark Claw is twice as common as the pet. So we have quite some stuff to go. I'm not going for the Jar of Darkness because it takes 30,000 hours on average to get one. But yeah, this Dark Totem drop, guys. It might give us some big trouble. A 1 in 128 drop from Scortizo is no joke. Just got a beautiful mystery box during these Cotizo kills and that is number eight in the bank for the people that don't know i'm collecting mystery boxes until i finish the first chunk and i want to open all of them after i finish and see if i can get these still baguette and that is Cotizo kill count number 40 on the account kill count is really starting to get there now still dry on the dark claw and no dark totem yet but kills are going up nicely we are ending on kill count 42. That was the last kill of the session. Back to hill giants. First strength level in a long time. 93 strength. Going to start working on strength for the max hits. And uh, yeah, work on 99 I guess. First 99 on the account is going to be strength. I'm pretty sure about that. And there's another prayer level. 68 prayer. Two levels away from piety that I can never use. For a long time. Look at that big boy on the ground. Another curve bone. With this hill giant inventory, we've reached a pretty cool milestone. 200 giant keys in the bank. And we've also reached 250 ancient shards. So that looks amazing. Pretty close to 100 long bones as well. Bank is looking amazing. It is Christmas in RuneScape. And I want to give a massive shout out to Curtis, aka MMORPG in game. He decided to come over here and spawn some of these holiday items for me. I really, really wanted a Santa hat on this account, so... Look at all these beautiful items on the floor. And this is what it looks like in a bank. I got 8 Santa hats and a couple party hats of each color. You could argue it's something that I cannot get in my chunk, but... It's mostly just cosmetic items, so I think it's fine. They look amazing, so... Just finished another totem with this hill giant trip. And I've also reached 100 long bones. Which is 350,000 construction XP if I trade that in in Lumbridge. Unfortunately by the time I get there I will probably already be 99 construction. But the long bone collection looks pretty good in the bank. Pretty nice level. 69 prayer. Nice. And with that level we've also reached 900 total on the chunk account. Beautiful. Yo, what the heck? I killed two hill giants in the same spot and I got two long bones and a dark totem piece. So one of those drops must be a dark totem piece and a long bone in the same kill. That is really rare. Big strength level coming in. 94 strength. Five levels to go. Hill giants are really starting to pay off.
All right, guys. I I just got a giant key, guys, and I'm pretty sure that I cannot get any more on the collection lock since I've got over 250 now. So let's confirm that. Yep, there we go. So there's 250 keys on the collection lock. This is key number 251 or 252 in the bank, I believe. So it's not tracking the keys on the collection lock anymore. Um, we won't be able to use these keys forever, but just gonna collect them in the bank. Missed the level, but decided to AFK some sand crabs, and I got 92 hit points and a dark totem top, so beautiful. Just take a moment and look at this beautiful inventory. Uh, two totem pieces, a shard, and a mystery box. And I believe that is going to be number 10. There it is. 10 mystery boxes on the account. Um, that looks amazing. Cool collection so far. And there it is, 70 prayer. Big level, very good looking level too. Uh, normally you can use Spidey with this level. In my case, I can't do anything with it, but it looks cool. First slay level using lamps, a new lamping era on this account. I think Slayer is the best thing to lamp. There will actually be a few unlocks if I get some levels, but it's going to take a long time to get big levels. Things like blood veils at level 50 in the catacombs and a couple other things. Just going to kind of give myself a head start on Slayer by lamping it. And uh, yeah, we got ourselves level 2 Slayer. Should get a lot more XP now per lamp. Just did a Scotizo kill and I got 4 Ancient Shards, which is, I believe, 1 in 25. So that's as rare as a Dark Claw. That's uh, pretty unfortunate. There is 50 Scotizo kill count on the account. Without a Dark Claw, so that is officially two times dry on the Dark Claw. But not a problem because we still need the Totem, which is way rare. But yeah, kill count is going up nicely. We've been getting a lot of Totems from the Hill Giant grind. Ooh, massive level 95 strength. Killing tens of thousands of hill giants for totems and we're getting some big levels as a result. Four to go. What the hell? No way. You have a funny feeling like you would have been followed. Okay. All right. The game is kind of trolling now. Uh, that is the second pet in the drop rate um, without a dark claw. <laughs> that is... Uh... <laughs> okay. That is pretty interesting. That is Cortizo pet number two. Ooh, that's almost what I need. Uh, I got a dark totem base drop. An additional dark totem piece from the Scotizo kill, which is, I believe, a 1 in 42 drop rate. It's one third of uh, the dark totem that I need. Not really what I need, but I'll take an extra totem piece. That's pretty cool. But getting some uh, getting some pretty good Scotizo luck again. A second pet and now a second dark totem piece from uh, Scotizo. I have been trying out some red dragons uh, because my stats are pretty high now. I, I found this flinching method and I can do around 3 or 4 kills per trip if I use a super set. So I managed to get a couple kill count and uh, we got a rune spear drop which is a pretty big drop because I can poison a spear and replace it with my poison dagger. It's my best weapon to poison something right now so that's pretty good. I'm trying to get a red dehyde body and van bracers, but we're going to get into that in a future episode because I don't really plan on grinding the dragons yet. I've just been trying some kills and see uh, what the best method is. And I also don't have the range level yet, so it's going to be a grind for later. But the rune spear is amazing. And with that hill giant trip, we have reached 300 giant keys in the bank. That is awesome. Another prayer level from the hill giant grind. 71 prayer. My main goal is to kill around 100,000 hill giants because that's going to give me a lot of totems. And I think I should get like 78 prayer from that. So that's a lot of prayer in the first chunk. Ninety-six strength. Do I need to say anything else? That is a huge level. Three levels to go for the first 99. Mostly from hill giants. Wow, look at the chat box. We got like 
five giant keys so close after each other. That is some crazy giant key luck right there. This lamp will give me six agility. I actually got both the lamps on the same day to get this level. And this level needs a little bit of explanation. This one agility level saves me like two minutes every time I regen my run from zero to 100. And that's gonna add up over time. So I figured I might as well lamp this extra level. Might come in handy uh, when I do hill giants for the run energy or scortizo. And it didn't take too much extra time, so... Level 72 prayer. And we've also reached 10 million plus strength XP. Another slay level coming in. Three slayer. Lamping the slay levels is starting to get a lot faster at this point. We are three early levels. So that's awesome. Always hard to catch the hit points levels because I don't really look at it too much. But we got 93 hit points. Big level. This hit will get me 97 strength. Beautiful. I believe I need one more strength level and then I will reach the max hit on this account using only prayer and no potion. So that's pretty big. And I'm super close to 50,000 hill giant kills right now. All right, we have reached the milestone for now. 50,000 hill giants killed on this account. And I'm going to show you guys the results of all the kills. So we have some totem pieces. I'm going to start saving them up again. Almost 150 long bones, 415 giant keys, uh, and over 350 ancient shards. So this is the skilling tab, and we have over 2,000 ansold hats right now. That's a lot of prayer XP. Pretty awesome. Nearly 4,500 limpert stack, all from hill giants, and a couple herbs that we got passively from the hill giant trips as well. We got some seeds as well, some strawberry, watermelon, and snapegrass seeds, and some sweet corn seeds, so those will be planted later on for farming XP. We are currently at 12 mystery boxes, and we cannot forget about the arrows. The arrows from hill giants are amazing, we also got some from maze randoms, and we cannot forget about the runes. The hill giants drop almost all of these runes. Lots of fire runes, cosmics, laws, death, chaos, natures, so yeah, looking great. And then this is kind of an update on the playtime. We are currently at 46 days playtime. 39 collection lock slots and 13 combat achievements. And we have 37 million total XP and 115 combat level. Over 1100 hours playtime on this account so far. Doing pretty good. The remaining items before I can roll my first chunk are the Dark Claw and Dark Totem from Scotizo, Seractus Pet and Jar, and a Draconic Visage. And today I will show you one of my biggest grinds I've ever completed in RuneScape. One of the items I need left in this chunk is the Dark Totem drop. And it isn't exactly the most easy item to obtain because it's locked behind the Scotizo boss. You need three separate pieces to make a Dark Totem, and with this you can kill the boss, which drops a Dark Totem. Huh. So I have looked into several monsters in his starting chunk and hill giants were the perfect target. They have a great drop rate for totem pieces and their general drop table is really good. So I killed a lot of them. 100,000 actually. And in this video I will show you the loot, Scotizo kills and all of the other results. Join me. First level of the video, level 4 Slayer. The Slayer Lamping goal continues. I'm going to try and get level 15. One of the main reasons I'm killing hill giants is the totem pieces for Scotizo. And we just got two totem pieces in one trip. Always beautiful to see. And there's a very big level incoming. 98 strength. We are one level away from the first 99 on this account. And the combat stats are looking amazing so far. And there's level 74 prayer, which doesn't unlock anything right now, but it is the level required for rigor. So we only need three more levels and then we have all the levels required for all the prayers in the prayer book. Awesome, these big bones are actually really adding up. Will this Bob the Cat random finally give me fishing XP? I've had magic like 10 times in a row. Yes, there we go. 26 fishing from only the random event. My goal, I guess, is level 30. I think that will look good, but I don't really need fishing for anything. But these three levels are pretty nice. 
professional YouTuber missing levels. Just got 94 hit points. If I do max my melee stats in this chunk, I should get 99 hit points as well. But these levels take forever to get. Quick little uh, bank update here. We just got 500 giant keys and 10 totems in a bank right now. I'm going to uh, update you guys with all these cool items once in a while. Uh, I, I'm going to get a lot of these keys, but mostly I'm here for the totems. Pretty special moment here. I'm one hit away from the first 99 on the Extreme One Chunk account. Mostly from killing, well, Catacomb monsters and Temple Spiders, I guess. Really cool. There it is. 99 strength. Beautiful. One out of many 99s on this account. I decided to do a little uh, gathering in the catacombs. Always fun to get some friends from the stream together. And uh, yeah, I, I guess the next uh, 99 I'm going to work on is going to be attack. 99 attack and 99 strength is going to be amazing for the Seragnus grind. So I just messed around at Iron Dragons for a few hours and I realized I got an Adamant Square Shield, which is actually an item I have to get in this chunk and I didn't realize it. The Adamant Square Shield is my best in slot shield for range training, simply because it doesn't give me any negative uh, range attack. And as you can see, if I equip both the items, I do not get any negative range attack. So pretty cool little upgrade that I didn't think about. And there's another beautiful prayer level, 75 prayer. Let's see what that unlocks. Members can now wield the Elysian Spirit Shield. That thing looks absolutely beautiful. Another cool uh, bank milestone, 400 Ancient Shards. Over 100,000 Arclight Charges right there. Cool. First attack level of many, 91. Road to 99 attack starts now. And we are well over halfway of the hill giant grind. The road to 100,000 kills continues. It has been a little bit since I've had one of these uh, curve boners. I'm actually a little dry on these, but um, yeah, they look pretty cool on the ground. One in a 5,000 drop. Wow, I go dry and then we just get another one in the same day. Two uh, curve bones in the same day. Cool. I like to collect these. Another lamping milestone. Six slayer. Levels are starting to uh, get a bit fast at this point. Alright, 2.3% ladies and gentlemen. 92 attack. The halfway mark to 99. Love to see it. Not the biggest thing to go dry on, it's fine, but just got another curve boner. Number 11 in the bank. 11 curve bones in the bank right now. We'll add that to the collection. Stream wanted me to do a uh, random Scotizo kill, so I did. You guys can also see the starting KC uh, before we do all the totems from Hill Giants, which is 64 kill count, and we got nothing. We have two pets um, and nothing else, so we need the Dark Claw and the Dark Totem from Scotizo to uh, complete it in this chunk. So lots of drops to work on. 93 attack! Alright, we're getting a lot of curve bones lately. I do record these every time because it is just beautiful on the ground. It looks so good. 1 in 5k. Decided to do an AFK session at Sandcrabs. This is my go-to AFK spot when I'm editing. And uh, we just got a level 94 attack. Since these levels are going up so fast, I think it's a good time to talk about this. I've seen a lot of people uh, comment or mention that they think that I'm going to fly through literally all of Zaya once I get out of this chunk and yeah some chunks are gonna be really fast because there's nothing but this chunk is like 80 or 90 percent just melee like killing things killing bosses collecting totems um, a lot of RNG drops so once I get out of this chunk I'm going to get a lot of uh, skilling challenges and half of my skills are level one and I have to probably get like instantly to level like 80 or 99 so it might look that way because I'm spending so much time in this one chunk. But we are going to get a lot of big scaling challenges all around me. So yeah, don't worry about that because um, yeah, there's a lot of tough scaling challenges after this. Zaya has a lot of uh, content. And also we aren't locked to Zaya. We can get off Zaya by rolling the boat three chunks east of me. I can roll to uh, Port Serim. So I've had that question a few times as well. And here's another little bank update for you guys. 
600 giant keys and 20 dark totems. And we're also over 200 long bones. So the stacks are growing nicely. There's another attack level. Missed it. But 95 attack. We are doing very good on this hill giant grind. And I've kind of calculated what attack level I should expect from this. And I think I'm going to end up getting 97 or 98 attack. From finishing 100,000 hill giants. Beautiful prayer level. 77 prayer, which is the level for Agri, if I had it. Um, I now have the prayer level for every prayer in the spell book. Quite a nice level, considering I've only pretty much buried big bones. It would be really cool if we can get level 80 in this chunk. Quick totem update. 25 dark totems banked right now. Beautiful stack so far. So the last episode I talked about this a little bit, but I started killing brutal red dragons. I found the optimal method to kill them, and it's basically brute forcing them. I pre-pot in the bank, bring a full inventory of foods, and I kill them with magic protect, staying out of melee distance, walking back and forth. And this way I only get hit by the normal dragon fire attack, which hits a max of 10. Now it is still really terrible to kill them this way. I can do like... Usually 3 or 4 kills per trip. And the reason I have to kill these is because they drop the best in slot range equipment in my chunk. They drop a red dehyde body with a drop rate of 1 in 64. And red dehyde vamps with a drop rate of 1 in 128. So pretty tough but with enough food and potions I should be able to do this. I'm doing a few trips a day just trying my luck every time I have potions. And uh, yeah we should eventually get these items. Oh, look what we got there. The red dehyde body. One of the two items I need. I currently have 40 kill counts, so a little bit under drop rate. Very happy to see that. The trips paid off. We still need the uh, rares item left, but um, that is progress, guys. These things are so tough to kill. Getting two rare drops in one hill giant kill. It does sometimes happen. Ancient Sharper's Giant Key. That's like 1 in 400 and 1 in 128. In one drop. Beautiful. Use that on Slayer. 80 XP for level 9. So 6 more to go and I can kill Banshees. Another big level 96 attack. 3 levels to go and we are max attack and strength. It finally happened guys. Full Dark Totem in one hill giant trip um these trips are not like super long but look at the chat middle top base that is beautiful first time that happens in 85,000 kills i've had um i've almost had this happen like three times i believe but um yeah beautiful we are very close to 30 dark totems in the bank now awesome wow that is absolutely insane. This stream of totem RNG is just... that. Uh, wow, I don't know what's going on. But look at that. That's like five totem pieces in like less than 10 minutes. That's the craziest luck I've had so far. That's absolutely insane. I think that's almost three full totems today. Wow. No way. That's a duplicate body. Ooh, man, I want to be done with this place. Um, there's another red D8 body. We have two bodies now, no Vems. But we aren't at the drop rate yet for the Vem Bracer, so we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying, guys. Holy shit, 30 Dark Totems in the bank. The Hill Giant grind is paying off. I cannot wait to do all of these Dark Totems later. That is looking crazy. Subscribe. Or else my mom doesn't refresh my membership. Did not miss the level this time. 96 hit points. I love to see these levels. It is crazy to get these high stats from just killing hill giants. But um, spend enough time in one place and uh, you get results guys. We are very close to 90,000 hill giant kills. So final stretch. And then we are going to do all of the dark totems.
a uh, long bone and a joint key in the same kill. That's how rare. One in 400, one in 128. Beautiful. Always love to see those double, like, purple uh, drops in one one single hill giant drop. And that's also pretty uh, special. Three long bones pretty much at the start of the trip. Pretty crazy. Another crazy level. 97 attack. Two levels away from 99. And I think we will just barely get one more level before we finish the hill giant goal. And just like that, after 97 attack, we pretty much get a back-to-back -back totem piece drop. Instantly rewarded. Definitely my favorite drop at Hill Giant. So satisfying to see all these uh, totem pieces. Alright, so we just hit the cap on Longbones in the collection lock. In the last episode, we uh, had this happen with the Giant Keys after getting 250 and this time it's long bones. So I have got over 250, which means the collection lock will stop tracking the long bone drops. I have spent way too much time at hill giants. I guess if this isn't a sign, then I don't know. But we are almost done. Just hit a uh, pretty cool milestone. 700 giant keys. Um, that is a lot of keys. Um, we, we are going to have a field day at Obor in uh, like two years from now. Cool. Level 78 prayer and we are super close to 120 combat. Amazing. Ooh, not what I expected, but got a totem piece from Red Dragons. That's pretty rare, but I'll take that. Still hunting for the fan bracers. Still lamping slayer and there's a pretty nice milestone. Double digits. 10 Slayer, 5 levels to go. What a beautiful looking drop on the floor. Dragon Plate Legs, that is my first uh, dupe. So I got 2 Dragon Plate Legs in the bank right now. No way, I just got a Dragon Dagger and an Ancient Shard in the same drop. The Dragon Dagger is the same rarity as the Vembracers and the Ancient Shard is pretty rare as well. I mean, I think that drop together is probably like... As rare, if not a lot rare than the uh, Visage drop. <laughs> that is crazy. Ancient Shard Milestone. 500 in the bank. Getting close to that 200,000 Arc Light Charges. I bet a lot of you guys are looking at this thinking, give me all those shards, I need those Arc Light Charges. You can do anything with that. Yes, Red d Vamps. Oh, what a grind. How many kills did I have to do? Um... 178 which is exactly 50 kills above drop rate which is not not terrible but um these dragons are so tough to kill you have no idea uh wow uh, yes i'm i'm happy to be done with this very happy we can move on to uh finishing the hill giant grind and we are basically completely prepped for seracnus now like that's my best in slot gear completed if i get 60 range so let's go Another Slayer level, 11 Slayer, making some nice progress, we're getting some decent RNG with the uh, XP randoms lately. Level 98 attack, 1 away from the second 99, and we are a few 1000 hill giants away from finishing the goal, so unfortunately we will not get 99, but we will get pretty close, so we can finish it on something else later on. But this is massive for the account, almost best dps for pretty much everything else left in the chunk which is going to help out a lot and yeah we are almost ready to start the scotiso session level 12 farming with this totem we have now 40 totems in the bank 40 dark totems that is so many from just killing hill giants um i cannot wait to do all of these we are almost ready the final kill for 100,000 hill giants. My f I think the first time I've killed 100,000 of one NPC. That's That has a bit of hit points. Like, you know, 35 hit points per NPC. This is it. This kill right here. 100,000 hill giants. That is a lot. The hill giant era is over. For now, for now. There it is. Oh my god. The 100 hill... The, the 100 big bones in the loot tab. That looks so cool. The final results. We have 750... No, 756 keys. 
519 ancient shards. Two, almost 280 long bones. 40 and a little bit totems, but we might get more before Saturday. And then we have some big stacks here. 4,084 and sold giant hats, which is like 2.5 mil prey XP. Over 1,000 sapphires. Like we got a lot of these from hill giants. How many did we get from hill giants? Let's see. We got 546 from hill giants. Wow. 39k fire runes. 38k water runes. And then we have some of these that we'll be using soon. Uh, I really, I really want to know what range level can we get with these arrows and runes and like knives with 40 range start. And we have the uh, red deer body and uh, like vams now. So what level will that get me? I'm really curious. I think like 70 plus, surely. 9,080 limbs. I mean, look at the herbs. That's pretty crazy. 19 mystery boxes. We're saving those up before when we end, when we leave the chunk. Uh, anything else notable here? I don't think so. Oh yeah, buddy talisman. Almost 500, but I didn't pick up all of them. I left a lot. They weren't really worth my inventory space. And yeah, that's pretty much the results of hill giants. These supplies are going to be super helpful in the future. But I will definitely get a lot of magic and range levels. And yeah, we can do 40 Scortizo kills. If you guys have any like questions about this... Uh, hill giant milestone let me know down below i do read every comment so and yeah let's prepare for scotizo there is another dragon plate skirt a number two on the account right now i have two plate legs and two plate skirts pretty nice uh, i'm just gonna collect these i think i don't really need to hire off them so yeah just gonna add that to the collection in the bank for some uh, extra bank value getting some attack potions right now uh pretty close to finishing and then i can do uh scotizo and there is another pair of dragon plate legs starting to get a nice uh, collection in the bank decided to uh, kill some iron dragons for the super strength potions because that will speed up the scotizo kills as well level 79 prayer beautiful only one level away from my goal level in this chunk we uh we should be able to get that it is time to uh, start all my dark totems, 40 dark totems to do. I forgot to record a couple kills, but we are at 70 kill count right now. We got a couple torstal drops, some rune drops, and we got an anglerfish drop. So let's see uh, what we're going to get from all of these guys. Lot of totems in the bank. We finally got something interesting. 10 Unka Dragon Stones, which is a 1 in 111 drop rate. That is the first Dragon Stones on the account. I cannot train crafting yet, but that is a really cool drop to see. Um, overall, the Scotizo lock isn't that great so far. We still don't have a Dark Claw, which is only 1 in 25. So we still have a little bit over 10 totems to go. But uh, RNG is pretty rough so far.
There it is. What a beautiful milestone. 100 Scotizo kills on the account. Every kill takes around 15 to 20 minutes. I am speeding up all these kills because they, they take forever. But uh, yeah, uh, I guess it happened guys. We are four times the dry streak on a Dark Claw, which is just kind of ridiculous. Um, no uh, no YouTuber luck on the, on this grind, guys. No YouTuber luck. This account has been pretty lucky so far, but um, I guess it had to end somewhere. Unfortunately, it is at the most time-consuming boss in this chunk. But uh, we don't give up. Let's continue with the uh, last few totems. And that's it, the final totem. We did not get anything new, which is a little painful. Um, the game is testing me. Um, I guess uh, it's not the end of the Scotizo uh, journey. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that we didn't get the Dark Claw because we still need the Dark Totem, which is a lot rare. And we only need one of each. So um, we will be getting quite a few more passive totems over the next weeks. And I will be doing all those totems. So hopefully we get lucky with that. But with my new obtained stats from Hill Giants, I think it's time for the new chapter, guys. All right, we are finally training on Moss Giants. I've seen a lot of you guys comment about the Moss Giants after all the Hill Giants. And I'm training my ranged on Moss Giants. In the last episode, we managed to get the Red Dehyde Body and Vambraces from Brutal Dragons. And I only have 40 range, so it's time to, uh, to work on 60 range to equip the Red Dehyde upgrades. And yeah, I think Moss Giants are the perfect target for this. Maybe I can gather some Mossy Keys and we should get a few Totem Pieces as well. And I only have a regular bow and Iron Arrows and Black Knife. So I'm probably going to start with the regular bow and maybe later on switch to the knife for a faster XP. Can we finally get Fishing XP? I've had Magic XP like 4 times. I think I need one more Fishing for a level. And it is Magic again. Unlucky. Apparently it's 50-50 but it... Doesn't feel like that. Just got 47 ranged and with that level we have reached 950 total. I think the 1000 total in the first chunk is uh, really starting to look possible right now. There we go. 99 attack. Um, we are maxed out DPS basically. The chunk guy is growing st strong, guys. Nice. Okay. That looks uh, cool. Trend my cape. I, I guess we switch to the fence next and uh, go for max melee in the first chunk. I think it's going to happen. Since we didn't get lucky on Scotizo. So yeah, let's keep grinding. So while I'm on the Seragnus trips, there are two ways to speed up my trips. One of the ways is getting the egg potato drop because this kind of extends the trip because I get extra food. And the second way is getting grubby keys. If I get a grubby key on these trips, I will open a chest while I'm still here. And the chest usually always gives 8 pieces of food and very often a super combat potion set. Which I can also use to speed up the kills. So yeah, egg potato drops and grubby keys are amazing to get more kills per hour. There's a pretty big level killing Seragnus. 97 hit points. I love to see these levels. They're very slow at this point. But uh, two more to go and I have 99 hit points. That is pretty cool. Humble beginnings at the Seragnus boss. There's 300 kill count. One tenth of the rate for the pet. And the jar is 1 in 2000. So regardless on what kill count I finish. The drops from this boss are absolutely amazing for this account in the future. Level 50 ranged. Nice milestone. I've used blue dehyde. We've did 10 levels with the regular bow. I think I'm going to switch to the knife since I have more than enough knives to get way over 60 range. And I might as well use them for faster XP. So yeah, it's time to switch to the knives. I expect this to be probably two times better XP per hour. Yeah, this is, this is looking a lot faster. So we're going to finish level 60 with the knives. 
Got myself a book of knowledge. I'm still lamping slayer. Uh, trying to get level 15 for banshees. We only need one more level. And then we can do some experimenting and see if I can kill them in any way. Alright, here we go. Very big level on the account. Level 60 ranged. I can now use my red dehyde set that we got from Brutal Dragons. The body and the vamps, which is also going to be a massive boost for range training actually um i have plus 45 range now and i had plus 10 previously so that is quite a, a big upgrade if i want to train any more ranged and of course we have the uh, red dehyde vambraces upgrade which is my best in slot gloves um on this account in this chunk so we've also completed the best in slot melee and range setup awesome you might be wondering, why did he get another range level? 61 ranged. That's a level for a rune crossbow, right? And uh, yeah, I can actually use a rune crossbow. I don't have one. However, there's one small detail I forgot. With 61 ranged, you can equip runite bolts. Which I guess technically is a requirement because uh, I have rune bolts. So uh, I got one more level, which is just kind of funny. I mean... Equipping rune bolts doesn't do anything, but I figured I might as well uh, finish this extra level, test the uh, red dehyde setup for range training, and uh, it is a lot more accurate, so the XP per hour is a lot more than uh, before. So I decided to finish this level, and uh, yeah, we can now use the uh, rune bolt, which officially finishes all range requirements in this chunk. So I think I'm gonna leave range alone at this point, and uh, go back to the melee uh, training. Cool. Alright, so we've done nearly 100 kills since I last did Seragnus. And I've done a bunch of testing. I'm pretty comfortable killing the spider now. And I'm getting around 15 to 17 kills per hour currently. Which is a lot better than I thought. That means on average the pet and a jar are going to take me around 200 hours. If I hit drop rate that is. And we're also going to bank a bunch of good supplies. So pretty good. I've also been able to kill between 2 and 5 Seragnus per full prayer points. This saves a lot of time because every time I run out of prayer I have to go back to the altar and then run back to the boss. So the more kills I can do at the boss before leaving the more kills I get per hour. And this is all thanks to prayer flicking. Since I've been lamping my slayer for so long I forgot that I can telegrap a face mask in my chunk and I've lamped over 10 slayer which means I can officially equip the face mask which doesn't do a lot but uh, it is pretty cool. Kind of like a bonus requirement. There are dust devils in my chunk but I need 65 slayer for that and that's not gonna happen in this chunk but it is cool to have the face mask. And there is 400 Seragnus kills. I am keeping track of every kill count on this account, so by the end of this grind, I'm going to show you guys a total picture of uh, all the loot, which will be pretty nice to see. I am slowly collecting some uh, dark totems over time, and we managed to complete one, so let's see what we get. We got nothing. This is what the collection lock is looking like for the people that are wondering. I'm hunting a Dark Claw and a Dark Totem. Over four times dry on the Dark Claw, which is pretty funny. If you like this content so far, a subscription to the channel and a like to this video would mean the world. Maybe it will boost the uh, Scotizo RNG in the next episode. There we go. Decided to use some of my runes that I collected from Hill Giants and uh, Seragnus. We got 75 magic, which means I can use Fire Wave, uh, which is the highest level spell I can use. Combat spell. Um, I will be able to use, I think stun is probably the highest spell I can use without needing any other players. So uh, we might get to that passively, but yeah, with 75, I'm going to use all of the rest of my blood runes. So 5,000 blood runes on fire wave. That's going to get us a lot of XP. Get a little bit more magic defense for Seragnus. Um, so yeah, pretty, uh, pretty nice. Just finish a beautiful dragon trip, another rune square shield and uh, another totem completed. And we got an XP lamp. And this lamp, guys, is going to give us level 15 slayer. So now I can kill banshees on the account. I have no idea if I can find a way to kill these. There's probably a way, like I think I can save spot them with magic. And if we can, we can get a uh, upgrade to the magic gear. So 
definitely going to do some research. Just got a magic level 76 from AFKing some uh, some black demons. We've been using the uh, blood runes with fire wave because it's the best spell I can use. And uh, yeah, getting a lot of XP. Getting some magic levels for the defense for Seragnus. Okay, this is fantastic news. I found a way to kill Banshees. Um, all I had to do was lose aggro at the Ankus. And on this mark tile, they cannot see me. So they can't shoot their weird attack at me. Um... I don't have earmuffs on this account, so if you are too close to the Banshees and you attack them, they will use a weird attack that lowers your stats. So yeah, we can just safe spot them like this. So as you can see, I attacked a Banshee too early. Uh, I was within 5 tiles distance and uh, yeah, it lowered my stats, so that was pretty bad. If I attack the Banshees on the uh, Mark tile, they aren't able to instantly use the attack and I can safe spot them, so... Method found. Pretty nice. And this is what happened. 70 kills in. Just got myself the Mystic Gloves. That was really fast. Uh, nice collection lock slot. Um, best in slot gloves. Killing uh, Banshees. That looks... Wow, that looks really good actually. With the mask and stuff. Wow. Pretty really cool upgrade. Let's see. So only plus 3 magic. But I mean it, it, it's a little bit. That tiny magic upgrade also means that we've officially completed best in slot setups for every combat style on this account in this chunk. Best in slot melee, ranged and now mage. Beautiful. Um, I think I'm going to use all of these runes here. Uh, use them all up. Collect maybe some of the herbs. And uh, we did get a totem piece as well. So very nice. Very happy I found a method for this so quickly. And yeah, let's go work on the other stuff again. Another Scotizo kill for rune plate skirts. And we killed another one for death runes. Never lucky. And there's level 16 Slayer. I'm going to continue lamping Slayer. There isn't anything else really to lamp. So I'm going to try and get as high Slayer as possible in this starting chunk. Might as well. Okay. That is not great. Oh my god. Um, Alright, let's look up the drop rate for that bad boy. I already have one, by the way. This is my second one on the account. Oh, this is gonna hurt. It's one in 15.6k. Ooh, I don't have a ring of wealth. And that is slightly less rare than a dragon spear. But a dragon spear would have been amazing. Uh, either, yeah, that's, that's not great, guys. Um, but I, I will add that to the collection. I, that is on the collection lock as well. Right here, I believe. Yep. And I don't have a dragon spear yet, but, ooh. Okay, well, first, kind of crazy drop, I guess. I've killed 900 iron dragons and a couple other, 100 other dragons. Okay. At the start of this series, I wasn't really sure how possible dragons would be. And uh, I've killed several hundreds and I found a way to speed it up with an alt as well. Which means the visage is very possible and I don't like making exceptions or skipping items. So yeah, I've been passively working on this visi when I'm not streaming. So yeah, we are definitely going to get this item. I think the average amount of hours for me to get it is 300. However, I'm getting a bunch of good supplies on the way. Which will help future grinds. I get a bunch of GP, uh, totem pieces and super strength pots for Seragnus. So overall it really isn't as bad as it looks. Yeah, I don't really want to go into detail on the method that I'm using. Because uh, I don't want to get limp whipped. What? <laughs> oh no way. Yo, that's kind of cool I guess. Oh my god. Uh, We got a second cudgel guys. <laughs> okay, that's something. That's... Cool, I guess. I just finished a really long Seragnus trip. And look at this inventory. What an absolute monster trip. So many great supplies. Another Slayer level. Getting some good RNG on the lamps. Level 17 Slayer. Cave Slimes. Wow, and there's another Slayer level. Level 18 Slayer. And 975 total level. Beautiful. 
Just got level 92 defense, the halfway mark to 99, and maxing all of my melee stats. And there's 500 Seragnus kill count. Nice little milestone. We are starting with 500 Seragnus kill count. A pretty decent number, but I want to get this up and try to get one of the two big drops that I need from the spider boss. We need the pet and the jar. So lots of work to do. There is a beautiful dragon plate skirt drop. Never gets old to see these dragon drops on the floor. When I'm not doing Seragnus, I'm pretty much killing iron dragons. Trying to get the draconic visage, which I've never had in the game. So it's going to be amazing to get on this account. And yeah, I'm getting a lot of dragon drops. Uh, iron dragons drop a lot of GP. I get some prey XP, a couple passive totems. And of course the super strength pots for Seragnus. So pretty good grind actually. I've been getting pretty lucky with these XP randoms. Just got another book, so we're going to use it on Slayer, and that's going to give us a level. Level 19 Slayer. Another pair of Dragon Plate Legs. Absolutely beautiful. Getting really lucky with these Dragon Drops. Wow, I don't know what's going on, but I'm getting a lot of Dragon Plate Legs and Plate Skirts this trip. Look at that. That is crazy. Two dragon plate legs, one skirt. Um, 1712 iron dragon kills and we got five legs and one skirt in total. That is, uh, that's crazy. Rune bars, 108 kill count. We are still trying to get the dark claw and the dark totem. Scotizo has not been uh, humble on this account, I have to say. Over four times dry on the dark claw. Nice little KC milestone, 600 spider. Big defense level incoming, 93 defense. I have been killing hill giants here and there for totem pieces. And whenever I'm close to a level, I tend to switch to hill giants for a little bit. But yeah, I should passively get 99 defense doing the remaining things I have left in this chunk. I do get some XP from dragons. I do get quite a bit of XP from Seragnus as well. So I'm not too worried. But yeah, that basically means I'm going to max melee in the first chunk of this account. That is pretty cool. 100 million bank value. There it is. There it is. 100 mil of loot in a bank. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Dude really, dude, really, like, that's my third shield half. And it's 1 in 16k. 1 in 16 or 17k from dragons. That is, oh, that's actually painful. That is actually painful. <laughs> like, I normally don't care, but in this case... Wow. Cosmic runes. 700 kills. 700. Looking beautiful. Just found myself a lucky imp in the chunk. Second time I see a lucky imp. And I send a message to impling only. And she managed to catch the impling for 12,000 GP. Nice. Managed to get some more XP lamps. Let's use this on Slayer for level 20 Slayer. Beautiful level. In the comments from last video, someone mentioned that I should probably lamp agility. And I agree. I did lamp my agility in preparation for the Shazin course but there's a chance that i never get that course before i get some other really big skilling grinds and i should probably get some agility levels because it will really help with my run energy restoration so yeah at this point i am going to use all of my lamps into agility it will probably save me hours in the long run if i don't get the agility course so good idea I have been hitting the rare drop table lottery at these dragons. There's my first dragon stone on the account. Which means I now have cut dragon stone and uncut dragon stone in the bank. I don't have a way to train crafting on this account yet. So I won't be able to do much with that for a while. But pretty cool to have both cut and uncut dragon stones in the first chunk. That's my glory, ring of wealth and combat bracelet sorted I guess. What the heck? I just completed a... Uh, Pete random with the balloons and I got 48 mithril arrow tips. Since when can you get mithril arrow tips from that random event? That's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, that's new to me. I don't know. I haven't seen that before ever. Maybe I should do these random events more often because that is a 
Very strange item to get. More dragon plate legs. Six from 2500 iron dragons. Very lucky. Finally have reached this beautiful level. 80. Prayer. Mostly just from burning big bones, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I got one full level from killing iron dragons. And there's another Scortizo kill for soul runes. At this point of the account, I'm basically just hunting the rare drops. And all of the items I need left in this chunk are pretty tough items. So the hunt is on, guys. The hunt is on for something big. It's been... It's been a few months since we had a big item. I think the Smoldering Stone is probably the last item. So, hunting for some Seragnus drops, Cortizo drops, and of course the Visage. More Dragon Plate lags. Missed recording the level because I was killing Spider, but we just got 98 hit points. So, we are one level away from maxing out hit points on this account, which is pretty cool. Always helpful during the bossing. What? Rune javelins? No, 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 no. How rare is that? So I looked up the drop rate. And a rune javelins is a 1 in 12,800 drop. Which is the rarest drop I can get from the spider boss. That is not what I need, game. That's not what I need. Please give me something less rare, like the pet or the jar. Thank you. Yo, look at this beautiful drop we just got a dark totem base and a longbone in the same kill the longbone is one in 400 and the dark totem base is one in 465 i've talked about this in my previous hill giant videos and it never happened but now yeah, we finally got the uh, totem piece longbone combo big defense level 94 defense 122 combat five levels to go into max melee and we should also get the hit points level awesome and there's one scotizo kill and another scotizo kill for nothing holy we got an x sack and a grubby key in the same uh, kill that's pretty cool and there's 900 spooders what the hell What's with me and shield halves, man? That's number four on the account. Okay, so it's not as rare as you think. It's one in 100, which I guess is still pretty rare because it's Cortizo. Not too far of the dark totem drop that I need. But um, yeah, we now got the shield half drop, which is one in 100. And the uncut dragonstone drop, which is one in 111. So, huh. I don't know how I feel about that. We also got three ancient shards, which is... Like, pretty much as rare as a uh, Dark Claw drop. The game is uh, really testing us lately, guys. We really have to uh, grind for these items. That's all good. It's all good. We'll continue collecting totems. We get these drops eventually. Alright, this is going to be a beautiful milestone. 1,000 Seragna skills for the Grubby Key. I'm currently killing around 15 per hour. So, it takes a little bit of time. But that is a lot of Seragna skills. And a beautiful looking kill count. No drops yet. We are halfway to the drop rate for the jar right now. Wow. That might look like a random drop. But that's the second dragon mat. Which is 1 in 200-ish. So uh, we finally have the placeholder dragon mat on the account now. I should catch up with the dragon mats at some point. But uh, yeah, it took a really long time to get my second one. Right, we got an XP lamp. I'm sorry for wasting these precious XP randoms. This one goes on agility for the first level. Level 7 agility. Really curious what level I can end up with. Ooh. Okay. Third spider leg stick. Got a few of those now. Nice, nice. That's pretty much on drop rate as well, so cool. 1100 kill count looks good looks good another defense level at the hill giant so i don't miss it level 95 defense beautiful four levels to go for 99 attack strength defense 
There we go, another dragon mat helm, catching up. And there's 1200 Ragnar's kill count. I knew it, I knew it, another dragon mat helm, it's catching up. Catching up to the drop rate, I'll take some extra placeholders. And another 100, just like nothing. Probably only going to show KC milestones or uniques. Uh, I have enough dragon mats by now as well, so... Yeah, let's keep on grinding. Just finished the hill giant trip and I realized with these keys I hit 800 giant keys in a bank. That is a lot of freaking giant keys in a bank, guys. If I could use all of these keys at Obo right now, I would be rank 8 for Iron Man. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy to think about because I'm going to get way more of these um, on my uh, Scotizo grind. I still don't have the drop, so... And I will be killing hill giants for totems because it's the best thing I can kill. So I have a feeling this uh, giant key stack is going up way more in the future. Oh my god, I got the pet! Let's go! Let's go! I got the Seragnus pet. Woo! Yes. It's been so long since I got something new and that's actually amazing because it's rare than a jar so i'm really really happy to see that first from seragnus the pet is one in three thousand so we did spoon it we still have the jar left though so um but yeah that's that's looking so good that is really good guys all right let's check this out that's what it looks like in the inventory kind of kind of weird and there's one more thing i have to do i have to use these colored x sacks finally i can use it on the pet so we have orange and blue. I guess I just bobbed them on the spider. And then there we go. We can change to orange and blue. Very beautiful. I like the orange version the most. And then you can chat with the pet a little bit. This is what the collection dog looks like. We got the pet, three cudgels and 65 XX. And we have the jar to go. Oh, and that's also all of the pets completed in the chunk. We have the Seragnus, Cortizo pet, and we have the Rocky pet as a bonus. So, yeah, that's all the pets completed. Very cool. And there we go. He has a place in the bank. Beautiful. So, my original goal was 1500 Seragnus kills. So, I'm going to finish that off real quick. I don't really expect to get anything, but that will be a nice uh, KC milestone to finish on. And then we will... Probably start working on Scotizo again. There's 1400 kills. And 1500 kills. Back to the totem grind baby. I'm curious if we can get this video to 5000 likes. That would be amazing. I just did a massive Seragnus trip to finish 1500 kill count. Look at this absolutely stacked inventory. This is a perfect time to show you guys a little bit of my bank before we get into this video. We have 128 million bank value. The skilling tap is starting to look really nice because of all these Ragnus drops, the uncuts and the dehydes, battle staves. We also got a bunch of unsold hats from the hill giant grind. And the other important tap is I would say the herbloid tap. We have a lot of herbs from uh, Seragnus and hill giants. Almost 10,000 limperts. Starting to look like something guys. And in the main tap I'm collecting all my... Cool items like the giant keys, XX, ancient shards, stuff like that. We have 27 mystery boxes. And yeah, besides from that, just food and potions in the potion tab. I've never really used a bank to this extent in a game. So I'm actually really enjoying getting all these item stacks. First big level of the video, 96 defense. Three more levels and I got 99 attack, strength and defense. And we are back at the good old hill giants because the hill giants are basically the best thing I can kill for totems. And I want to uh, get some Scotizo drops so I'm going to make sure I can complete that the fast as I can. First Scotizo kill of the video 113 kills for anglerfish. Okay that's one of the better drops I can get from the boss. I can use the anglerfish for the Seragnus kills when I get low on food later on. I 
I just got my second cut dragon stone from iron dragons. So uh, I guess I have a dragon stone for the glory now and a dragon stone for a combat bracelet. Nothing too much I can do with these right now, but that will be added to the bank collection. Still trying to hunt for the visage. Finally got another book of knowledge. I've been uh, listening to your advice and lamping agility, which I completely agree with. Because I'm going to need that run energy restore in the future for the big, big scaling grinds I'm going to get after this chunk. So I better start now in case I don't get the agility course. 8 agility, but the lamping is going to improve as we get to uh, high levels. And someone mentioned a while ago that every agility level I get is increased run energy restore rate. And I don't know if this is true, so if anyone can confirm this. I thought it was based on uh, every like few levels, but could be wrong on that. But uh, if that is true, that is going to be very helpful. Another lamp, which will get me another level. Level 9 agility. Looking beautiful. Ninety nine hit points. That looks pretty sick. That looks awesome. Well, I did call it guys. I was gonna get max melee in the first chunk. We only have the fence left. We got hit points before the fence, so Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna max melee, so That's three dragon plate skirts and nine dragon plate legs in 4,877 iron dragon kills. The Vizzy hunt continues. 10,000 plus limbrits in a bank. That looks, that looks kind of cool, I have to say. Look at that. The 10k limbrit stack. <laughs> limbrit would be proud. Let's use this lamp on agility. Uh, yep, there we go. 10 agility and 990 total level. Can I use a drain? Okay, cool. Um, cool. Actually huge. Double digits. Huge level on the account. 97 defense. Two more levels to go. The hill giants are not safe in this chunk. I'm afraid we're going to have to kill a lot more to uh, get the Scotizo drops. Wait, what? That's three ancient shards again. Bro, stop trolling. That's that's pretty much as rare as a dark claw. Ah, <sighs> yep. Yeah. Just finished a huge Iron Dragon trip. And we now have over 30 full super strength bots. All of these potions are coming from Iron Dragons in one dose form. We're really starting to get some results on these. And it speeds up the Seragnus boss so much. Because I can basically use super strength doses for every kill. The Iron Dragons give mostly GP, prayer XP, some ammunition... Some smithing XP, but the super strength pots have to be the best drop I can get because it speeds up a lot of other stuff. But I'm definitely praying I don't go really dry on the fizzy. I felt like doing some Seragnus, got myself an extra 100 kill count. And look at this absolutely monstrous trip. Sometimes I just keep getting keys and food extensions and I can just stay for so long. This is probably like a 20 plus kill trip. And there we go, that's 1600 Seragnus kill count. 400 kills away from the jar drop rate, which would finish the Seragnus boss. I'm not too rushed with this item, I don't think it's going to take too long overall, so I'm kind of just doing Seragnus here and there. I'm actually really enjoying this boss in this chunk, so... No rush, but um, yeah, we're getting the kill count up nicely. You know what time it is, we got a lamp in the inventory. Let's use this on agility for level 11 agility 
Beautiful. And we're getting really close to that 1000 total now. That is curve bone number 14 in 116,000 hill joint KC. That is very below rate. Um, I have not seen many of these curve bones. Interesting. No, I missed a level, but just got 82 prayer from burying big bones. Um, let's get another level. This one is going to take a while. I do have quite a few dragon bones banked as well that I could use and that might get me a level but I'm just gonna see uh, what levels I can get with the big bones first and yeah I'm just totem hunting at hill giants again so might get a lot more prey xp oh my god I finally got <laughs> finally got 30 fishing holy shit I finally got a fishing random you know, like Bob the Cat, it, I've done like 15 of those events and I've only had fishing twice. <laughs> Finally, 30 fishing. That looks nice. Getting some really, really good luck with the XP randoms lately. That's another agility level, level 12 already. For the people that are curious about the average Cotizo kill, I take a few steps to be able to kill the boss on this account. I first hit the boss until all of the altars are up. I then wait around a minute and kill all of the altars. And doing this does not make them respawn. After this I usually pot up and hit the boss until the minions come out. I kill 2 out of 3 minions and leave 1 alive. If I kill all of them it respawns all 3 so having only 1 alive makes me take less damage. And then I continue flinching the boss. And normally a kill takes around 15 to 20 minutes. Alright, let's see what we get. What? No! I don't, oh my god, I got a dark totem top. Uh, I thought for a second that was the dark totem, but I didn't get a pop-up. No way, that's... How do I keep getting these, but not a dark claw? Dark totem pieces are like 1 in 42 from the boss, and I got it 3 times now, which is around the rate. But I don't have a dark claw, like... How's this... How does this keep happening? This boss has been very rough for me. Um, but we're not giving up, guys. I saw some of you complain that this chunk is taking too long. And, uh, well, I can't do much about that. Because these grinds take a lot of time. And all I have left is RNG items. But I will get, I will get out of this freaking chunk, guys. I promise. We are so close to maxing melee in the first chunk. There's 98 defense. That's it, guys. This is the final level. And I can switch to strength. Get the extra max hit for the remaining grinds. And I don't have to worry about uh, training up defense anymore, I guess. This chunk is like 90% just killing things. Like bosses, minions, NPCs. I'm actually excited to do some skilling content in the future because, oh boy, there's so much waiting for me after this chunk. <laughs> right now, it's just, yeah, it's just killing stuff and hunting the RNG items. So, I guess from this point on, I'm not getting too many more stats. Like, maybe some more prayer levels. I don't think I'm going to do any major range levels uh, anytime soon because I don't have the best setup for that. I guess we're going to get some more agility levels, maybe fishing levels, but that's really it, I think. Just reached 700 ancient shards in a bank and we are over 900 giant keys. So um, some pretty big stacks collecting in a bank. And we are still going for totems. We are one kill count away from five times the drop rate on the Dark Claw. It's been a long time since I've been this dry on an item. And there it is. 125 Scotizo kill count. That looks pretty nice. The Dark Claw hunt continues guys, we did not get it. Just did an absolutely monstrous Iron Dragon trip again. I think this was like 100 or 200 kills in total. We have passed over 5000 Iron Dragons, uh, which is the halfway rate to the Visage. Didn't get that early, uh, early luck, but still going strong on the dragons guys. And we managed to get another lamp, which will get us a level. 
13 agility and we are three levels away from 1000 total beautiful wow my xp random rng is super on point lately we keep getting lamps that's 14 agility levels are flying in guys just working on this last defense level and uh yeah we're getting some nice extra levels well 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 would you look at that that's curved boner number 15. That is Max Melee in the first turn. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. That looks that looks crazy, man. I've only had that on one account before. The hill giant massacre continues. <laughs> Poor hill giants, man. What did they do to deserve this? Oh, also 999 total. Look. 999 total with 99 attack, strength, defense, hit points. Perfect. Perfect. And there's the last kill of the video. 130 kill count. We still don't have a dark class, so the hunt continues. You know, sometimes the game is testing me. I'm not getting spoon fed on this. Whew. That is a beautiful sight. We, this is the second time in um, 126,000 hill giants that we complete a full totem in a singular hill giant trip. That looks absolutely amazing. Um, great. No way. The same thing is happening as when I was doing the 100k hill giant grind. I came back and I instantly get another totem piece. So that's like four totem pieces in like 10 minutes. That is absolutely amazing. I'm almost back to two totems again and I literally used two today. I started from zero. So that is crazy. All right. We got a very special lamp guys. If we use this lamp on agility, second XP random of the day. We are going to hit a very nice milestone. 1000 total on the chunk account. 15 agility. Uh, I can use some stuff that I can't go to for a few years. Cool. As an Iron Man with a skill total of 1000, you may ask the Iron Man tutor in Lombridge to make your Iron Man status permanent. This would prevent you from ever downgrading. Okay. Cool. Oh, he noticed. Yes, sir. 1,000 total. Beautiful. Looks uh, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Damn, we got a Ensold head again. That's new. They added that recently. Oh, I got two shards as well. Okay. What the hell? Two curved bones in... One inventory? Holy. Look at that. Two curved bones and a long bone. That is definitely a first. There we go. There's 83 prayer. Missed the level. But that is pretty much all from burying big bones from hill giants. Very nice. We have a pretty crazy moment, guys. Um, This giant key in my inventory right here will get me to... 1,000 giant keys in the bank. 1,000 overkills, actually, when I get there someday. And a little update on, on the limp words. It seems we have passed 12,000 limp words. Cool. And 5,335 Ansel giant hats as well. Some nice uh, looking stacks in the bank. Nice, you got fishing XP for 31 fishing. It's been a while since we got one of these levels. I can only get fishing levels by doing the Bob the Cat random event. And it would be cool if I can get to level 35 for tunas in the future. But that's going to require a lot more randoms. Got another book of knowledge. This will get me a nice level. 16 agility from lamping. Going to put all my lamps on agility. 
Try and get as high as possible because every couple agility levels I get a better run energy restore rate. Collecting some totems again. I'm currently at 6 totems collected. And I also have 800 ancient shards now. And the giant key stack and long bones is also looking pretty nice. There we go. Another book of knowledge for another agility level. Level 17 agility. <laughs> A while ago they made it so you can buy bank slots in the game with GP. And this goes up to like 800, 900 mil to get 360 extra slots. Which would take an incredible long amount of time to unlock. But I will be slowly buying uh, more bank space. And I'm going to start with the 1 million GP 40 bank slots. Beautiful. In my chunk I also have access to the death office. Which means I can upgrade my gravestone. So I will also be buying the Angel Gravestone, which will cost me 200,000 GP. And now I have a longer death timer, I believe, or my grave will stay longer. I'm not sure. I still probably don't even know how all the death mechanics work in a game. It's been too long. But yeah, anyways, I have that unlocked now. So that is another thing completed in a chunk, I guess. Didn't realize I could do this. So they just did an update on the giant keys. Uh, finally, it's about time. They were going to do this for a long time. They are now stackable, so I can now stack all my keys in one inventory space. Which means if I do hill giants and I get keys, they will be in the same inventory spot. So that means trips can sometimes last slightly longer. Uh, and it's just really cool, actually. I really like that. That looks uh, really cool. Another agility level coming in. A level 18 agility. Watch, guys, watch. It's PvP with RNG. Yeah, okay. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! No way! There it is! 145 kill count. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. It's real. Okay, it does exist. I can actually get one. Cool. <laughs> um, there it is. The Dark Claw. <laughs> Wow, I, that, that was, that looked kind of beautiful on the ground. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> okay, that is a Dark Claw. We did not go six times dry on this item. Almost though. There is the collection lock. One Dark Claw, two pets in 145 kill count. That is pretty brutal. The Dark Claw is a 1 in 25 drop. All right, there's a nice XP milestone. 20 million strength XP on the account. Way over 99. Um, thanks to Hill Giants, I guess. As you guys can probably tell, this chunk is like 90% uh, melee stuff and RNG items. So that XP might go up a lot more. And that is 150 Scotizo kills. That is going to be the last kill count for now. Because I promise myself, after I get a unique from Scotizo, either the Dark Claw or the Dark Totem, it is time to fully commit to dragons. I want to get the Visage on this account. And in the last few months, I've kind of been doing dragons here and there in the mornings. An hour here, an hour there. But uh, I, want to, I want to just commit to this item and get it out of the way. So that's going to be my new focus. I'm going to leave Hill Giants alone for a little bit. We are now going to be the Dragon Slayer. I just did a huge Iron Dragon trip. I got over 100 Blood Rune drops. Um, just got a mystery box, so I lost aggro. And I'm almost out of natures and out of food. So perfect time to bank. We also got one totem and a little bit. I think this trip is like a thousand kills maybe. 700k GP as well. Pretty stacked trip. Just completed another huge trip, 7400 Iron Dragon KC right now. This trip we got two totems, lots of dragon drops, a lot of runes, over a million GP and some rare drop table stuff. And I'm going to stack a couple totems at a time and just do a few Scotizo kills in between the dragon sessions. Maybe we can get lucky on the totem, that would be amazing. 
And yeah, I think on average I can kill around 20 iron dragons per hour, so it's a pretty big grind. Wow, we got 5 ancient shards in a single Scotizo kill. I looked up the rate, and that is a 1 in 100 chance. That is really rare. So, I have been stacking mystery boxes for a long time on this account. And I was planning on opening them after I leave the chunk. But I changed my mind, and there's a good reason for that. Mystery boxes have a chance to give me a dragon spear. And I can poison the dragon spear and that would speed up dragons by a lot. I don't have a ring of wealth on this account so it will be very difficult to obtain a dragon spear normally. But maybe we can get lucky with the mystery boxes. So let's open all of them. 34 mystery boxes. And there we go, that's the last mystery box. No dragon spear, unfortunately. We did get a couple red drop table uh, rolls, but didn't get the one I needed. But yeah, that was pretty fun to open this many. I've never collected this many in a game before. Managed to do another nearly 1000 kill trip. Got a couple totem pieces, some GP. A lot of key pieces from the rare drop table. And of course the usual ammunition and the blood runes. The kill count is growing pretty quickly. Alright and with that lamp I got myself 20 agility. Beautiful. Got myself another XP lamp for yet another level. Level 21 agility. Can now use the grand exchange shortcut. My character can only dream of that right now. Got myself a nice passive prayer level from burying all the dragon bones from iron dragons. Level 84. That is a lot of prayer levels in the first chunk. Another huge dragon trip finished. Got a lot of totem pieces this time. Three dragon pieces as well. Another roughly 1000 kills. And we now have 15 million GP in a bank. That's gonna be very useful for construction in the future I think. Alright, I decided to complete some crystal keys. I've got a lot of key pieces from the dragon trips. And we now have 84 completed crystal keys. Very nice little stack there. I decided to switch it up a little bit and do a full steel dragon trip. And the only reason is the super attack potions. This is one of the best ways to get super attack potions. And it is worth the time because it speeds up these Scotizo kills a lot. It roughly takes 15 to 20 minutes for me to kill one Scotizo. And since I'm still hunting the Visage anyways, the super attack potions are going to be very handy for the kills. So I got myself potions for 24 more Scotizo kills. Another agility level, level 22 agility. Levels are getting up there with the lamps. Oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes! 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 Yes, yes, I'm done! I am done! Oh my god, no way! There it is! My first visage in 20, like 20 years of RuneScape. Oh my god. The final kill count is 12,292. Holy shit, guys. <laughs> oh, It's over. We are out of the Iron Dragon cage. The Visage is mine. Fine. Oh, that feels so... That feels so good. All right. Let's go bank. I don't have to return to freaking dragons anymore, guys. Let's, uh, let's check the bank. Give you guys some final... Uh, 
showcase some final stuff in the bank. Um, holy shit. Wait, I want to see that in the collection log. Let's take a look. Um, where is it? I think it's in Slayer, right? There it is. Oh, look at that. That looks beautiful. I think it might also be in some other places. But anyways, that is so nice. Um, I think... I would say it took roughly... Um, hmm, like seven to eight hundred hours to complete this goal. One of the longest grinds I've ever done in a game, guys. The things I do for an account like this, it is amazing. Um, also, this item has a very special meaning. It's an item I've always wanted to get as a kid. Um, I've just, I've never had this item in 18 years of playing RuneScape. I've killed... So many wyverns, other dragons, pre-EOC, I've killed thousands of dragons. I just I just never got the drop, but um, that's why I really wanted to get it on this account. Um, it was a huge grind, obviously, but yeah, that's another reason why uh, why I got it. And I can, I can also say we made the minimal amount of exceptions. I mean, there's still the Jar and the Onyx from Scotizo, but this was uh, very close to being very scary. We got another reasonable KC. I'm free, guys. Let's peek the bank. Got two tonus banked as well, which is nice. Uh, okay. This is going to get a nice place in my bank. 18 million GP right now. 18.5 mil, which is... A lot is from dragons. Um, and I think it's going to be very nice for... Um, for construction in the future so that's that's one good thing from dragons i also got quite a few strength pots saved i did use quite a bit uh at some point for dragons to speed it up a bit but 26 full str super strength for seracnus is still very comfortable uh plus i got some keys that i can use later we can get some more pots from this as well so i think i should be fine with that uh these super attacks are from steel dragons for scotizo that this is potions for like 25 uh 25 for scotizo so yeah i mean <laughs> holy shit guys look at that the visage the smoldering stone we are finally getting somewhere uh maybe i should hmm, how do i organize this let's see i guess i can do this right yeah this looks pretty good i guess put the pets in order as well and then we can collect the totems here that looks so good guys how expensive 3.6 mil that's pretty cheap um let's see what else did we get from dragons we got 35k blood runes in total now holy that is so many 15k soul runes got a few more of these as well um 19 dragon play legs and eight more skirts i might high elk those um this is like two mil so yeah i might high elk that we'll see and then let's see what else did we get from dragons. Oh yeah, we got a lot of ammo, right? 9k javelins. Uh, let's see. 6.3k rune darts. Holy shit, that's so many. And then we got... Ooh, we got a lot of alley bolts, which might come in handy later on. I'm not sure if I'm... I mean, I can make like diamond bolts for that if I get early inferno, but that's really good. Yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, we also close to a prey level, which I can finish with bones. I might actually have enough bones for that. Let's see. Yeah, I actually have easy. I have more than enough bones for that. So we can also finish 84 prayer. And I'm almost 25 mil strength XP at this point. So yeah, we did get quite a bit of XP from the grind, but that is all good. Um, got a couple dragon stones. I mean, we got quite a bit of rare drop table items on the grind, but yeah, that's it, guys. The visage is mine. Starting off with a Scotizo kill, 159 kill count. Uh, okay, um, that is a pet, huh? Okay, <laughs> okay, that is number. Three. Scotizo pet number three. And we still have one Dark Claw. Very interesting RNG. Got another XP lamp. It's been a while. This sh should get me level. 25 agility. Very nice. Can now enter the Werewolf School Ball course. That is a terrible course. And probably like 10 years away. So don't have to worry about that. 
Nice level. Wow, I just did a hill giant trip and I got 13 unsold hats in a singular trip. That is, uh, that is crazy. And we have almost 6,500 in the bank right now. Oh, got a dark totem piece from the Scotizo kill. I think that's like 1 in 40. Uh, pretty rare actually. Then we got some anglerfish as well. I'll take a free totem piece I guess. But I want to see that dark totem drop so badly. I just got a mystery box and I got a rune bar from it. Which is 1 in... 384 that's quite a bit rare than the uh, still baguette i'm still trying to get the still baguette because if we get the baguette from the mystery box we will complete the random event collection lock that would be so nice to get on this account um let's show you guys yeah just a still baguette to go not a bad drop though been back lately doing some seracness trips look at that inventory nice little loot there Lots of crafting XP, herbal XP, some bones, runes, some smithing stuff, range stuff. Really nice uh, drops on the boss. We are around 400 kills off the jar raid, which is the last uh, drop I need from Seracnus. And then we basically have all of Forthos dungeon finished. So going to try and hunt that as well. Uh, do some spider trips once in a while. I have just reached 100 days playtime on this account, which is 2400 hours in a singular chunk. Sometimes I wonder what I got myself into, but I'm still loving this account. This guy is so confused. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. He just sees this random dude level 124 killing freaking hill giants. Thinking it's a slave test, but I have this equipped. <laughs> I would be confused as well, to be fair. I would be confused as well. You want to say anything? And then this dude shows up saying nice videos and stuff. He's so confused. Oh. Didn't know I was in the presence of... <laughs> oh my god. Nah. Ah, these guys are way too nice. <laughs> uh, these guys are way too nice. 170 Scotizo KC. Kill count is going up nicely. Hit a nice little stack of giant keys in the bank. 1300... Giant keys stacked in a bank. Ober is shaking in his pants. I'm coming for you. Someday. Nice KC milestone. 1700 Seracnus. 300 kills to go until the drop rate. We got another genie lamp. Let's use it on agility for level 26. The run energy restoration has been significantly improved since the start of the account. Even with 26, I'm... Uh, noticing the biggest difference during the Seracnus trips, I'm not losing as much run energy when I'm killing uh, Seracnus. So yeah, it's actually paying off lamping this. Wow, what the hell? What a drop. Okay, all right. Four shards, a Dark Claw. There it is, guys. This placeholder Dark Claw. Uh, yeah, not too surprising to be fair. There it is. 1800 Seracnus. Get me my level agility. Boom. Ooh. 27. Let's go. Not too bad. Oh, wow. Seracnus Cudgel. It's been a while since we got one of those from uh, the boss. I think that's number four on the account. And also, we are very close to 30 million strength XP. 30 million strength XP. So every time I hit the totem drop rate, 128 kills with this method, I get 25 million strength XP. Just so you, know, just so you guys know. <laughs> There's 180 Scotizo kills. For reference, every 10 Scotizo kills is around 14,000 hill giant kills. This is... Definitely one of the hardest uh, grinds I've ever done in the game. Nice kill count. 1900 Seracnus. Look at this freaking Seracnus trip. We got four grubby keys. And I'm only bringing like one per trip. So I'm just banking all the extra keys. I have 20 keys banked right now. 
Just finished another hill giant trip for 500 long bones banked. Nice, that's like over 2 million construction XP. Huge KC milestone, 2000 Seracnus. That means we've hit the jar of ice drop rate. We don't have it yet, so we're going dry on another item. But uh, these skills are pretty fast, so just going to keep going. Look at this freaking inventory. Three long bones and a curve bone. That is a record right there. Look at that. And on top of that, we got a totem piece as well. <laughs> That's really lucky. Decided to cook some food in a bank. We were close to a level. There's 85 cooking. The requirement in this chunk was 84 for anglerfish. But uh, 85 looks a lot nicer. So I'm just passively getting XP over time for making uh, chocolate cakes for Seracnus mostly. So it's going to get like one or two passive levels, I guess. Full totem completed. A curve bone, a long bone, and I think we got a key as well. Maybe one key. What a trip. Look at that. <laughs> the third time in almost 200,000 hill giants that we complete a full totem in a singular trip. That always feels amazing. 1500 giant keys. I am ready, Ober. I am ready. Ah, another claw. It's 1 in 25. I'm very due on Dark Claw, so... Oh, okay. Okay. One more Claw for the collection. We have three pets now and three Claws. <laughs> Another KC Milestone, 190 Scotizo. So, this is the first crafting level that we're gonna get. Two crafting. I've decided to switch up the uh, Lamping Goal. I've noticed during these Seracnus trips that I don't really need uh, agility levels anymore. My run energy isn't really going down when I'm doing trips. And I've looked at some other stats like a lamp. And crafting is actually pretty important because I don't really have any way to train crafting until I get tools like a chisel or needle or whatever. And I can get that in chunks uh, outside of my main chunk. For example, the pure pure chunk will give me a chisel. Uh, but I need level 20 for that. And if I don't lamp my crafting, I'm going to have to do plowing for favor and i have to do that to 20 crafting i think there's also a possibility that i have to do flex uh, but that requires level 10 so i think lamping crafting is gonna save me quite a few hours potentially days so if i can get at least 10 crafting this chunk maybe 20 that would be really nice really nice uh, preparation for the crafting we have lamped 20 slayer 17 hunter 27 agility and now we're lamping crafting let's do it 2100 Seracnus kills. KC is flying up. Does the fishing XP exist? Yes. Wow. Okay. I finally get fishing XP. It's been ages. 32 fishing. All from the Bob the Cat randoms. My goal is 35 for uh, tunas in the future, I guess. Saved up a couple totems from the hill giant. So we're going to do a uh, Scotizo session. Do a bit over 10 kills, I think. See if we can get anything. And there's the clean 200 Scotizo kills. Still no totem. Another crafting level. Level 3 crafting. The early levels are always uh, taking a while. But once we get to like 5, 6, it's going to go a lot faster. So, And there is level 4 crafting. Very nice. Can we get some fishing XP? Yes, wow, we can. 33 fishing. Very nice. It's been a while since I got fishing XP. I've watched the uh, Flipping Old School's GE Locked series recently and he just can't get fishing XP. And I'm honestly convinced that fishing XP is a lot uh, rarer than magic XP once you are 50 plus magic. I feel like I get like magic 9 out of 10 times. I don't know why, but it should be 50-50, I think. I want to know from you guys, like, do you get magic XP more often or fishing? Because I honestly don't believe it's 50-50. Hit some nice milestones. 1800 giant keys and over 600 long bones and 1200 ancient shards. Bank is looking good. We have just hit 100 million total XP on the account. Most of that XP is from uh, all the combat trading, of course. Yeah, that looks... Pretty cool. 
Level 5 crafting. I can now make gold rings. Very nice. One of the most beautiful things to happen in a hill giant trip. Completing a full dark totem in a single trip. Also, we are close to 40 million strength XP. Hill giant KC is flying up. Gotta get those totems, guys. Cortizo is a uh, huge grind. 1900 giant keys. That looks good. Okay, let's open four boxes. A boot, a cabbage, nature runes, and coins. Level 6 crafting. Level 7 crafting. 2200 venenata skills. I'm uh, back at the spider again. Continue hunting that jar. Ooh, okay. Seragnus cudgel. Number 5 on the account. They aren't even 200,000 GP. Wow. 2300, 2400, level 8 crafting, level 9 crafting. Look at these crystal keys. Wait, let me make these. Uh, 112 now, nice, over 100. And there's level 10 crafting. Um, took quite a little bit, but uh, we can now make flex into bowstring. So if we unlock the spinning wheel early on, I have a couple hundred flex in the bank from randoms. I can get my crafting up to 20 that way. So that is already a, a huge help. But considering the uh, time it takes to grind Scotizo, I might get level 20. So just going to continue lamping it. And there is 2000 giant keys in the bank. That looks beautiful. We're also getting close to 30 Dark Totems. I've been uh, stacking them again lately. 2500 Seragnus kills. Looking beautiful. Unfortunately, my OBS messed up the clip. Um, but I have a picture. I got the Jar of Ice on 2501 kill count. Which means Seragnus is now finished. I've done everything in the Forthos dungeon. I can fully focus on Scotizo. Wait, I just realized my clan can also see that uh, I got the jar. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Uh, collection of jar of ice, 44 out of... Uh... <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Scotizo left to go, boys. There we go. By the way, shout out to the clan. We got almost 90 people in the clan now. You can... Like, anyone can apply. It's open. Uh, I think you have to go to 352 and you can just join it. Um, yeah. Got a lot of really nice community over here, so... I think one of the mods have to be online. Usually Shout is online or me. Uh, we can just open applications and then you can join it. But yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I have a picture here of all the general Seragnus loot I got. Uh, there's a little bit more KC on the tracker because I think it tracked some kills from the PvP hardcore. But I didn't get any uniques on that account so it's fine. I just want to show you guys this picture to give you guys a general idea of the GP value. What you can expect killing this amount of uh, Seragnus. I will however put all the important loot in my inventory in a minute. And then talk a little bit about the results. Because, because more than half of this loot isn't that important so all right so let's get into my bank i gave the jar of ice a very nice place we are up to 33 totems by the way the jar of darkness will be changed very soon so i'm saving totems until they change it and then i can do all of them to try and get the jar of darkness plus the dark totem at the same time um also here's a little update on the other items looks pretty nice now then let's get into the important supplies that we got from seragnus so we got over 10k uh, mythal ore and we have 3.8k eddy ores some of this is i think from scotizo but yeah most of these are from uh, seragnus so pretty important maybe in the future for smithing but i'll have to look into that later when we get to the smithing grind um the biggest thing is these uncuts right here this is huge for the account these uncuts that is so much um crafting xp I'm going to check the banked XP plugin in a sec and see how much XP this is. But yeah, very important. And then on top of that, we have these red dehydes, which is also a lot of crafting XP. And 
basically like 90% of this is from Seracnus, so very nice. And we have some Dragon Bones here, which is also from Seracnus, so that's a bit of nice uh, prey XP. We have like 97 prayer bank right now with these unsold hats, but a lot harder to use. I can't use them yet, and I'm going to need a ton of nature runes for that. So the bones is nice because I can use them on the Forthos dungeon altar. And I think these battle staves, maybe, I think a lot of these are from Scotizo as well. But we did get a couple from uh, Seracnus. But unfortunately, these won't be usable for a long time because I'm going to need the orb. So just going to ignore these for now because I can't really use these for a long time. And yeah, besides from that, we made a lot of GP. I would say we made like 7 or 8 mil raw GP from High Ox. And I think I have a couple... Yeah, we still have some high elks here. A uh, couple to Henry's medium helmets and some other stuff. Uh, haven't high elked that yet, but don't think I'm going to bother. We also got 9k mythal bolts, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think we also got a bunch of arrows. Let's see. Yeah, all these mythal arrows are from Seracnus 2, which is going to be pretty nice for the range training. Uh, because I, all these arrows are only from NPC drops, so the arrows is going to be pretty nice now we did get a lot of runes um i would say we got like 12k soul runes 25k chaos runes um i guess i can kind of check the loot tracker it should be fairly accurate 11k death runes and uh, almost 18k cosmic runes and like 12k blood runes i would say so nice amount of uh, magic xp there and runes going to save these for later for the actual magic training i don't really have to train my magic yet people have asked me why i'm not like maging hill giants but it's kind of a waste because i can buy runes later on and maybe these will be more important for other stuff since i already have the highest magic requirements for now uh so i'm not really gonna use arrows or runes in this chunk i'm gonna save it until i have better gear or actually need to train it so yeah besides from that i got a lot of herbs um let me quickly grab what I got according to the loot tracker. All right, grabbed all the herbs. Um, that is a decent bit of XP, probably like a couple hundred K. So very nice. I will be using these for sure when I unlock Herblock because I'm going to need 99. So nice little bit of a passive Herblock XP from the Seracnus grind. And yeah, besides from that, I think the only thing notable is all the seeds we got. We got quite a few tree seeds. Uh, these papaya seeds are also from the boss. We probably also got a couple like normal seeds. I don't really remember which ones, but not that many. Like it's not a crazy amount. So yeah, that's pretty much the most important loot I've received from Seracnus. Um, Very, very nice grind. So let's see how much XP we actually got banked. Okay, so we have 75 crafting banked right now with uncuts and dehydes and a couple other things. And I believe that is without making jewelry out of it. So that's a very nice level. I'm going to need like 84 or 85 in the pure pure chunk. So that's a nice head start on uh, crafting. I don't really know what the banked XP on the ores is. But I don't think it's too important right now. And the herbs. I mean I can look up my banked XP for Herblord. But I think I want to do all of that once I finish a chunk. I want, I'm planning on making a big bank video. And go over all the loot and supplies and everything in my bank. And give you guys the exact numbers on the levels I've banked. Um, this is only a small amount of everything I got. Because I'm still getting a lot of herbs from bosses. Like Scotizo and Hill Giants. So that's, those stacks are still growing. So we're going to get into that later. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the results of Seracnus. Which is quite amazing for the account and the future uh, grinds we're going to get. I've also forgot to mention, I've opened most of my grubby keys that I've saved in my bank. Uh, we have these potions in the bank now. We don't have to use potions anymore for Seracnus. So we're going to use all of these uh, attack and strength pots for Scotizo kills. Which is going to be very nice to speed up those kills a little bit. We've also banked some Super Restores and Sarah Bruce for potentially an early, early uh, Inferno tile. Um, and we have range pots as well. So that's beautiful. I'm going to keep these for... I think I'm only going to use these for Inferno. I don't have any reason to uh, use it anywhere else. So pretty nice. And yeah, the keys also gave me a bunch of other supplies. Some uh, bones, some herbs, crystal keys, stuff like that. So pretty nice overall. And we've opened over 300 grubby keys. So pretty cool. 
So yeah, now we are done with everything except from Scotizo. So we are waiting for the jar change now. And then we're going to do all the totems. Hopefully we get some new uniques. And if not, we're just going to kill hill giants, do Scotizo, and uh, do that until we finish the chunk. Because that's literally the last thing left. Uh, we also have the first green boss lock, which looks amazing. Ragnus is finished. There's the last uh, final results. This is the Scotizo uh, update. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of totems soon. All right, we have 35 totems stacked in a bank. They have changed the Jar of Darkness drop rate uh, to 1 in 200 this week, finally. Uh, there was a poll a while ago and yeah, the changes came through. So I can now start using uh, all my totems again. Time to use this stack. Let's see if we uh, get anything good. All right, and there's the first kill. 210 is the starting Scotizo kill count. Should be able to get this up quite a bit. Are you kidding me, dude? No. <laughs> ah, why, 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 why? All right, moving on. I just got an uncut onyx. Wow, bro. I mean, it's something. It's something. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We're gonna green lock the boy. We're gonna green lock Scotizo. My RNG is. <laughs> My RNG is crazy, man. What is this? See, I need the jar and the totem, but this is pretty cool, actually. Um, it means we're going to finish every single drop in this chunk. No exceptions. I did like half of my totems yesterday. This is day number two. Let's use the rest of these totems. For the people that have no idea, it takes me around 10 to 15 minutes per Scotizo kill. So, yeah, this, you know, using these actually does take quite a bit of time. It also requires perfect prey flicking with my setup. But man, it's so satisfying to use all these uh, stack totems. Quick little level coming in there. Level 11 crafting. Still going for level 20 to prepare crafting in the future. Uh, level 20 gives me the ability to cut sapphire. So that will be nice to uh, prepare. I've had some questions um, about the onyx. Like, do you have to make a fury now? Um, the short answer is no. I have no way to train crafting. I have no amulet molds, I have no furnace, so it's going to take a while before I can make it into a fury. There are a few ways to train crafting in the future, like the chunks around me, but that's a, um, that's a topic for later. Okay, okay, it's one of those days, huh? Thank you very much. That's 1 in 100, by the way, guys. Ah. Uh. Well, that's my second shield half. I've only had two so far, and it's one in 100, so... But not what you want to see, though. Not what you want to see. <laughs> Why, dude? It's rid this is ridiculous. And there we go. There's 240 Scotizo kills. Nice little milestone. I don't think I'm going to show you guys every like kill or loot. Um, unless you guys want me to. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think I'd rather show like highlights. I can occasionally show the Scotizo uh, loot tab in the Runelite client. Because I saved every kill. But yeah, most of these drops are pretty standard. Like some rune item or like adamant something. Nothing too crazy. So I got three shield halves today. I prefer really not to um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. All right, and that's going to be the last totem of the stack. Let's see if we get anything. And we get some blood runes for the last kill. All right, time to head back to the hill giant prison. During this video, I want you guys to keep a close eye on my strength XP because, um, well, it's going up a lot. It might not look like it, but this video has nearly a thousand hours of progress.
All right, another crafting level coming in. Level 12. Very nice. Just hit a pretty cool milestone. 2100 giant keys and 1400 ancient shards. The stacks are going up nicely. And there we go. 13 crafting. Another level with the lamps. Once you start lamping past level 10 or so, the levels are pretty quick. Usually like 2 or 3 lamps per level. And there we go. There's 14 crafting. Level 15 crafting. 5 levels to go. 16 crafting. Still around 2 uh, lamps per level. 17 crafting. Very nice. It's currently December 2022. That's why I'm rocking the Santa hat. I just realized that I've actually never started the quest I'm supposed to do in this chunk. Or mini quest or something. I think it's this one maybe. And I think I talked to this guy. So let's do that. Because that's actually something I have to do in this chunk. So there we go. Yeah, it's progress now. Okay, can I do the next step maybe? uh probably not no i can't get favor i need okay right so that's one thing i can do and i think there's an there's something else i can do i believe let me check okay yeah i need to start in search of knowledge so i'm gonna do that as well wow i finally got fishing xp <laughs> 34 fishing and we are Three randoms away from 35, which unlocks tuna. I brought some tunas for good luck, I guess. Um, cool. Okay, so I have to talk to this guy and I need to give him five uh, fish somehow. Five cooked fish. I guess I need to heal him. Um, okay, I can give him my tuna. Don't want to accidentally give my sharks. Oh, okay. I just have to use it. Okay, I just have to use it. That makes sense. Let's heal this guy up. Uh, there we go. And I think I can get the books next. So let's do that. Yeah, I can get the books in the bookcases. I can't believe I completely forgot about this. But yeah, I can get all the books in these uh, bookcases. And then I can fill them up with the pages I've collected on this account. I got a bunch of pages from like everything in this dungeon. So it should be pretty easy to complete. Yeah, we have over 100 pages of each. So let's uh, use it on a book. And that should be all of it. Because the next step uh, is to bring these books to the library. Which is two chunks away from me. And then after completing that you get like a 10k XP lamp. So just gonna put these books in the bank. And wait until I get that chunk in the future. That's all quest progress done. Another lamping level coming in. Level 18 crafting. Two levels to go. Oh, I love when this happens. Look at the look at my game chat. I got so many totem pieces today so far. And uh, yeah, this trip we got three totem pieces in one trip. Which means I can complete a full totem in a single hill giant trip. That is always a great feeling when I do these hill giants. I think that happened maybe three or four times so far on this account. So forgot to record, but I got 50 million strength XP. It's still uh, displayed in the clan chat. That is one fourth of the way to 200 million strength XP. That's pretty scary, man. We really need to break these dry streaks at Scotizo. Wow, I just realized I got the max stack of totem pieces in the collection lock now. 250 is usually the cap on a lot of the items. And I hit that for keys, long bones, and now totem pieces as well. We got 2400 giant keys in the bank. I'm about to uh, start using my totems. I've stacked them for around... Probably like a month or so. And yeah, we almost got 30 totems. So time to uh, do another session. Let's get something. Well, there we go. <laughs> There's the first Dark Claw. Okay. What are you? What is that? Oh, you have to be kidding me, dude. What is that? <laughs> That's another claw, plus a totem piece in the same drop. Sure. <laughs> and there we go. Pretty cool milestone. 250 Scotizo KC. That is uh, quite a lot. And there's 
260 KC. We have passed the two times drop rate for the dark totem drop. They did change the jar, but at the same time, I'm pretty glad I'm still at Scotizo because I need the totem anyways. And there's a pretty decent chance we get the jar before the totem. So just gonna keep grinding these skills and, you know, try to get some drops. All right, it's another day. We have 19 totems to go. Let's, uh, let's use all of them. Ooh, okay. Not a dark claw. That's number six. I am still very dry on these, actually. I should have 10 uh, according to the average drop rate. And this is number six. So still behind a few. And there we go. That's all the totems used. 279 KC. No totem or jar drop. There we go. Another crafting level. Level 19. With that inventory, 2,500 giant keys banked. Obor is absolutely shaking in his boots. I think we have like rank 3 Iron Man in keys banked right now. And there it is. The final crafting level with lamps. Um, that is a level for sapphires. Which is pretty much all I need. Uh, I'm going to get a chisel at some point. Um, I think at this point I'm going to use all my lamps on Slayer. Give that a bit of a head start for the far future. There's nothing really else I can lamp that is worth my time. So yeah, road to Blood Veldt, I guess. Level 50 or maybe at 52 I can get like Mithril Boots, some collection lock slots. It's a long way away, but yeah, I think that's the best idea for lamping. Level 21 Slayer. 22 Slayer for Desert Lizards. Alright, 23 Slayer, another level with the lamps. And we are at 54 million strength now. 24 Slayer levels are coming in. Getting really lucky with lamps lately. 25 Slayer. And there's another level 26 Slayer. And there's the subscribe button. Oh yes, finally. Fishing XP, 35 fishing. These levels take forever because I got magic XP so many times. I can now catch tunas, which is nice because somewhere close to me you can fish them. Uh, and I got a harpoon from Dagonauts a long time ago, so that will be useful someday. There's level 27 Slayer. I think the levels are gonna slow down a bit because it takes like at least 4 lamps per level now. The next clip, another level, 28 Slayer. Um... I think I'm just getting really lucky with XP randoms because there's no way I should be leveling this fast. I got 500k strength XP since the last level, but I still feel like that's really lucky. Alright, it is Scotizo time again. Starting off with the first kill, 280 kills. Let's see what today's session brings. How do I get so many shield halves from this thing? That's 1 in 100, man. I got like six of those. Ah, it still hurts. Still hurts a little bit. But gotta keep the spirit high. We will eventually break the dry streak. You're just gonna get a bunch of these types of drops, I guess. There's 290 kill count. 10 kills away from 300. Level 29 Slayer and 1050 total on the Extreme Junk account. We need to stop getting this lucky on XP randoms because um, if I somehow get 65 Slayer of Lambs, which uh, just there's no way it's going to happen. But if that does happen, that means I can kill Dust Devils and Dust Devils unlock a Dragon Chain Body, which is one in 32,000. So ah, there's no way, right guys? No way. Here's an update on my Scotizo lock. Three pets, six Claws and Onyx and a lot of shards from all kinds of monsters. And we have another 15 totems, so let's use them. Wow, this is very impressive. I got 20 Torstals and the price value is 69,420. That's pretty funny. I mean, what's the chance of that? There we go. Nice little milestone. 300 Scotizo kills. For three blue plate legs. And there's 305 Scotizo kills. Um, used all my totems again. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything new. And we are back to Hill Giants. Man, I have to say, it's sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle after using all of the totems. Going back to Hill Giants with zero totems in the bank. 
The reason I like stacking totems is because it's more motivating to like work on a big stack. I think I'm going to continue doing that until I get at least one of the two drops. And then maybe use them like every other day. But yeah man, this grind has been pretty crazy. A lot of ups and downs. Yo, we just hit 100,000 fire runes in a bank. That is amazing. Unreal looking uh, on an account like this. And there we go. Clean level 30 slayer. I have now pyre fiends unlocked. Great. And another level 31 slayer. It is that time again. A full totem in a singular hill giant trip. That feels absolutely amazing. We are at 366,000 hill giant kills right now. 1800 ancient shards banked. To give you guys an idea, that's 600,000 arc light charges. And there's a huge strength milestone. 60 million. Exactly hit that 60 million. That looks beautiful. Yeah, we are still at hill giants. Um, XP is going up fast because this is the only goal I've left. There's no more distractions. Last year we were working on a bunch of other goals, but now that we finished Arachnus, um, I got the Visage last year. It's just good teaser and Hill Giants, so I know some of you don't like it. It's, you know, I get it. It's pretty repetitive, but I want to complete this goal, man. I'm not giving up on these items. I've even had some suggestions of people saying I should just skip it, but I, I can't. Once I start something, I finish it, so let's keep up the grind. Jagex released a really nice quality of life update today. You can now auto equip arrows and put runes in the room pouch. And that actually benefits my account because I'm picking up steel arrows from hill giants. And they will now automatically be equipped. So that's awesome. Cool little uh, update. Previously you were able to set this up only in Lumbridge. And yeah I, I can't go there so. Really cool bank milestone coming in. 1000 long boners banked. If I would trade all of these in, I would get 4.5 million construction XP. One of my dream goals on this account is to someday hand in all of these uh, long and curved bones and get the biggest Iron Man construction XP drop in the game. That would be one hell of a video, man. That, that'd be crazy. 30 million hit points. 60 plus strength. 30 hit points now. There's the 30 hit points. Nice. <laughs> Tech Priester! Oh my god, bless his heart. <laughs> what? Oh, I love this guy. Ah, uh, this is. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> and I love your clutch. <laughs> oh. That guy just made my day. That guy just made my day. Level 32 Slayer. Nice little level with the lamps. Oh my god, look at all of these totem pieces in the trip. This is my totem record. Um, I completed four full totems and one piece in a singular day. Previously, the most I got was like three full totems and one or two pieces. So yeah, that's very rarely that happens. All right, we just hit another pretty crazy milestone. Uh, we banked 3,000 Obor keys, uh, giant keys, which would get me rank 3 in the Iron Man high scores. And we are close to uh, 30 totems again. I have just finished 400,000 hill giants. 64.6 um, mil strength XP. 133 mil uh, total XP right now. And this is the hours played. We're still going strong. We're still going strong. Gonna continue using all my totems. And uh, hopefully hopefully we break the dry streak soon. Last time I slayed even more hill giants and Scotizo. And got over 300 total kill count. Managed to pass 400,000 hill giant kill count. And get an uncut onyx from the purple demon. 
This means there's only two drops left now to complete the first chunk. Welcome back to the extreme one chunk Iron Man and the hill giant hell. And there is pet number six. As you can see, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I actually got the fifth pet on the same day as well. So we got two pets in a single day. And that also means my pet and dark claw count is the same with such a high kill count, which is very strange. And a few kills later, I get yet another pet. Pet number seven. I have a feeling we're going to get a lot more of these. Such a satisfying trip when this happens. Three totem pieces in a single trip. It's been a little while. I'm currently close to 65 million strength XP as well. Definitely keep an eye on this uh, strength XP this video. But yeah, still stacking totems. Going pretty well lately. Getting, getting some good RNG last days. Just getting crazy totem RNG. Get that Scutizo KC up fast. Nice little milestone here. 2000 ancient shards that is pretty crazy that's 666,000 arc light charges the question is will we get 1 million charges banked i wish i could share these charges with you guys or maybe even trade in ancient shards for totem pieces that would be freaking amazing even if it was like 20 shards for one piece that would be that would be so nice four shards hmm Come on. Yes! Yes! I got something. Oh my god, yes. Oh, yes! Yes, we got something. Oh, today's a good day, my friends. Today's an absolutely beautiful day. Holy shit. Okay, we didn't go too dry. I mean, we did go pretty dry, but there it is, the dark totem. I went a little over two and a half times, which... Respect, respectable, respectable. Oh my god, another totem piece? What the heck? That's, uh... Getting some good luck today, huh? And there's a clean 350 KC. Been sessioning out some uh, big totem stacks. I kind of like to switch it up here and there. Lately I've been stacking like 10 or 20 and then sending all of them. And other times I maybe keep like 2 and then use them. So yeah, I like to switch it up a bit. Oh, okay. I had a really strong feeling the Dark Claw was coming soon. I just broke a three times dry streak on a uh, Dark Claw, by the way. I was like 80 kills dry on that. <laughs> oh my... Ah. The pet curse continues. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Let's add, let's add another one to the collection. Why not? We are currently at eight pets and seven claws. The pets are taking over again. Wow, I can't believe I got 8 pets now. But at least we got that beautiful Dark Totem in the collection lock. We only need the jar, man. That's that's so exciting. Just a jar to be done with this chunk forever. Easier said than done, though. I've almost spent 4,000 hours in this chunk right now, as you can see. This item can take a long time. I just can't help but laugh when I get reactions like this. <laughs> this guy is calling me a bot. Last time someone called me a bot and I was talking to him. And he still called me a bot, so... That was pretty interesting. Got a lot of moments like this when people see such a weird account. Nice, it's been a while since we got another Slayer level. Level 33 Slayer, we can now kill Harpy Bookworms. Very nice. Levels are definitely taking a lot longer now. I really hope we're not going to get to 50. Because that's the next unlock, Blood Velts. Um, Let's just get the chunk done before then, yeah? My totem RNG is on fire the last days i just got another trip with a full totem completed you love to see it little random but a full crystal key completed in a hill giant trip that's definitely a first let's see how many keys we have okay we have over 150 crystal keys now wow only 600,000 more strength xp and we got another full totem trip i am loving this rng a lot of you guys are probably very used to slayer but a full totem takes me like 5 hours, so this is a big deal for me. Oh, missed the fishing level. 36 fishing from the Bob Random. All of these levels are kind of a bonus because I already have 35 for Tuna. And I know there's a spot kind of close to me and I have a harpoon banged from Dagonaut. So, pretty nice to have that prepared. 360 purple demons killed. Getting close to the top page ranks. Okay, another Dark Claw. We are... 
only one claw behind now, I believe. Slowly catching up to the pets again. We passed 70 million strength XP. That is a lot, I am aware. Um, basically, all I'm doing is killing hill giants. So, yeah, I'm getting strength XP all day. Let's hope we don't get to 100 mil or even 200 mil. That's a lot of jars. <laughs> that looks kind of nice, actually. Yeah, guys, that's what I need. Dude, rest day, pick them up. Pick them up. There goes 30 million GP, my friends. Or more. No. No. Look at it. 370 Scotties OKC. Oh, we are still going. Ooh, I don't see that every day. A giant key and an ancient shard in the same kill. We got a long bone and an ancient shard in the same kill. That's both like 1 in 400. 1 in 160k. Pretty rare. Another lamping level. 34 slayer. Hit another cool banking milestone. 3500 obor kills. Banked. Obor is shaking in his boots. Really curious to see uh, what we can get this key stack to. Just hit 380 scotties OKC. Just hit 1200 longbones and to give you guys an idea of how much construction XP I have banked. If I would hand in these bones right now, both the curved and longbones, I would get a total of 6,021,000 construction XP. Which would get me 91 construction without ever trading it. Unfortunately I would need 30 construction to hand it in. And the likelihood of me getting an Eastern agent before getting to the point of handing in the bones is almost zero so i will probably be 99 construction when i can ever use these bones but it is pretty cool to have this much banked and i've had a bunch of questions lately about like the bones and all the supplies in my bank future chunks uh future grinds and i'm planning on making a video soon explaining all of this in detail talking a little bit about the chunks around me what potential grinds i can get maybe show some of the things in my bank and answer some common questions so yeah, keep an eye out on that video if you uh, want to know more about that. 86 prayer, a rare level. 374k XP for the next one. That's uh, a lot. <laughs> nice. And there we go, 35 slayer. Nice little level. I can now kill wall beasts, which is miles away. Always nice to see these uh, lamping levels. 75 million strength xp looks very clean and there we go there's the subscribe button click on it to give me some rng thank you yeah okay all right another one <laughs> no i know no now I have more pets than claws again. No. There's 390 kill count. For you guys, this KC is going really fast, but actually takes quite a while. Every Scotito kill itself takes me between 10 and 15 minutes of prey flicking. And it usually takes around four and a half hours to get a totem. So uh, yeah, you can calculate it. But I'm gonna continue. I will finish this grind. I will not give up. Um, a lot of you guys are telling me to skip this item. And all I have to say is, I'm sorry, but I just can't. I've already put so many hours into this. To me, that kind of feels like running a marathon. And then right at the end, I turn around and just give up. We got this, guys. I will get this item. There's 3,700 giant keys banked. That looks absolutely beautiful. And we're getting close to 100 curved boys as well. Very nice. Body rune, nature rune, diamond, unlucky. And there it is. With this trip, we have banked 100 curve bones. It takes an average of around 5,000 giants to get one curve bone. So we must have killed over 500,000 different giants, it seems. That is a nice looking stack. Level 36 slayer. And there's 400 Scotties. Okay, see, that looks really clean. I've almost killed uh, 200 Scotizo kills since the jar drop rate change to 1 in 200. I started killing Scotizo at 209, so I need 9 more kills and I've officially 
hit the new drop rate for the jar. Unfortunately, we uh, are very likely to go dry on that. It takes me around, I would say, 1,000 to 1,100 hours to hit 200 Scotizo KC on this account. So, really hope we're not going too dry. Ah, yes. People are back. Dropping Jar of Darkness is in front of me again. It is that day of the month again. Oh, it looks, it looks so beautiful, man. I want this item so bad. I, I've never wanted an item more in this game. In fact, I've never actually spent this much time on one item, so... It's gonna be an amazing feeling when I get this item. <laughs> Holy, I just got a Longbone and a Dark Totem base in the same drop. I think that's the first time I've ever had this combination. That's really cool. We finally hit 20k Giant Hats. I mean, that's 99 Prayer. Plus more. <laughs> yeah, he's bijna dood. Okay. Yeah, he's dood. Echt maar. Wat moet, krijg ik dit jar? Yes, Oké. Okay. Of is het, you are going to get the jar. Oh. <gasps> um. Oh no. That's the pet. Oh no. That's not a jar. No, look. I got the pet. I got the <laughs> wrong thing. Look. Wait, why is this not green? Wait, what? That was glitched. Okay. Um. I told you guys I was gonna get something. <laughs> I told you guys I was gonna get something. I got the pet. Uh, what? So I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in in big trouble, in big trouble, and I don't want to be in big trouble. Oh my God, yo, Unka Dragonstone. Oh, I was actually thinking about this uh, early today. I was three times dry for this. I finally got it again. I was actually three times dry for this. That's one in 111. I'm getting all the goodies right now. Uh, yeah, that's actually really rare. Um, that's the second time getting that drop. And there it is, 409 kill count. We've officially killed 200 Scotizos since they changed the jar. And we have 10 pets and two dark totems now. That's insane, man. Missed the level, but we got 37 fishing. Three more to go for lobsters with random events. Yeah, this trip is definitely unusual. I got four ancient shards and three uh, long bones. That is definitely a first. Eighty-seven prayer on the extreme one chunk grand castle at a time. <laughs> yeah, I need three more prayer levels for combat, so I need ninety prayer. That's not impossible, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, this is the last kill for five hundred thousand. There it is, five hundred thousand hill giants on the loot tracker. I'll put a full picture on the screen. Uh, we've passed 100,000 potato seeds. Just noticed that. That's kind of crazy. 175k fire runes. Around 350 full totems, which is pretty good. Man, this this is a crazy loot tab. 256 mil, guys. Sometimes people ask me how you make money in this game. Well, you can kill a lot of hill giants, but I wouldn't recommend that. There it is. 80 million strength XP. That looks insane. What a crazy milestone. All right, watch this, guys. The moment I click on this, it turns green. Watch this. A green collection lock in the Scotizo section. Look at that. And with that drop, I have finished my biggest grind in RuneScape I've ever done. It took me exactly 4,400 hours to finish the chunk. It is done, guys. Thank you, everyone, for believing. I'm going to record a bank video, and after that, we are ready to roll the first chunk. Welcome everyone to my first bank video I've ever made. 
because well i've never really used the bank properly until now if you're watching this you have hopefully watched the final chunk one episode because in this video i will show you all of the results and bank xp i'm also going to answer some frequently asked questions and talk a little bit about the uh, next possible chunks so let's get into it this is the chunk i started in i finished it after exactly 4400 hours this is my current playtime. I have played a little bit more since, been doing some AFK wood cutting, just chilling out a little bit. And we can start with this collection lock tap. We have green lock Seracnus at 2501 kills. We got the jar at the end. And we've recently green lock cut Tizo as well. That looks absolutely beautiful. Finished with the jar. We spooned the onyx and we got a lot of other goodies. 10 pets in the end. Quite a lot uh, more than expected. And we end up getting two totems in the end. And that's it for the bosses. Let's see, where are my other lock slots? I know there's a lot in random events. Yeah, 22 slots there. We're missing the still baguette. We will eventually get this on the account, so I'm not too worried about it. And let's see, there should be a lot right here. Yeah, 250 long bones totem pieces and giant keys they're all maxed out in the collection lock you cannot get more than 250 of those in the lock and we got 110 bones eight shield halves five from scotizo two from iron dragons and one from fire giants i believe not too bad and then we have some mossy keys as well and we got the onyxes in here it's in actually a lot of places but one of them is in uh, miscellanea and then we have the colored XX from the Forthos dungeon chest. Pretty cool item. And I believe that's about it, I guess. Oh yeah, that's pets. Uh, we got the Scotizo pet, Rocky and Seracnus pet. I think, again, these pets are in multiple places, I believe. But um, yeah, let's see. What else are we missing? Maybe Slayer. Yeah, we got Vizzy and we have the uh, Mystic Gloves um i think that's about it for all the lock slots again most of these are from random events so and then we have some boss stuff right so combat tasks we have let's see let's go to bosses i've completed all of seracnus tasks and then we have done four out of seven for scotizo there's some tasks i can't do yet like i need a arc light for this um this one i can do once i get a better range upgrade I want to just run around the boss um, and damage it. But right now, the the, the the like the small minions will always hit me something. And Scotizo has a random attack speed, so it's really awkward to do this. It's pretty much impossible for me at this point. So I want to wait with this until I get like a rune crossbow or something. And then this requires chins, so can't do that either. And yeah, that's it pretty much for the combat tasks. Uh, they've recently changed how this works, and I need 7 more points for the next tier, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, that's about that for now. Did a couple achievements. Uh, kill sand crab. We killed a king sand crab for that, actually, in the catacombs. Pray at the altar, sure. And then kill uh, Scotizo, so nothing too crazy there. Let's see. Total XP, 157 mil. It's a lot. A lot of that is from strength and hit points. Like most of the XP is in, in the melee stats basically. Because like 90% of this chunk was killing bosses and uh, hill giants. So yeah, that a lot of XP ended up being from those skills. A uh, bit from prayer as well. And we have some other skills but nothing too crazy. A couple early skilling grinds we did. Uh, this is from Bob Randoms. We have Lamped, 27 agility. 20 crafting 37 slayer and 17 hunter so we ended up lamping a lot of skills basically in preparation for the future chunks but we'll get into that in the future and we have 1063 total level so um this is definitely the thing that's going to change the most my stats are going to change a lot in a i would say a year from now this is going to look completely different so i'm really excited to see what's uh, going to happen to that Oh, I also forgot to mention I've killed 516,000 uh, hill giants in the end. You guys saw the other boss KC, but yeah, that, that was basically the, the hill giant KC. All right, let's get into the bank. All right, so the first step is definitely my favorite tap. 
Got a lot of GP from the bossing and high hawking a couple of things. A lot of long bones and curved bones. Um, this is definitely one of the cool items in the bank in my opinion. I will show you guys later how much XP this exactly is with the banked XP plugin. I'm going to show you what all my supplies are worth it in terms of levels. Because a lot of people think, for example, I have a lot more Urblo XP banked. So I'm going to show you uh, exactly what I have banked. 4,000 giant keys. Um, Ober is probably shaking in his boots. Probably not going to be able to use this for a while. But if I ever can, I will use all of them. And hopefully I can do all the clue scrolls as well. That would be a pretty cool video, I think. If I would use all of these keys, I would be at rank 3 for Iron Man. So that's pretty good. A lot of ancient shards. Not too much I can do with this. I need to wait until I get the um, arc light, I guess. People have mentioned I can use these for teleporting in the catacombs, but it's really not that great. Uh, it's just kind of a waste of them, so I just stack them up. And then we have some of the highlighted items throughout the grinds. Smoldering Stone, Vizzy, some Scotizo drops, all the pets. Kept one totem in a bank because uh, I, I technically have to, I guess. A couple Dark Claws uh, and both the jars. Total bank value is 272 mil, by the way. Not too bad. And yeah, let's get into the skilling tab. So I got a couple tools here, supplies, basically waiting for the next grinds that are coming. Uh, I can start using like the pickaxes and stuff. Quite a few U-locks banked. I know I'm going to get a fire maker grind fairly quickly and I have the locks banked for that. I've just been uh, AFKing U-locks in my free time. Couple bars from monsters. Uh, took a long time to collect these. Like these are from Iron Dragons. These are from Scotizo, I think. Uh, and these are from some random monsters I've killed at the start of the account. Uh, the gold bars are actually from random events. I just collected them for fun. And then we have a lot of uncuts, which I'm really excited to use. Um, I suppose we can go over the banked XP while I'm showing some of the uh, loot. So let's do that for crafting, I guess. All right, let me open this. There we go. So I guess we can do construction as well while we add it. Um, so let's assume I have level 30 because that's the level you need to in order to use the uh, longbows and curve bones. I would have, there you go, 92 level, level 92. Now one thing I see people mention a lot is you're going to fly through construction levels once you can use this. But by the time I can use this, I will pretty much 100% be 99 already because there's a lot of Eastern agents in my area and if I hit one of them that means construction cape and in my area there's like four ways to get 99 construction so there's no way I will ever be able to use this to actually get 99 construction but it's still really cool and I could maybe get a really big XP drop with them in the future um, but yeah that's that's all about construction so let's get into crafting next okay so my current level is 20 I can use these flex it Crafting is kind of interesting because it's really going to depend what method I unlock. I don't have a chisel. I don't have a needle. I can't really train it right now. Um, people have asked me why I'm not cutting this or doing anything with it. But I just simply can't do anything with it. I have to wait until I get tools or you know, a spinning wheel or a way to train it. Now if I get a chisel I can cut all the gems. Um, and it would get me to 61. Let's see, let's ignore this item. If I have only the gems and not make the jewelry out of it. Yeah, I have 61, which is actually really good. That actually gives me close to the level to cut this, I think. You need, let me check. I think you need 67. Uh, yeah, 67, okay. Um, if I include all the other items, let's just include everything. Oh, I actually had this... Uh, Activated as well, but let's see. Let's say we use every. Let's say we can use everything in my bank if we have all the necessary methods available. And I can boost my level with like 50 or something. I have 77 banked. Okay. That's not too bad. I know I have. I, I know I'm not really going to be able to use everything because I need like furnace, the necessary gold bars, amulet molds. Using all of this is going to take a long time. Um, but yeah, that's cool to know that I have 77 in supplies technically banked. So that's pretty pretty good. 
Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have 21,000 and sold hats. Giant hats. That's a lot of prey XP. I already have 87 prayer, and this is way more than 99 prayer combined if I would use all of these. I'm not actually going to use these because I don't want to use my nature runes for prey XP. Um, the only prayer requirement I need is probably 99 when I get to actual, when I get the prayer cape. So until I get to there, I don't think I'm ever going to use these. Um, got a couple bones as well. These are still from Seragnus. Uh, I could use these on the alt in a Forthos dungeon, but rather save them in a bank. And then here are some of the other supplies I have. This is for crafting. Can use these for construction. Adds a couple hundred thousand XP to my uh, total construction XP banked. Pure essence from Banshees. This is actually worth a lot. I got most of these from Seragnus and Scotizo. And this step is also 92 mil, which is a lot. Uh, these are actually all from random events. If you're wondering how do I even have flex in a bank, I got these all from beekeeper randoms. In case I get like an early crafting right, I can use these on the spinning wheel, get a little bit of XP. And then we have some of these dragon dart and arrow tips from the Forthos dungeon chest. If I unlock fletching, um, I have to get 95 because I need to make these dragon darts. I have feathers as well in the bank from mace randoms. I don't have a knife. I don't have any way to train fletching yet. So that's why these are here. Uh, that's why there were never any fletching requirements in this chunk. There's just no knife spawn or way to buy it. But I'm definitely going to get a knife somewhat soon. But we'll get into that uh, when I talk about the future chunks. All right. So let's close this for now. This step, nothing too crazy. I have a bunch of raw anglerfish saved up from Scotizo. I don't want to use these yet because I will definitely get the uh, Hosidius kitchen at some point and I would rather not burn a lot because if I cook all of these now, I probably burn at least close to half. So just gonna save these for now. Uh, a couple other foods I've used, mostly for Scotizo and Seragnus. I've used, actually I've used chocolate cakes for like 90% of everything. Uh, Seragnus I did completely with cakes and uh, Robbie keys and Scotizo I usually also only use cakes so this is definitely the MVP of the chunk. Potion tap pretty good tap I'm really glad I finished Scotizo before running out of these I passively get these from random events and sometimes maze randoms and they really help the Scotizo same with the supersets from the grubby keys. I use these for uh, Scotizo a lot as well. But at some point I run out of them and only had these left. So I'm really happy I never had to do any Scotizo kills without any form of combat boosting. Uh, these are all from the grubby chest. Keeping it probably for potential Inferno. Same with the bruise. Don't think I'm ever really going to need these for anything else. Uh, same with range pots. I don't really want to use these. But maybe for something in the future that's PVM. Uh, yeah, other couple other potions, some prey pots from grubby chests. A lot of anti pots from the temple spider grind at the beginning. This might be very handy in the future if I have to go for a dragon warhammer. Gonna use these for shamans. Um, couple weapon poisons from Seragnus. Not sure what I'm gonna use that for. And a couple of vials. That's about it really for the potions. Uh, this next step is pretty cool basically all my combat stuff that i use daily this is like my main uh, champion setup i range stuff um i have a lot of arrows as you can see i can only use iron and bronze because i don't have a better bow for uh steel and above also i'm gonna wait until i have better range gear before i actually use all of this because it's kind of a waste using it with a regular short bow in my opinion but yeah, some nice collections. Mostly this is coming from uh, Hill Giants and Random Events. And then this is my best and slot range gear at the moment. Which I'm also going to upgrade a ton in the future. Got some shade ropes for prayer bonus. Use that quite a lot on the account. And then these are all the runes. And I actually have a ton of runes as you can see. The law runes, nature runes are mostly from Hill Giants as well as Cosmics actually. Uh, got some Cosmics from Seragnus as well. There's a lot of runes coming from Seragnus. Blood runes from Scotizo as well. Uh, soul runes, I think, from both Seragnus and Scotizo. All of these fire runes are from Hill Giants. Water runes from Hill Giants. 
Uh, let's see. These are from Hail Giants. Six body runes. Got these from uh, Mystery Boxes. And yeah, let, let's. I, I guess I can check how much Mage XP I have banked. I'm not planning on using this anytime soon until it's absolutely necessary. But I guess we can just kind of check what I have banked to give you guys an idea. Wait, there's no magic? Oh, okay. I can't actually select magic. That's a shame. Okay. I Okay. Uh, yeah, never mind. I can't actually show you what the XP is that I have banked. Uh, but I assume it's probably at least 90. I have 77 now. I mean, this has to be at least 90 magic. So that's pretty cool. A lot of nature runes. Probably want to use these for superheating in the future to somewhat speed up a uh, smithing grind. But I'm not sure yet. And let's see, the next step is the Urblo tap. This is one of my favorite taps as well. Um, a lot of herbs as you can see, but not as much XP as you might think. A lot of the herbs are coming from Seragna's boss, and then all the other herbs are mostly from Hill Giants. Uh, got a couple seeds as well. These are all from Hill Giants. Gonna be some nice farming XP in the future. And then Limpwords. I stopped picking up Limpwords at 150,000 Hill Giants to save time. I'm glad I did because I'm gonna get a lot of seeds in the future and I'm gonna plant those. So I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna use this many. And then we have 4k Spider X from uh, Temple Spiders. Let's see. So let's see how much Herblo XP we have banked. Assuming we had every secondary. Um, let's see. That should be Herblo. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's say I can boost 75 levels. I can, I can get all the levels for all the herbs, use everything. I get absolutely every bit of XP from every herb if I had the secondaries. So let's just give myself like 80, you know, temporary boost levels. I have 83 herbal banked, which is a lot lower than you might expect. Um, it's just hill giants don't really drop that many good herbs. So, and I only get like five or 10 per inventory maybe. Just not that much XP. It's still 83, but I just don't have all the secondaries too. So I really won't be able to use everything for a long time. Hopefully we don't get Urblo early because I would have to get 99. Um, but that's a worry for later. I suppose I can also check my farming XP banked. Uh, let's see. Let's give myself, I don't know, 80 levels. Right, let's see. Temporary boost, 80. 69 herblor. Uh, uh, I mean uh, farming. 69 farming. I assume that's only fruit seeds and normal trees. Yeah. I mean that's that's decent. That's only from like I don't know, like the fruit seeds and stuff that I got from Seragna, so not too terrible. Not too terrible. So yeah, this is kind of my herblor and farming tab. And then we have the next tab, which is random event stuff basically all i'm missing is a still baguette uh i got all these holiday items because mmrpgrs the streamer he has an item that he can use during holidays that spawns these items and he came to the current castle and spawned items for me basically because i really wanted to send that on this account so shout out to him that was really nice of him so i have all of these banked can fashion scape a little bit and then we have this kind of all over the place tab. Um, oh, I can make some more keys. Let's do that first. Let's see, I like to make my crystal keys every few weeks. 171 crystal keys, nice. Uh, got a clue of every tier. Most of these steps are relatively close to me. So I'm just keeping it until I either lock the step or I can clue juggle or something like that. Mm, nothing too much to say about that. A lot of uh, talisman. These are from King Sand Crabs, and these are from Hill Giants. Decided to collect a thousand in case I ever need it, but I I, I highly doubt I ever need this for root crafting. But just a cool collection. A couple other random items. Uh, these things are from King Sand Crabs, and they're actually quite expensive. Pretty funny item. You can make the rock shell armor with it. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Fishing bait might be useful in the future. These are from Dagonoth. Got some items from the Iron Dragon grind, like the Javelins. 
just basically a bunch of random stuff in this tab. <laughs> uh, let's see, is there anything worth mentioning? Got some harpoons and lobster pots, which is extremely nice. I got these from Dagonoth as well, and I can basically unlock fishing with that. I got 37 fishing from uh, Bob Randoms, which means I can fish uh, tuna, so might be useful. Let's see, what else do we have? Got these pages from for those dungeon stuff. Once I finish the mini quest, I can trade these in for 1000 each. So a little bit of GP there. See, you got some more knives, more ammunition from Seragnus and the uh, Iron Dragons. Um, let's see. Anything else worth mentioning here? Oh yeah, I have all these rune items. Still have to high elk all of these. These are all from um, Scatizo. And then we got these from Seragnus still. Haven't high elked them yet. More ammo. Uh, even more ammo. These are from Iron Dragons and this is from Seragnus. So, decent bit of bolts. Uh, let's see. More random stuff basically. Some dragon items. Got these from, from dragons as well. Uh, and then we have these giant XX I was talking about. So, each of these contains 100... Red Spider X, so that's over 10k Spider X right there. So I don't think I'm ever gonna need those in the future. And yeah, this is just like I said, kind of a tap I dump everything else in that might be useful in the future, but not useful right now. Keeps the bank clean. And that's pretty much everything in the bank. Um, let's see, I guess I forgot to show you guys the prayer XP, so let's do that real quick. Wow, that's, that's actually crazy. Let's see, if I do... This, I can do that with the bones because I think that's what the Forthos dungeon gives. I guess I can do this to be safe. Um, so yeah, I have 102 prayer banked, 18.3 million XP. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's just because of all of uh, these and sword hats, basically. So there's that 99 prayer banked. The only 99 I've actually banked from supplies. Um, let's see, is there anything else XP wise I have banked that I can show you? I guess that's fire making uh, with the locks I showed you earlier. Assuming I don't use these. 78, fi uh, 78 fire making banked, which is enough for a magic lock, which I get in the future. So that's good to know. And I think that's about it for banked XP. Fletching, I mean, yeah, nothing too crazy here. Um, yeah, that's all the banked XP. And that is pretty much my chunk bank after uh 4400 hours only playing in the catacombs for the most part pretty interesting uh, final result if there's anything i forgot to mention uh like bank wise let me know down below i'll reply to some of the comments if you're wondering about uh any of the items i guess and if you watch this full video all the way until the end, you're an absolute legend. I have rolled a bunch of chunks on this account, so if you want to see how this account continues, click on the video on the screen. Thank you so much guys and have a wonderful day everyone.